Hello, D class. Uh, we're waiting on one person to, to get in here to start streaming stuff. I'm not streaming stuff, uh, read, reading stories. We're waiting for them to arrive and grace us with their presence. Right. Hmm. How do you say that while sounding like a serial killer? <laughs> it is like a horror story things, stream. I feel like a lot of, yeah, I feel like a lot of things Bright says, though, is, like, horrifying. It's like Ted Cruz in the whole Zodiac what? killer shit. What? Hmm? <laughs> did, did you just suggest she sounds like if Ted Cruz was the Zodiac killer? No, no, no. I said light. It, it's I uh, know. I don't know. Dragon, you're being special. Anyway. Hmm. What the fuck? Also, I earned... actually okay. Talking about Ted Cruz and the Zodiac killer. <laughs> <laughs> on on the topic of that, so someone apparently Ted Cruz likes going to Starbucks, and the, like a lot of Starbucks workers have found this out. So someone was like, "Okay, if Ted Cruz ever goes to your Starbucks, don't mess with his drink. Treat him like normally, normally you would. But when you get done with his order, go, uh, the order, and then goes, uh, Zodiac killer, Zodiac killer with the order." To fuck with him. I don't even know if that's legal, but as as a concept, that's very funny. I'm going to put it in dumb post. I just need to. Oh. Uh, you know what I realize? It probably. Okay. You know. You know what I realize? It would probably be best if I just recorded mm -hmm. the siren sound and just put it at low volume. And editing instead of having yeah, probably. it, <laughs> which means if you want to hear an even better version of my surprise, uh, go to the YouTube channel. <laughs> You'll be able to find it in my description on Twitch. No, you can't. Wait, you can't? I thought it is on there. You can't. There we go. It doesn't exist. The taste Yes, it is, you piece of shit. <laughs> what? It doesn't exist. Fuck and you. If you keep insisting on that, I will delete uh, the taste of what I will be talking about early uh not earlier later <laughs> talking about <laughs> earlier <laughs> i'll delete the taste i've been talking about earlier we 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 Actually, uh, it's not a horror story, but it is a kind of funny story on why children are really dumb. But no. when I was little, I was over at a friend's. <laughs> so I was over at a friend's house, which also was my babysitter's house for me and my siblings. Um, and our, the babysitter's younger sister had a hamster and they had a bunch of pet cats and dogs. So the cat, one of the cats was like near the hamster. And I, as like six or seven, thought, oh, the, the cat wants to befriend the hamster and took the hamster out of the cage. Oh. The hamster was okay, but uh, almost got decapitated because the cat went straight for the head. And <laughs> I had to pull the hamster uh, entire body safely out of the cat's mouth. As much as I wanted to hear that, I turn alerts off. That way it doesn't disturb the readers. <laughs> oh, Listeners? Sense. I should probably turn off the browser source, too. Also, Penguin, that is a terrifying story that has nothing to do with why kids are stupid, only the things stupid kids do. But, you know, if nobody tells you 
it's a bad idea to do, it makes sense. A kid would think this is a good idea. So I think that says something yeah, about your parents. All alerts are turned yeah, off. I guess so. Also, <laughs> uh, the person like that was babysitting us was probably the same age as I am now. Uh, and that was how I was introduced that Twilight was a thing. That's how I found out twi Twilight was oh. a thing. Well. And Hatchet just went offline. Oh. Well, uh... I guess I can just start reading the story. One story. While they're coming in. Alright. Good. Your hash could have be having problems presently. Yeah. Unless, uh, Jerry, you want to go first. All right. Um, I was hoping it would be when everyone's here, but I can well, say I was, it now. It oh, I was thinking story. that. Oh, sorry. Huh? Well, sorry. I was thinking that we should do, like, Bright first so we can have, like... Oh. So we don't like have bright going like all like three times in a row or some shit like that. Okay. Ah, uh, there. All right. I guess I'll go first then. Everyone ready? This is the sequel to Abandoned by Disney. Room Zero. It's been a while since I've written anything related to the Disney Corporation, and I'm sure you can understand why. A lot has been going on since my last post. I received a lot of questions and concerns from folks who read my first-hand account on Mowgli's Palace, a resort that was built and abandoned by Disney. I want to thank everyone who mirrored my post by post. It's been taken down from a few places, mostly corporate sites that were easily leaned on by a larger power. However, for every nuked topic or disappearing blog post, it seems like a hundred more have popped up. This is something they'll have to face. There's no turning back for them. None for me either. I'm definitely being followed. For the first month or two, I chalked it up to paranoia. Any casual glance or half smile in my direction set me off. Hair standing on, on the back of my neck and everything. The first one, or rather, the first one I was actually able to spot was a telephone worker milling around my apartment complex. He was a mellow aged, doughy dressed just as you'd expect, but something just seemed off about him. I couldn't place it, but I knew this wasn't my just my imagination acting up. He was awkward and out of place, not somebody who was comfortable doing this routine job. I followed him around a corner, only to lose him there. When I turned back to go home, there he was, staring directly at me, about ten feet behind me. Expressionless and cold. Exploring? He asks. That's all he said. And there was an accusing tone in to his voice. Tell me what co blue collar phone jockey does that. I guess that's the worst part. Never feeling safe. Never feeling alone. That and the occasional Disney mer merchandise left somewhere for me to find. Little rubber Mickeys in a mailbox, a Disney Adventures magazine on my bookshelf. They hide little Mickeys everywhere. Three circles, one big, two small, and the silhouette of the famous mouse's head. I've started keeping a running list of Mickeys I've found. Coffee cup rings on my coffee table, one big, two small. Colored glass bottles left on the doorstep, viewed from the top down, all red. Graffiti on the wall on my way to work, a huge earth, small sun, and moon in the proper locations. They're everywhere. 
people have emailed me about this as well. If you repost anything I have to say, you're going to start finding these son of a bitch outlines. I guarantee it. The best one by far, one that actually made me laugh because of the horror of it all, was a drawing in chalk next to my next next to my car. I was taken aback at first, walking through the parking garage, keeping an eye out for people following me. The outline seemed a perfect match for, well, a murder victim you're probably familiar with if you read my past post. Written in yellow paint, I'm sure, was a single word. Retract. The only good thing that has come out of all of this is that I know I'm not the only one who's seen something they shouldn't have. I'm not going to give their names because, well, if I have to tell you why, you haven't been paying attention. Researcher goes to Disney parks whenever he can, all throughout the year. He's not going to have fun, enjoy the rides, etc. He's looking forward to gas cots. There's been a long tradition, apparently, of people reporting strange patrons throughout the park. Silent, motionless, staring patrons of every age, shape, and size. Men and women, adults, children, and teens. All wearing Disney-themed gas masks. Way back when, Disney would get tons of complaints about oddly dressed folks following others around the park. Folks who would then merge into crowds and disappear. Later on, the gas masks caused folks to draw, draw other conclusion and reports of possible terrorists and bombers started flowing. All of those reports most likely went straight into the trash can. I know I can't find any sign of such occasions reported on by the media. Researcher goes to the parks, talks to a few people, and tries not to draw any attention to himself. He'll just ask three or four families if they've seen his friend who's wearing a funny mask. He has yet to see a gas cot for himself. Though, on one occasion, a child pointed him to toward Frontier Town as he raced th through the crowd. He heard a single voice ahead cry out, Mommy, I want a goofy air mask too. A fellow I'll call Lifeguard worked in Disney Water Park from 2001 through 2003. He stood at the top of a huge water slide and made sure none of the kids got too rowdy. He passed the kids through one at a time, telling them over and over again to be safe, keep their arms in, and so on. One day, as he tells it, this fat kid goes down the tube and doesn't come out the other end. He sent two or three kids after the whole thing moves into a steady clip, so naturally you, you'd expect that if Fatty got stuck, the kids that followed him were stuck too. Not so. Only the big kid disappears. Everyone else comes out the other end, cheering and splashing like nothing's wrong. Lifeguard shuts down the slide, much to the aggravation of the kids waiting before he can go through any of the Disney Strix procedures. Splash! Fatty finally comes out. Staff members pulled the kid out of the water, and he sank like a stone when he hit. His skin already blue and his eyes wide. All he would say was, no face kids, and stop squeezing. The kid was, in, was okay, in case you were wondering. He got carted right off to the medical center when lifeguard was told to open the slide back up. He made a big stink about how it clearly wasn't safe. Despite his complaints, he was threatened with firing and begrudgingly opened the slide again. From that point on, he kept a closer eye on the kids. Every so often, they come out in the wrong order, never as stunned as the fat kid, but always with a vague look of concern, a dreamy half-stupor that seemed as if they were trying to figure out what, what was reality. They take on some water and choke a bit, and they never come back up to write again. 
I read his emails with the same sort of unease he might be feeling right now. I wanted him to share his, his own story, but in the end, he didn't want to expose himself that way. I can't say I'll blame him. Snow White, which wasn't the actual role she played, was a character in the park. She had a nice little tidbit for me. You know what happens when a costume employee drops dead in his suit? Like, one second he's taking a picture of little Jimmy, and the next, he's had a fatal stroke. A second costume mascot in the area has to sit with the, with the corpse on the curb or bench and wait for a designated dry cleaner to arrive and cart the body away in a discreet manner. All the while, patrons have no idea they're sitting with a dead body for photo ops. Feel free to check your photo album at this point. That was bad, but another fellow janitor went completely off the creepy charts. Disney World is built with a series of underground tunnels just below your feet. Three stories worth. Anything and everything you can imagine is down there for use of the employees. They're called Utilidors. Utility Corridors. Basically, that's the reason you don't see a character out of place or janitors wandering through the park. They pop in and out of hidden doors and travel a concealed town you're walking on. Janitor told me something that might be common knowledge, but was nonetheless news to me. Walt Disney had several apartments, apartments built into his parks. There was one above Cinderella's castle. There was one in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They're all over the place. More than that, there are nightclubs, a movie theater, a bowling alley, and much more. All behind doors built right into the whimsical school fa facades you pass by without a second look. Club 22 is one such hidden area. If you have the cash to join the exclusive club, then you'll have access to it and much more. Club 22 is a place where anything goes. Disney Co. calls these places dark zones. Spots where squeaky clean visage of Mickey Mouse gives you away to drinking drugs and yes, inappropriate actions. Conversely, the rest of the park is the bright zone, with a few gray zone utilidors between. <coughs> sorry. Conversely, the rest of the park... Oh, wait, sorry. Wrong part. As far as the janitor has said, it wasn't always that way. It was more of a slow decline in the gradual relaxation of social norms within that elite group. The reason he knows all this, you may have already guessed. He's cleaned it. After a lengthy background check in a non-disclosure form, Janitor moved up from a park attendant to one of the Dark Zone cleaning crew. Now before you get some satanic human sacrifice vision in your head, Janitor saw nothing of the sort. Lots of empty alcohol bottles, yes. Used plastic scattered like deflated New Year's balloons, oh yeah. He's cleaned up his share of blood, piss, and vomit, but it was all down to the unrestricted behavior of patrons as opposed to any sort of cult behavior. At least that's how he sees it in retrospect. All that trash, that profane shit, went into a furnace and mingled with the smoke of the quaint cottage chimney. If you've been to Disney World, you breathe... Ultra condensed sin. Breaking up his information was Hammer. Hammer mailed me his, the old fashioned way, though I don't know how he got my home address. He sent me photocopies of work papers proving his employment with the instruction to burn them when I was convinced. Which I did gladly. Hammer worked around the Disney World Park doing demolition and construction. At one point, he approached a superior regarding some strange construction plans. There is a wide rectangular era, area marked off on the blueprints about the size of a supermarket. The area was left unnamed and only bore the words, Do not dig. 
Not only was his super superior in the dark, but he was super fucking purposefully in the dark. He didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to know about it, and ended the conversation with Miss Space intentionally left blank. Hammer didn't get it. The area seemed a waste of space and was directly conflicting with the work his team had been given. He started poking around the area on his off time, finding only a derealistic steel door and a great span of concrete just beyond. It was a supermarket's worth of blank gray floor. Soon after, Hammer started picking gas mascots out of the crowds. Unlike all other reports, people, the things, would stand in full view of the guy. They clustered together in the distance, or they would just be pressed against the wall when he turned a corner. He said they moved weird. They were like they were weak or injured, like a deer that's been run down by a hunter and couldn't flee anymore. The gas mask, the Disney character faces with filters jammed in. He noted that they seemed wet on the inside, like condensation on a car window. Tiny beads of water glimmered behind the glass, making it impossible for any of them to actually see. Probing further, Hamer started asking questions of anyone and everyone who had been working in the park for a decade or more. He had dead ends throughout until he was directed to Ida, an, el an elderly woman who worked in a restaurant on Main Street. She'd been there since way back, and though nobody ha had the balls to ask directly, everyone knew she had plenty of terrible stories to tell. Hammer asked about the empty space and about the gas mask customers. And at first, he thought he would receive the same non-answers he had gotten so far. She was quiet. Eerily quiet. Room Zero. He croaked, a single shaking hand placed on her cheek as if she were a little girl fearing a father's punishment. She didn't meet the man's gaze for the entire conversation. Room Zero, as it turned out, was yet another hidden room, just like the apartments in Club 22. However, its sheer size and its spot deep beneath the park set it apart from any of the fun, dark zones. It was a bomb shelter. Room Zero was built to withstand a massive attack, be it conducted by foreign or domestic enemies. Room Zero was to be stocked with enough rations to feed the entire park's average number of patrons at any given moment, and house a smaller yet lavish panic room of sorts for Disney higher-ups. During World War II, official Disney gas masks were actually produced for children to wear in the event of an attack. The idea was that that would be less scary for the kids if Mickey's face was embezzled on. By the, on the wartime safety device. Yes, I know the obvious problems with that. During the Cold War scare of the 60s, when Disney was, World was constructed, Room Zero was stocked with similar masks as well. Whether they cared about the fears of the children or just callous branding, the things found their way down there. What's more, some genius decided that the kids would then be frightened by the gas masks their parents wore. And so all mass adult and child were made to, to comply to this insane standard. Ida described it as treating a w wound with lemon juice. None of this explained what Hammer had been seeing, though. Not only the seemingly supernatural appearances, but the emptied out room as well. I've been in there, he explained. There's nothing but a cement floor and four walls. No. Ida shook her head and covered her mouth, stifling a sob. You've been on top of it. Someone or something sounded the alarm one day, 
when the park was at full capacity, the warning was clear. It was supposedly an air attack. Security ushered everyone down, down, down into the tremendous shelter. There, they were ordered to put on their masks and hunker down for the duration of the assault. Everything was quiet for about 30 minutes, save for the crying children and the frightened whispers. No one wanted to die, and so they were thankful, in a way, for a strange measure of safety. Then the first scream rang out. Hey! A man shouted. Quit pinching! Waves of shrieks and yelps rippled, rippled through the crowd, from one wall to the other, back and forth. Who's running around? Settle down! Someone hollered. Who's laughing? This isn't funny! Ow! Who stepped on my foot? Despite security guards urging them to calm down and keep their cool, the crowd became more and more agitated, until finally, after nearly an hour of madness, the lights flickered, then died. What followed could only be described as utter chaos. In the dark, only the wails of the young and the anguished cries of adults could be heard, and a massive swelling din that bloodied the ears of all within the black echo chamber. A group of staff members and a select few patrons made it out of the door, ready to face the war above rather than the insanity below. What they found, of course, was a desolate yet untouched theme park. The music continued to play, echoing through the sil silent storybook towns. Upon returning to room zero, the few who stood at the top of the steel staircase that led down to the pitch blackness heard no sign of the previous fray. There was only silence. Ida herself descended that staircase despite the begging of those she left above. She reached the reinforced doors herself, now awash in darkness and hearing only the buzzing in her ears. A single voice came out of the darkness. The echo made it impossible to tell whether the mocking raspy voice was at the back of the bomb shelter or, or if it was right in front of her face. Shut the door, dear. You're letting out the cold. Ripped by terror, she did just that. Within days, the entire thing, shelter, staircase, all of it, was covered with feet upon feet of cement. Air systems and generators above the ceiling were removed, creating a large, empty space. They're all sitting down there, Ida told Hammer. Down there with... Whoever that was. You might notice I've used Ida's name. Or, unfortunately, she passed away soon after telling her story. Accidental fall, supposedly, after getting out of bed to turn on a light. Such a company devotee, the paper reported, that her entire bedroom was covered with Mickey silhouettes. And that's room zero. She was murdered. <laughs> you don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> oh, hi, Hatchet. I know, but like... Bitch. <laughs> what did you think of Room Zero? Uh, I only heard about half of it, and in all honesty, I didn't process much because I was... Right. Uh, I was editing in the background, but I am done editing. Oh, so. editing your story? Yeah. I managed to get my second story done last night. Yeah, we're waiting for Mola to come in before I do my story. Gotcha. Or plus isn't plus there'd be uh Brian I would also want to be coming in. Does Rian know we're doing this? I mean I I would think. We boop Brian? Yeah, here I'm gonna I'll I'll message Rian. Yeah. So, Hatchet, do you want to go next, or Jiri? Oh, give me a second. Kind of horror do you want to hear? Uh, cra carefully crafted stories, or me trying to put into words as G-rated as possible the nightmare that is my uncle. <laughs> 
Um, huh. My mom's brother, just to be fair, not my dad's two brothers, who are amazing. Why do you always talk about like how fucked up your family is? It's always the your mom's side of the family. Well, what the fuck is wrong with them? I think <laughs> what? it started with. I think the roots of the fuck uppery in my mom's side starts from my mom's mom's mom, who was part of mm -hmm. the art family. Tiffany, they do. Uh, stained glass work, other work. Um, let's just say bad things happen between her and the other family. They, uh, I don't. Uh, basically, she was disowned for, uh, when I was younger, I, hmm. she was basically disowned for marrying a farmer. And then she got brain cancer and bits and parts of her had to be removed. And my grandma, who is my mom's mom, uh, had to take care of her while she was a teenager. My mom's mom was a teenager, not her. A young, like, teenager, like, younger than you, Penguin. Like, years younger than oh. you. And so, yeah, that woman was slowly losing her body parts as she was dying to brain cancer and slowly losing everything and died a very slow and horrible death without any help from her family. Damn. Oh, you know what? Uh, My uh, mom's mom was then found out to have schizophrenia and the doctors decided, you know what? We're not quite sure how to treat that, but let's try acid. And acid makes schizophrenia worse. Oh, gee. So, and then, uh, my mom was born in an era where it's almost in, it was almost impossible in the United States for moms not to get custody. And she was so unfit for taking care of children that uh, she lost custody, so she kidnapped her kids and stole a lot of money from the dad and ran off. Oh. Did you get and arrested? No. Back then, it was a lot harder to find people like her, and she was very good at pretending to be other people and fooling yeah, that... people and conning people. Yeah, that was like a really consistent thing, like when looking through uh, true crime history, like, like for the majority of the United States history, it has been relatively easy for someone to commit a crime in one state and then just hop borders and no one bats an eye. Like, it was really, it was really easy to just fucking disappear. Also, uh, my uncle Stacy, my mom's older brother, has schizophrenia as well. Though not diagnosed, he literally has every symptom of his mom. And considering how many drugs he's done, he's probably made it a lot worse. Also, uh, he has never seeked treatment and... Although my mom's mom did seek treatment at some point in her life, obviously that had the opposite effect. And so she never actually got good treatment unless she's getting good treatment as an elderly woman. I, I don't know and I don't care because I hate her. Yeah. Uh, I just got messaged by Rian. Uh, right. I was going to ask, why, why, why the fuck do you feel the need to be flashing the image of Smile Dog on stream? <laughs> Because I can. <laughs> Completely so, irrelevant. Also, my uncle Stacy, besides those things, he has trauma issues. He does not, he never has shown sign of PTSD like my mom has, but he definitely has trauma issues, but he also 
basically uses that as an excuse to do whatever the heck he wants and uh he's okay momo's gonna be in in a few uh and rian's just getting in right now because they oh. didn't realize it was today <laughs> oh that, that's and, fine yeah. and as i'm sure you've already known hatchet my or was that penguin who asked which one of you I think asked it, I... I, I think I think it was the child who asked. Okay, Penguin. Initially. So yeah. if you ever wanted to know why my mom's side is always a fucked up one, the three family members all having schizophrenia that has either been know. untreated or made, and one even being made worse by the doctors who uh, diagnosed it. So, oh yeah, that's that, I would have to say that's a big reason. Also, other things, but. Those are big chunks, yeah. Do you have any other questions for your child? I am willing to answer. I hate my chair sometimes. Ah, uh, yes. The the old-timey manners of dealing with mental health issues. They either went untreated or they were treated, and those treatments made them worse. That is Yep, actually, yeah, that's how a lot of mental illness was treated, especially when they were more severe, like schizophrenia. They were actually trying to find a good way to treat schizophrenia. They just <laughs> didn't find it in acid. Acid made it worse. They tried. Yeah. It failed. It failed badly. Very badly. And like See, some that of reminds the... me of Paris. Oh, go ahead. That reminds me. Apparently, my great-grandma had had cancer before she her cancer showed up again and killed her but like the first time that she had cancer apparently like she did chemo for a bit but then like couldn't afford it so stopped taking it and it just kind of just stopped for a bit my great grandma is a mystery honestly actually i could tell you why she likely stopped back then or, like, chemo the was uh, the way they did it was uh, more severe on the body. It's still severe on the body, but mm -hmm. basically the government, oh, not the government, the basically doctors over time realized, you know, if they die from the chemo, it doesn't count as a treatment. So <laughs> they tried to get better at not killing people, though it still makes them sicker and weakens them. I still so think to this day, people will go on and off on chemo because it's that bad on the body yeah like there's there's a lot of to my understanding depending on the person better methods of treating cancer nowadays like oh, the yeah. main one i know about is immunotherapy I... where, you, oh, sorry. where you where they basically uh tailor a specific cocktail of um drugs to a person so that they can basically rework that person's immune system to actually start attacking the cancer cells when commonly the issue with cancer is that the immune system just doesn't attack the cancer cells because they're just normal spot body cells but going haywire there's uh things like uh, my cancer was treated with a mix of surgery and radiation which is mm. a lot less harsh on the body but you still need like shots every time you go for radiation and a pill for the radiation so basically the shot hey, the hey, is to make Hi. the shot you easier on you and the shot Good. is supposed to make the radiation easier on you and even then, if you're an older person, those things can cause vomiting and vomiting blood and other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you, know, you know the situation is fucked when between one treatment and another treatment that is literally utilizing radiation, the radiation is preferable. Well, yeah, the radiation that can cause... Uh, if you're older or you have a worse immune system, it can definitely mess people up. Yeah. But it is a lot gentler than the chemo, which does say something you are right. But yeah. also, um, 
despite the amount of treatments people we have sometimes people aren't treatable like yeah. one guy his wife was desperate mm -hmm. i met him uh with my mom when i was waiting for my appointment for radiation and they had literally tried every type of treatment they could find and they were just getting desperate and they were there as a last, last ditch effort because they were so desperate to have him, the dad not die of ca a brain cancer and oh no they had such a sweet small child and mm -hmm. mom oh, just no. sounded so exhausted and so yeah now, I'm i think sure he probably died but he seemed like a really nice dad yeah, I think I I think like one of the most interesting cancer treatments that I've heard about in recent years is uh oh I forget the exact name for it but it's uh it's it's basically uh very controlled shooting subatomic particles into a part of the body using a particle accelerator basically That's like kind of badass. <laughs> oh, it's it's actually really fascinating. Like, I learned about it from a video that was talking about Anatoly Karpov, I think his name was, who was a scientist that worked in Moscow with their super, or their particle accelerator. And uh, he at one point, like, ev everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And he ended up having one of, the, ha having a small cluster of particles going at this close to the speed of light passed straight through his head and and lived because oh, yeah because basically when you have radioactive material and it hits a substance it uh um it starts to break apart based upon the how hard that substance is and eventually it will just slow down to the point where it just releases pretty much all of its energy and that's what's called a brad peak and basically thanks to how fast that particle was moving it passed straight through his head and the brad peak would have happened about a foot outside of his head but oh <laughs> yeah but there's a form of therapy that's being worked on where we can basically shoot uh less lethal smaller doses of that into a person's head and then calculate where the brad peak will happen so that it happens where a tumor is inside of the body and destroys the tumor oh cool. my it's so cool it's like if you don't die of cancer you die of that and honestly that's like a cool way to go out <laughs> yeah there's there's still a lot of <laughs> there's oh there's still God. a lot of there's still a lot of research. Oh There's still a lot of research to be done, as far as I know, before mm. it's like, uh, like widely used. Optimal. But it seems it yeah. seems very promising for like a non-invasive manner of taking care of brain cancer. Did you know? Apparently, whales can't get cancer. I'm fairly confident that that's incorrect. No, they actually can't get cancer. What? Oh, I forgot. They or cannot like get cancer. Calm. How can Wait, they? What? Because um, it's mostly it has to do with their size, like the fact that they're uh, so large that, like, basically, even if they like have the cancer, um, I think I forget, I forget how uh, sp the specifics, but it's something. It has, it has something to do with their like their 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 size. The immune yeah. system and their size and stuff. Yeah, so. and then, then basically the nothing can metastasize in there. So, uh, mm -hmm. oh, that yeah. makes sense. But you gotta keep in mind, like whales general, and even whales general includes things like dolphins, which are significantly smaller. I'm talking about like the larger yeah, like, baleen whales. Yeah, like the not like not not like the toothed whales, like killer whales. I'm talking about like humpback whales, blue whales, gray whales. Yeah, that that, that was all I was gonna say. Like. Uh, terminology could be a bit better here when describing it. Yeah, but yeah like I, I actually looked it up and yeah, that's yeah, the, the Royal Society looks at cancer resistance and cetaceans including baleen whales. Cancer should be 
cancer should be a near certainty for whales, the longest living and largest mammals there are, but scientists are finding that cetaceans are excellent at protecting themselves against the deadly disease. Yeah. That's... Yeah. So... Sweet. Uh, hey, now everyone's here. Now yeah. we can actually do horror story stuff. Sorry to keep you. <laughs> I should have. I should have told you all to go ahead without me. They're fine. Uh, I didn't want to we, delay we, you. Now well, we need. Okay. They we were. They, we were they talking about some cool stuff. So. Yeah, we were talking about cancer treatment and cancer and whales and shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Blasting people's heads open with particle accelerators and shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. Also. It was like it's a melon no more your head used to be. So now we have a problem. Does Momo, Ryan, Hatchet, or Jiri go first? Uh, I can go first because I don't have confidence in what I have, which means if I go first, then it can only go up from there. Well, you see, that's that. There's, there's a small issue. I have, I have, com I have confidence in what you have. Yeah, I, don't I, have to say, I was about to say, there's, there's a small problem with here. Uh, it's against the rules to not, uh, have confidence in what you put forward. This is a no negativity space, except for negativity that results from the scary stories itself. Be confident in yourself, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, you should leave because I think that would make the stream a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I guess Rian's going first then. Yeah. Okay. And just to just to get a head count, uh, who yeah. all has unique stories to tell, like stories they wrote? I got my personal story I wrote. I have exactly one fiction story to share, and once I'm done there, I'm I have done, real done. life horror about my uncle. You've got real life horror, and I've got two uh, fictions. Yeah, and I'm helping Momo uh, read NES Godzilla as read. Yeah, I say we can. I can do a creepypasta before that, but yeah, yeah. we can totally read NES Godzilla. <laughs> I I'm the voice of Red. <laughs> Okay, I figured. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> but either way, if uh, if you want to go first, yeah, okay. yeah, go ahead, Ria. Huh, okay. Um, should I like share my screen so you can read along, or uh, if you want. Yeah, if you want, like, uh, like for example, in my for my situation, I'm playing GT in the background, so I'm, I'm not gonna be reading the law. <laughs> okay, um, I am not the clearest speaker, so I'm just I'm just gonna do that if that's okay. That's, that's fair. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. All right. Yeah. This is a document called. The expedition. Ooh. Log 201. Schedule check-in. We have arrived at the study site. Local specimens seem to be thriving, despite the high levels of intercommunal conflict. These curious creatures are docile, for the most part, but turn incredibly violent when startled or provoked. We have trained our field scientists to the best strategies to collect data without risking provocation. The first mission squad has been sent out a couple days ago. The reports have been encouraging so far, despite how hostile the natural environment is to our bodies. The weather is unrelenting, and the terrain unforgiving. It's frankly a miracle that there's so much of this species here. Wonders never cease in the world of science. Signing out. Log 205. Schedule check-in. The first mission squad has returned. All was well until it came time to depart. We were careless and were spotted by one of the local specimens, who somehow alerted all of the others to our presence. We cannot discount the possibility that they may, in fact, be some sort of hive mind. However, this means their means of defense and attack are rudimentary on a larger scale. They cannot touch our base. We will have to be more careful with future missions. It seems they do not take kindly to knowledge of our true appearance. Individually, our scientists will be vulnerable to the native species' hostility. They will be waiting before being sent out again, to allow the specimens to resume their routines and forget us. 
In the meantime, we will take what we have learned and apply it in new ways to both improve our safety and our data collection technique. Signing out. Log 280. Schedule check-in. Enough generations of the local specimens have passed that it is now safe to resume our field studies. We feel much more confident this time around, and we have made plans to take one of the bodies of the specimens to observe. Hopefully, we can keep them alive, but every scientist knows how that goes, especially with new species. It doesn't seem to matter either way, however, given how many of them there are. We simply need to avoid drawing the attention of the rest of this presumed hive mind. Despite extensive distance observation from base, the readings have been inconclusive on the matter of how interconnected they really are. It's truly fascinating, and a large part is the reason why we've endeavored to obtain one of them for observation. These specimens seem to thrive very well on their current atmospheric conditions, as well as mainly protein-based diet. Curious, as one of our scientists claimed they have mostly flat teeth akin to herbivores. They must be omnivores. I digress. We have created an observation chamber for the specimen with the atmosphere replicated and a diet prepared for their arrival, as they are often seen eating after traveling. Hopefully our team can capture one, alive. Signing out. Log 285. Schedule check-in. The field team has returned. They managed to capture a specimen, but regrettably, it perished during a quick trek back to base. Clearly, they need the same living conditions as their natural area while they travel outside of it. We suspect atmospheric pressure in tandem with composition may also play a role, as its extremities swelled and bulged in ways uncommon with their, well, in their natural habitat. We will have to come up with some sort of way to protect these specimens while we remove them from, for study, as despite how inconsequential it is for one to perish when there are so many, we'd rather avoid it when possible, like any good scientist would do. Some scientists care not for the well-being of their specimens at all, and will go to any length to extrapolate any information they desire. Not us. We will be better. And it's why our expedition was funded, after all, to prove without a doubt to the whole community that scientific discovery can be moral and relatively painless for all involved. While we are, while we are working on a solution to our current obstacle, we will be studying the poor corpse of the specimen. The species seems to mourn and care for their dead a great deal, much like some of the animals back home so we will be returning the specimen to the location we first found them as soon as we're done. Signing out. Log 293. Schedule check-in. We have returned the body, and though we were not spotted, it seems to have caused a great deal of distress to the specimen's community. Yet again, news has traveled fast between members of the species, leading some of our scientists to become absolutely convinced they are a hive mind. But one must wonder, why such a delayed reaction if so? Surely, they must have felt the life of the poor thing snuff out when it first happened. Perhaps they did, but chose not to worry. Perhaps the appearance of the body is what frightened them, not what happened to it. We should consider whether, if this situation should happen again, as I'm sure it will, what the best course of action would be. Clearly, following the customs of the species has off-put them. We may have simply done it wrong. If that is the case, it might be better to hold on to any future corpses as so, so as to not alarm the species with an increase in the appearances of their members' bodies. On another note, we have almost finished constructing a better means of transportation for the next captured specimen. With any luck, we will be able to study the next one alive and up close, then return them home where they belong. Signing out. Log 313. Schedule check-in. We have obtained and have been keeping a live specimen. It seems their socio-emotional needs are much higher than we assumed, which is in line with our hive mind theory. However, it could also be that they just happen to be a very social species. It calls out and cries most of the time, before falling quiet for about 6-12 to 12 hours of self-induced sleep-like stasis. 
There seems to be a pattern to its calls, which is truly gratifying. I fought the board for months to bring linguistic specialists with us, just in case the species we find has a fully developed language. This deepens the mystery. After all, what use does a hive mind have for a fully developed language? The species has begun to calm around our presence, and I believe this may be indicative that they are that they no longer see us as enemies, but as potential allies. I would love for this to be the case. Imagine an allyship with such a unique and creative species in such a remote and lifeless location. We have high hopes going forward, and with any luck, we'll soon be able to return the specimen home once we have enough data. Signing out. Log 315. Schedule check-in. <sighs> Once again, we have severely misjudged the species of this specimen. Despite progress in establishing communication and offering regular sustenance and optimal environmental conditions, the specimen still saw us as their enemy all this time. They had tricked us into believing all was well, then enacted their plan. They assaulted one of the linguists during their communication session, damaging their hazard suit, and made a break to escape their enclosure. We tried to warn them that they would not survive outside of it to prevent them from hurting themselves, but they were quick and we could not stop them in time. Their body failed much in the same way as the last specimen we tried to collect. Such a shame, really, is becoming increasingly clear how unique and clever each of member of the species is, despite their uncanny ability to simultaneously communicate with others of the species, making each death a stinging and tragic loss of life. As their living conditions were satisfactory, we will need to investigate and study the psychology of the species more, so that this can be avoided in the future. As for what we did with the body, we did not return it to its species this time, Instead, we opted to imitate their burial rituals and lay the corpse to rest in the ground of their natural habitat. As for the linguists, they are perfectly fine. Their suit only sustained minor damage, and they were able to leave the enclosure in time to spare their life. In any case, we have a lot of work ahead of us now, more than we ever expected. Signing out. Log 402. Schedule check-in. After intensive field study to make sense of their social rules and psychology, we have determined that our next sample from this species should be a biologically connected unit, or family. This species seems to be very attached to those they are related to, as, generally speaking, they spend the most time around these individuals. I hate to let emotions and deadlines affect the quality of our work, but we really need this next sample to be worthwhile. The board is breathing down our necks, and I don't know how much more time and funding they're willing to give. We are the bright future of our field. We cannot fail now. Signing off. Log 421. Schedule check-in. So many things have gone wrong in such a short amount of time. I am beginning to be of the opinion that this species is too dangerous to continue studying in close quarters and all who plan to engage must cancel those plans. I repeat, no one should engage with this species. We have made many important findings by bringing in this family, and have finally deciphered their language, but this knowledge has only served to cement my opinion. They're stronger together, and quite smart. Somehow, they used the control panels in their enclosure to hijack the base, and sent out an announcement for all to hear. Translated, it amounted to, you cannot keep us here, we will escape, and we will seek out revenge. Never come near our species again. True to their word, they managed to escape alive, and upon reconnecting with their species and relaying their experiences, the species as a whole has begun to target us with a technology that we have never seen from them before. We have left the system. I cannot stress this enough. Do not engage with this species. We have dubbed them Pericrosum Kuncat, but they call themselves. What was it? Ah, yes, humans. Ta da!
Yeah, so that's the end. Yes, this is the first draft I'm clapping, of it. but it won't pick up on the microphone. Yeah, I, I immediately typed in, like, um, my Twitch chat that that has, like, a, an, both a creepasta feel and an SCP feel at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I liked it. Yeah, genuinely, that was very well put together. Yeah. Like, my... Yeah. Yeah, it's like... like my... what, what a twist. Like I think I think that like the only slight criticism I would have is at the very least maybe just because of how I am, I was immediately able to tell what the twist <laughs> was. Yeah. Like just by the describing of it, like, wait, these these are fucking aliens and they're looking at us. But Yeah, like, from the outside looking in. Yeah, like but besides that, like, yeah, it's a really really well put together story. Yeah. I want to say this was inspired by um, all the deep, deep sea fish pictures you guys were putting in the stream chat a while back. Oh, yeah. And when I, I, I put shared... that thing back where it came from, that's where I got the idea. Yeah, like because I mean, <laughs> I remember the that. same thing happens to us. Like when you take a deep sea fish to the surface, and they're like on the verge of exploding, and the same thing happens to us when you take us out of our mm. planet oh uh, yeah also pika yeah. has good news uh, apparently oh? the internet successfully oh. got kiwi farms taken down oh yeah, yeah. yeah. oh their uh their oh, service provider is no longer supporting them yep that is amazing about, i love this not only about, that about fucking so, time yeah kiwi farms is gone uh 4chan is on the chopping block Oh. Oh, wow, it... that's amazing yeah. as well. For real? Yeah, yeah, Fortune's been on the chopping block. It's actually announced that it's shutting down in like a few months, if not like re more recent, <laughs> like this month. Nice. I forget well, if it was October it, or something, but it was around that is time. It, is it good or bad time. that I don't know what Kiwi Farms is? Uh, it's good. Uh, it is it's probably good. good. It is <laughs> hell. It, it was a quote-unquote gossip site uh what it actually was was just a site that was entirely run by fascists dedicated mm -hmm. to uh doxing and stalking and occasionally directly harming themselves like themselves yeah. directly harming uh lgbtq plus people as well as several other minority kiwi, groups kiwi, kiwi forms was also uh was an offshoot of uh the quick forums um yeah. cwc uh which is uh centers around uh it centered around uh Christine Weston Chandler, Chris Chan. Um, yeah. So, and basically, as a result of that, they um, went on to spawn Kiwi Farms, which just follows people of similar internet lol cow and basically berates and violates le like their privacy and you know violates the shit out of them. Um, yeah, berates for, them does it for 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 nothing more than just because they can. Um, yeah, and and for for to put it in perspective. Uh, there's like, I can't remember the exact numbers, but there's a, like hundreds of trans people that have been doxxed as a result of this site. A yeah, decent and amount a, of them that ended some up, of them have committed suicide. Yeah, well, a decent yeah. amount of them that well auto homicided. Yeah. Um, that auto homicided as a result now, of. And 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 a lot of the and, one of the interesting things about sorry go ahead buddy. The, and on top of that, I I think it was the Christchurch shooter was a direct active member in their yeah. community. Yeah, in the forums. Not only that, um, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Not only that, the only reason that Chris Chan got as bad as she did is strict is because of Kiwi Farms. Like, the shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Isabella yeah, Like, Jenke, her mental, de uh, like, re like, derailing and shit like that, it only got as bad as it did because of, like, the internet and Kiwi Farms and shit like that. Oh, yeah. Like, That's, she would probably because... be, like, a pretty you know, average person if it wasn't for the fucking internet. Like, the internet fucking ruins people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, that's just, that's also, that's not just, uh, that's not the only thing that happened with Christine that yeah. was, like, an issue. Is, uh, is a lot of, a lot of what happened with her, um, as a result of, like, a lot of her, like, like parents and stuff like that. Like, th it kind of terrifies me mm -hmm. to have a child and then, like, 
not tell them about like the inter- internet privacy and how important that is because if she maybe learned that then maybe like a lot of what had happened as a result would not have necessarily taken place but i can't necessarily say that also because when people people like I said, the, these people dedicated like time out of their lives to make um, like other people's lives a living stinking hell. Um, yeah. And the one of the one of the worst parts about it is that like not unlike 4chan, um, all these um, all those uh, the people on Kiwi Farms, the, the farmers were all uh, anonymous. Um, and there's a, it's, it's in, and, it, and they didn't, it's not like they chose to be anonymous. It, it was out of just pure, it's, it's out of necessity mm-hmm. because they know what they're doing is like gray and going into the black area of illegality and their anonymity yeah. gives them the ability to insulate themselves from consequences. Especially. And they know that like they're, that, that, that people, that their fun, that they, that they, they, they the way they have fun is at the expense of other people, real life people, and they will get people hurt or even kill, like get killed because of it. But they don't care because you know it's, it's some of them. Some of them felt bad because of that. But the most important part about why a lot of these people were anonymous is because they know that the moment their anonymity is com- compromised, they'll get cannibalized by everyone else there. Yeah, that. Yeah is They'll more terrifying alive. than anything I could ever write. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, like, on top of that, like, I, I think uh, the one major thing that I, I take from, well, not the one major thing, but a, a major thing that I take from this is another example of why fascist communities always crumble. Underestimating the people they attack because the thing that actually kickstarted this most recent campaign that has gotten Kiwi Farms taken down was they doxed a uh, Twitch, uh, a trans Keffles. person on Twitch by called Keppels, yeah. who uh, uh, they doxed her and then she got swatted by it. Had a shit ton of really transphobic shit happen to her thanks she to. She had to move like out yeah. of the country. Yeah, like, and and on top of that, basically, after all of that shit, after uh, dealing with discrimination from the Canadian police system, uh, she's just goes balls to the walls fighting against this shit. And like, like I said, in any fascist community, they eventually crumble because they pick a fight that they can't win. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's that's a lot of these things. A lot of the issue with a lot of these sites, you fly too close to the sun, you know you're going to get burned. Mm-hmm. They have to. They had to keep that. They have to keep that. That that you know, they have to keep that middle distance between being known enough to where people want to view the site, and like less known enough by ma- the mainstream that they won't that stuff like this won't happen. That their internet provider won't give them uh, service. Right. Inevitably, they'll find other people but it'll be like inevitably it'll try they'll 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 try they'll try some way to come back or some yeah, iteration of this they'll keep they'll keep trying they'll keep it trying it's just, it's just they their can't their options are the just same. very limited um yeah. because like you know their, their options are limited uh their backs are basically against the wall they're being painted into a corner with a lot of this stuff so so anyways uh changing yeah, well, yeah. the topic yeah yeah back back to the actual reason why we're here Right. <laughs> oh yeah, did uh, we uh did we get moving out of real the, life horror? Yeah, uh well technically Jerry's got real life horror, but uh mm. uh oh, well, mo- okay, moving right back. <laughs> but uh besides <laughs> that, um uh just to double check, uh did we get it so that uh stream chat can actually hear us now? No properly twi- stream chat could hear us, it's just that Chew had ads. Oh, I didn't the, see that. <laughs> yeah, they, I can see you every time you guys speak <laughs> oh, okay, inside okay. and stream. <laughs> I'm dumb. I didn't see the no to ads. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, I would be so pissed if they couldn't hear the entire time. <laughs> Just the first hour of the stream is nothing but dead silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead okay. silence and just the what is was the like cartoon dog? Yes, my oh, dog. Yeah. Also, do, dragon. Do you like what I put in the top left corner? 
Uh, I'm not on your stream. You should probably go see I what was... I did. Right? I know it's Smile Dog. It's not. It's actually not Smile Dog. It's not. It's, it's not Smile Dog. It's it's that the is goal. Actually pretty trippy. It it is the goal. Uh, yeah. It says what Dragon Lord wants. Eighty percent completed. One hundred and seventeen days to go. <laughs> Damn it! I have a hat. Uh, I have an ad. Can someone gift me a sub, please? <laughs> Can someone, someone give money give me for me to no longer see ads? Give me money. Give give right your money. Actually, <laughs> that's hilarious. Pay the streamer. Right so your money. No now. ads. Right, right was I'm... giving Chew a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you gave it to Keelan. <laughs> no. well, that's kind of funny. That's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, hilarious yeah keelan oh yeah you can give it to a specific yeah you can keelan well, gets that sub fuck you child oh, oh, oh yeah you you can't give it to a specific person yeah uh, i yep yeah. yep i i uh oh, Keffles is I, live. I, I figured that out now <laughs> anyway uh who's doing the next story uh either you hatchet or momo I mean, do do we want to just stick with real life horror and then have the rest of the stream be fictional life horror? Yeah, we can do that. Oh, I think the last story read was fictional horror. I liked Brian's story, but they. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name on here? Fiction. What? Uh, I think... The Dragon Lord. Okay. Yeah. Oh, six. Yeah. Also, I love Pika's message that says, Chew will have revenge for y'all giving me fucking 25 to $26 in just two days. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get any revenge on us, too. Anyway, uh... We'll just, we'll just keep torturing you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't give Pika any money. <laughs> That's probably always going to be the same. You weren't, you weren't in his stream, so yeah, of course you didn't. <laughs> I would have, I would have missed all of Pika's streams lately because I've been sleeping. That's fair. All right. But anyway, let's circle around to being back on track. Right. Uh, I guess, Jerry, go ahead. Oh. Here is a real life horror story called "My Mom's Older Brother." I guess let's start with warming it up to have people know the kind of person he was before we get to the main uh, part of it, which I guess is, it's still horror hearing about that, but it, it's less severe. So yeah, warm up. Uh, they were both raised by a mom who basically lost custody, as I'm sure some people heard during the stream earlier. She lost cust custody because she was incapable of caring for her children as her <coughs> mental uh, issues got too much in the way, and she basically totally ignored it to, let's just say, very unsafe proportions. And that was while one was still a baby. And... So her, she decided to respond by kidnapping those two children she lost custody of. And the way she raised them is probably what you might expect from someone who is not mentally well enough to raise children. One, she, she focused on the older one more because she liked them more. Because, I don't know if it was because they were a boy or because, yeah, I'm pretty positive it was because of they were a boy. I shouldn't say that, but mm, lots of details suggest that she wanted a boy and the second kid was kind of like, oh, there you are. I'm taking you specifically to spite your dad, not because I want you, because, you know, taking the kid from the parent they want is that wants them is like yeah 
nice thing, I guess. And so thus she would do things like ignore it when Stacy attacked my mother when they were small children or stole from my mom because, you know, she would also steal from my mom. My mom, uh, after uh, her mother, my grandma, uh, was left by her first husband, who was not their, my mom, or who was not Stacy's dad or my mom's dad, but a stepdad who was a wonderful person, but could not take those two because the two that were my grandma's kids because he had taken, stolen his kids from his wife who had been physically abusive and was worried that if he took more kids, that would put his children in more danger of falling back in the hands of the abusive, abusive uh, mom that they, that he had taken them from. Uh, so yeah, let's just say every time uh, Stacy and my mom were in a bad situation, instead of acting like an older brother, he decided me first every time. And it didn't change as I got older. Fun. Yeah, and their mom basically laughed at it. So, yeah, but this was also the same person who nearly killed my mom because she was convinced a small child had taken her drug stash, so. Uh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's how they grew up. My mom ended up with PTSD and my uncle ended up with trauma issues and tended to blame everyone but himself for issues and always tended to praise himself for reasons I don't really know besides that he's an asshole. And so even growing up, he had a tendency to use his younger sister as an, a bit of an ATM and way of getting things and insulting and hurting her. I think he only stopped because while my mom was dating my uh, father, my dad literally almost hurt Stacy. And my dad, let's just say he may have been a historian, but he was also one with a weapons collection and very, very good at self-defense and at beating the crap out of people. He just didn't really do it unless you really knew how to provoke him. And I, I'm sure you can guess how Stacy really provoked him by putting the lives of his children in danger. And the only reason he did not hurt Stacy was because my mom pleaded. And since then, Stacy never tried to touch my mom physically in any way. Although uh, later in life, after I had grown up and Stacy's children had grown up, he had started threatening to slice my mom up. Although this is not unusual, he, where my mom, the, despite having PTSD, was fully capable of raising her children and did, Stacy, probably due to his selfishness and not due to his trauma, because there have been plenty of people who dealt with trauma who are capable of raising kids. And honestly, if he had tried to fight his issues with something besides drugs, I think he could have handled it. If he got mental help for his schizophrenia, he could have gotten help. I mean, he could have handled it, but he never did. He never seeked help, never seeked treatment. It was everyone's fault besides himself, besides him. And people like that never seek treatment because it's never their fault. So safe to say he lost custody of every child he had. And 
when they, after they grew up, I guess he decided he wanted to contact them. And then he started realizing none of them want to talk to him. With my cousin Ellen, which is one, his second to oldest kid, uh, my mom ended up raising her a good portion of my cousin's life. Not all of it, but my mom went through basically hoops and loops to make sure Ellen got out of the, basically out of the system so she could have a stable home and basically go to college and all that other stuff, which is something my cousin Ellen did get. She is a professional in the world now doing good things, but she also hates her dad because well, as nice as my mom is and how my mom, tr no matter how much my mom tried to soften things up, Stacy is still Stacy. And of course, him being a jackass to someone who is successful and intelligent, who had an intelligent husband, had kids and basically all the things people can hope for, even a house and everything. You know, you, you can't force the jackass to be nice. No matter how nice that kid is, no matter how successful, no matter if the grandkids he gets are intelligent and well-behaved, it doesn't matter to someone like that because it's everyone's fault besides his. And I, in, I think around his 50s or something like that, 40s, 50s, I have no idea how old he is which probably shows you how much I don't like him. His idea mm -hmm. of, basically his idea of blaming everyone but himself started to crumble because once again, none of your kids talk to you. None of your kids want to talk to you. So he started blaming my mom and threatening to chop her up. The re there is a reason why we took this seriously though. Although my mom tried to laugh it off, and made very, let's just say, grim jokes. Throughout the time me and my siblings were growing up, he would on and off make commentary when we were older that uh, it was very easy to hide bodies. And he said something to my sister about, uh, about dwarves starting a fire and he's uh, said other things to uh, us that suggested he knew how to get away with murder. And I told this stuff to my cousin yesterday and apparently uh, he actually met the woman my uncle murdered and got away with murdering. She was a short woman. She watched my cousin sometimes. Oh, just so you know, my cousin's over 10 years younger than me, so he's around in his early 20s. So if you want to know, yeah. So while he was still a kid and I was a teenager, he had met this girlfriend of my uncle Stacy's, who was sweet, who would watch him sometimes, give him toys a very well-behaved woman, and she died a very mysterious, horrible death. So he literally murdered someone and got away with it. So, oh, yeah. And he still walks around completely unfazed. He's never shown a single sign of remorse for killing someone. Probably blamed the sweet short woman for it. Uh, yeah. Is it legal to, uh, like, know that someone committed murder and admit it on oh. stream? That someone committed well, murder that you know? It's technically what? legal since Hold I don't on. know the name of the person. My cousin Hold doesn't on. know the name of the person. Hold. Who am I going to tell? <laughs> well, 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 the authorities for one. <laughs> Jeez. Momo, this is the kind of stuff yes. where there's literally not enough evidence to tell the authorities. They just go, 
Okay, but well, where's the actual oh, evidence? Ooh, what the what? hell? So yes, if you ever want what to know, well, the, no, I mean, mean the statute of limitations already has been fucked. But like, come on, I mean, damn. There's, <laughs> as far as I know, there's no statute of limitations on murder. There's probably not. But once again, I know next yeah. to nothing about this woman. The the things me and my siblings have heard could be considered as hearsay, and it's just a lot of hubble. Hobbly- it's a lot of stuff that amounts to hearing us, hearing uh, our statements about someone who is less than mentally stable talk about how they got away with murder, and a different family <laughs> member talking about. How they met the girl he likely woman he likely murdered isn't really enough evidence to get the police interested, especially since she was probably a homeless person like him. Damn. And those are the oh, people oh less likely to get help from the authorities or yeah. justice. Yeah. They this is the whole them. just the whole concophony of fucking it's like shit a- here. Yes, it's a fucking doom vortex. Yeah, damn. Also, apparently, he did not, my cousin, when he became a teenager, did not realize my uncle had been the one who had made her mysterious, horrible death happen, but he had run in, run into my uncle while heading home from school while a teenager, and while he didn't know that, he just got the nope vibes and as soon as he could, totally just jetted out of there, which I am so glad he did. Uh, yeah, that that's sad, like, not to take away from this, but I do think, considering we are talking about a situation in which a person has not been legally convicted of a crime, as, as, as unlikely as it is for anything to come of it, I think it's still important to add a couple of allegedly, allegedly, allegedly is in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's a lot of allegedly's, uh, but he literally admitted to it, even if it would be considered hearsay to say that at a police station. Oh well, yeah, but but like that. yeah, like like don't get me wrong. Like I, I'm I'm saying that we should be saying some allegedly's because as unlikely as it is. As, given the fact yeah. that this hasn't been brought to court, there would be a minuscule chance of this guy hearing this and going, ah, I'm going to be a real dick and sue. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry to burst your bubble hatchet, but he is so insane. He once told me when I was a kid that raccoons have the power of 10 men and can tear doors <laughs> off their hinges. <laughs> He's not sane enough to consider going to court. He also doesn't trust the system. I mean, he's so insane. I feel like it'll ne- I mean, he will no, never go no, to no, 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 no. Not for like anybody's sake, but our own. That's what Hatchet is saying. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like uh, for it's nobody's better- sake, this covers our, but uh, our booty cheeks. Okay. Yeah, we like, say like it. it's better safe than sorry. Well, yeah, but I'm saying literally the only one person who only has off chance a reason that he gets- to go after the after us would be him, but he's too insane to even try. Yeah, Let's but not just, even leave no. that. Yeah, what well, Hatchet is basically hey. saying, they say, like, we shouldn't even leave that shit to, like, chance. Hey, Don't leave it. Pers- person who is related to Jerry, it's a piece of shit. Fuck you. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about no, the uncle. Just, <laughs> no. oh. oh, just remember my... <laughs> Dad has two brothers that are my uncles that are wonderful and amazing. Yeah, they're they're awesome. But mother side uncle, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that guy, fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that motherfucker is 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 certifiable. He need he need to go. He need to go into a rubber room with some grippy socks. Oh, and there is something I know about that he did that's almost as bad as the murder. That isn't allegedly. It's fact. No. Okay, so, uh, so so this one just is absolutely down. confirmed. So this, this it's actually not, happened. Yeah, this something one's that absolutely actually happened. Okay. One of his younger one of his daughters that are younger than my cousin Ellen, 
that he also did not raise because he's a pile of shit. Um, at one point after college, or I think it was during college, yes, during college, someone broke into her apartment and cut her throat open. This caused Jesus. her severe trauma. Fuck. And during the time that she was recovering, Stacy decided to enter her life for the first time and get her hooked on drugs and steal from her and move her around. As far as I know, uh, family members have not been able to successfully get back in contact with her and get her back to safety. Oh, so as far as I know, he still has a hold of the cousin. And last time my mom heard from her, she was convinced in her drug rattled, uh, very uh, emotionally and mentally injured state that her real parent couldn't be Stacy, but my mom, because she was having trouble accepting that someone that horrible could actually be her family. So that was, that was depressing. Yeah. And terrifying. Okay. And yes, he really did that. And no, I do not know if she is safe yet. As far as I know, as my, no, n none of my cousins have told me that she's safe. I haven't heard from anyone that she's safe yet. And I have a feeling I would be immediately told because that is a big deal. And that is horrible. And that is something he 100% did. So I have, I have a thing to say. She got very fucking lucky if she got her throat cut. Because that is a very yeah. dark area to get cut and live. <laughs> I don't really consider her lucky to get her throat cut, man. Well, no, well, no, no, it's, no, it's that she's no, lucky to be alive. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. She was lucky to be alive. <laughs> to have lived she's through that. To be alive, but I don't even know if she's current. Well, I'm sure she's still alive, I hope. Right. Yeah. Either way, yeah, like, just just to be clear, I am at no point trying to uh, say anything other than fuck this guy. I just think it's always better safe than sorry. Yeah. yeah. In terms of, like, in terms of things that are like, I'm saying this is a horror story, the second horror story. Yeah, that, that, that yeah, one that is 100% fact. 100%. Yeah, he, he if, if his drug-addled brain decides to see this and decides to take us to court we have we, that that's we have, one thing that we can back up very well yeah. he would yeah. never go to court he thinks well, yeah. the government like tracks him or some nonsense oh my gosh he has so many mental issues and he is so it's selfish All right, I, I don't think mama. he even knows what a court date is I I feel like if your uncle was uh, followed by the government and constantly under supervision, I feel like that would make sense, seeing as allegedly he has probably committed murder. Yeah. If this motherfucker did all this shit, like, like, like he said he did, if he, if, he, if he actually went through with some of this shit, and, the, the, and, and, and if this is indeed the case, if he got motherfucking, like, Agents following his ass, then then no, he should he 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 should be in a cell right now. I, like that's 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 what I'm like saying. You should be sitting in a six by eight right now. Not 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 now. But right now, he was sane. He's literally <laughs> someone with a delusion, uh, schizophrenia, and his schizophrenia, like my great, I mean, like my grandmother's schizophrenia. And like my brother's schizophrenia includes delusional thought. That be, added with the sheer amount of drugs he, he's taken. He should be in a he should be in a fucking rubber room with some grippy yes. socks on his feet. Because yes. this is this is this is this is wild. Yeah. Mm -mm, also, mm -mm. if you ever run into a skinny, homeless looking guy that looks crazy as shit named Stacy, I I would run. I would be try to be polite and stay the hell away from him. And I was gonna say you had to be out of um, name, Stacy. I was like, you're gonna have to be more specific than that. We live in red states. Well, I can't really yeah. give more specific than that. <laughs> I can't really give 
more details. I don't even have pictures of him. I barely remember how he looks. I, if I want, I can't really warn people very well. I, uh, I know his full name, but I'm not going to say that on stream because you're not allowed to do things like that. Yeah, I was about to say like that. that oh, please, that. no. Absolutely. Especially after what you just said. Hell no. Yeah. Hell um, no. I am not going to do that. Hell to the no. <laughs> but I will say, I hope you never meet him. And he is... I hope no one meets him. Not Most homeless people are totally harmless, but not all of them are totally harmless. Just as not all people are totally harmless. The only person yeah. I really hope meets is the fucking, like, the Supreme Court. <laughs> okay? It's, it's the Supreme Court so he can get his ass, you know, in a nah, cell. No. In a cell. No, 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 no. Knowing those motherfuckers, it. knowing those motherfuckers, they'd let him go. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about the Court of Appeals. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Court of Appeals that every, the dis the, that district, the, the governor's, like, but, several mm -hmm. states. I'm talking about that court. <laughs> not, not, the, not the superseding uh, Supreme Court. Yeah. I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah. Babe. Okay. So, so I, I think, like, I think since this is wrapping up, I, I think I will simply take a, a line out of the child's, uh, vocabulary. May that man eat shit and live. Uh, <laughs> that is all. All right. Honestly, so. I be surprised oh, okay. if he had eaten shit and lived. So. He, he ate all the raccoon shit, hoping to gain some of their powers. <laughs> oh, no. oh no, I can imagine he him trying to do that. Into, uh, he transforms into raccoon uh, Hulk. He turns into Rigby. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, no, Rigby. Rigby's younger brother. Rigby's younger yeah, brother, no, 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 who is like no, really no, fucking no, rip. Yeah, the yeah. big guy. He's like. He's like weird and like humanoid, but he's got Rigby's head for some odd reason. <laughs> he's a furry. He's a persona. <laughs> okay, on the topic of like insane shit, uh, this I would like to say that this is on Twitter, and I'm pretty sure it's like 100% satirical. Oh, but for fuck's sake. I'm I'm quoting this word for word. If Marx were around today, he'd be into freedom, apple pie, baseball uh, on a warm summer evening, kicking back and having a uh, couple cold ones with the boys while playing, joshing about the uh, uh, playfully joshing about the events oh, of the day. He'd be an American <laughs> through and through. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, who's next, <laughs> Hatchet Twitter. or Momo? Uh, let me uh, get, give me a second to finish customizing this bike and read my first story. Or I guess Hatchet will be next. Yeah, I just I got some drink, drink some water after that shit. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah, and after Momo tells a story, uh, it'll be time for my surprise. Horrifying. You're finally gonna admit you're a bird? Fuck off, yeah, no. holy shit. Bird reveal? Right bird, <laughs> bird reveal? reveal? Right bird holy reveal? Shit. If you fully want me to admit me being a bird, you have to get me at least 100,000 followers. <laughs> well, actually, luck. technically, I think we already did get you to admit it at some point. I did, you, I am not at 100,000 followers. No, like, yeah, you are. Before this, I'm very certain that you at some point, like maybe a slip of the tongue, but still ended up admitting that you are a bird. This yeah, has no. happened. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. This is this has happened. All evidence has been deleted. Shut. No, it hasn't. <laughs> my, so my, no my, my memory has evidence. <laughs> yeah, but you have no deleted. proof. Yeah, and you don't have any proof that you're not a bird, bitch. I have sent pictures, you son of a bitch. You're a bird. Are you sure? I haven't seen pictures. I sent yeah. pictures of my hand. Yeah, Are you sure? Because if I remember correctly, it was a wing. Birds can have hands. Uh, if I could pull up. Well, I am going to hatchet, end you. Hatchet. Oh. Hatchet. <laughs> Wait. Hatchet, level with me. Level with me. Level with me real quick. Yeah. Level with me, okay. Listen, if... Let's call it even, and let's just say, because we both know 
the birds don't have no goddamn hands. Let's just call it even. Say just bright as a corp did. Well, you see, them. that's the thing. Birds do have all of the things that make up hands. They have all the phalanges. Yes, but they're not fun they're not functionally they would not be functionally considered like actual like a, like appendages like like uh, appendaged yeah. hands yeah you know in such a yeah. fashion that you could yeah <laughs> that is fair enough i still will argue that bright is a bird bright is just an exceptionally rare bird that also has hands fuck you but bright here's the bird. thing hold on hold on i have something to say uh rian has to go uh went to go eat dinner they'll be back wow so yeah bright's okay. a furry yeah. That, Bright's persona that. is a bird, thus she has hands, but also you. she has wings. I'm not a damn furry. Are you There's sure? There's nothing wrong with them. I don't oh, hate no, them in any way. Wrong with them, but I are just, you sure you're not I a just furry? don't. I'm just not a furry. I have sent you a, a fucking video of a person beating a bunch of furries with a shovel. <laughs> you know what, Bro? I think you are the type of furry that would be like. Uh, oh, so I don't know what that Japanese term for it is. Uh, I think like Kimo Mimi or something. Not a damn furry. You're a furry. I have oh, no problems furry. with fur I have no problems Kimo with furries. Kimo They're pretty yeah. neat and cool, but I'm not a damn furry. Yeah, that's right. right. You're a furry. Let me look up some examples Fuck off. of uh, of that. So you know what I mean when I say uh, kimono Mimi. I'll look up bird ones. No. Yeah, you see, yeah, you see, y'all. That, that's the thing. Bright's not a furry. Bright's a birdie. Fuck off. Not that either. Or an avid, like an avid. Yeah, avid. I hate all I, of you. I just think I just think birdie's appropriate because bright is a bird. I hate all of you. Post, and you will see the kimono mini me bird ladies. <laughs> 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 I know where to, I know the second right. one's from. I know the anime the second one's from. I know that anime. Oh shit! And no, child, you're not allowed to watch that anime. Wait, what? What anime? Wait, po Poppy's not a Poppy's not that. She's a harpy. I I uh, yeah, but the, the anime Poppy's from has a lot of scenes children should not be witnessing. Oh yeah, I know that thing is very eighteen plus. <laughs> yeah, that is very yeah, eighteen plus. I mean, which oh the second one? Yeah, Poppy Circus. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Poppy like the circ like the clown. No, 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 no. It is from an anime <laughs> slash manga that is extremely adult. Yeah. A kimono mimi is a type of furry that basically has very minimal amount of animal uh, autonomy. Uh, they basically have Anatomy. not as many animal parts, but they <laughs> are still a furry and have some. I'm not that either. Oh, here's yeah. a cute You thing. are. No! Yes, you are. Oh, man, that really is bright, ain't it? Fuck off. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck I'm, you. I'm, I'm, sa I'm saving this. Are you talking about the grouchy elf? <gasps> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Who that's right. Shit. Ooh. Shit. I, okay, no, I think I think the top one's bright. Actually, no. Wait, no, the top one's not bright. She's too tall. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, we have to have a short one. Where's the short one? Yeah, but, well, po Poppy is pretty short, but she's Damn. also way too fucking innocent to be bright. <laughs> Fair. Oh, yeah. I will agree and with also, that. Fair. And also, also, the one at the bottom has like hands and shit, and is yeah. all sassy. That's bright. Exactly. That's <laughs> Fuck you. That is I, just read oh, wait, the no, damn wait, I story, I Hatchet. I found, I, I found bright. I found bright. This is bright. <laughs> No! What the no. fuck? You can't give her a <laughs> house moving no, castle. That's not a no. Wait, what? That's not what? house uh, no. moving no. castle. Is that's it, is from, house moving um... castle. Is spirited away. Spirited no, away. Really okay, I was just saying. Depiction of Baba Yaga. Same direction. Yeah. Goddamn. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like, no. I hate no, everyone in this hate... room right now. What you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what about what about this one? What about this one? Would this one make you feel better? This one? No. 
No? Too many feathers? Wait, wait, can I see? Ooh, okay. I, I don't have any I feathers. I still think Hootie shit is the best. I don't have any feathers because I'm not a damn fucking bird. It's, it's fine to be a bird, Bright. <laughs> Fuck off. Also, anyone, also, anyone know the artist for that Hootie shit? I really like that style. I mean, Jerry sent it. I could probably guess that their Twitter is probably not the safest place for anyone under the age of 18 by the style. Most likely now. Sure. What? Well, I mean, well, there there are a decent amount of artists on Twitter that... Fuck off, Pika. <laughs> that, that, like, make these sorts of images without being 18 plus. I know what that okay. goes to, you piece of shit. What did Pika say? Bright, have you heard? Have you heard, Bright? <laughs> I'm not answering okay, what about it. This one? What, about, what about this one being Bright? If Can this we... thing had red hair, maybe this could be Bright. Fuck off. Also, <laughs> Hatchet, read your damn story. Oh, or, or if it had gray hair, because Bright did dye her hair gray. Um, well, I was uh, holding off on reading until uh, Jerry says that they will be uh be back oh. they are back oh they are back yeah Ooh. so yeah, until they that are. last one is nice i thought wait ha jerry was the one who sent the pictures really they're here left because i ended up getting into bright as a bird oh okay so so <laughs> you are here now. yeah that yes means i didn't leave yet to do the thing oh oh i got that because well, I was say... wrapped up in showing Bright that she is in fact a bird and can be a bird. <laughs> oh yeah, then then uh, you go take care of that, and then I'll start reading when you get back. All right. Mm -hmm. Though before I go, I will put this one up. Okay, now I'm. Looks looks like she could pounce off of like walls to hit people. I hate all of you. It's it's obviously very short. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, also military esque. Yeah, we are. We are. We're all... trying to find what Bird Lady Bright is. Yeah, I still think that if you look through and you see the owl girl that says hoot and shit, that's Bright. <laughs> oh, I lost it. Uh, I found it. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, I am doing nothing at the moment. I feel like Bright's what? gonna delete all these posts. Well, it's not the fifth one. I know that for damn sure. Um, I not the fifth one. <laughs> the the no. one that Pam looks sent. Oh, that uh, one. Not the fifth one. Not the sixth one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, not the fifth one. I feel like All the most you. recent one works, to be honest. Yeah, it works mm -hmm. pretty well, but I, I, yeah, I also... Agree. Just, I, I think that that is the most appropriate, but my favorite is the hoot shit. But it's also probably just because I love owls. Yeah. Also, I hate all of also, you. Wait, also, the hoot oh, shit also has hands, but wings. Yeah, wings and but like, But, like, but you get the... You get the awesome claws in the in the bottom one. So, yeah, I well, don't give thing, a right? shit. I'm not a damn bird. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. But that's the but that's the thing. Bright, as we all know, Bright has sent evidence. Bright has hands, but those hands were not these nope. weird ass bird hands. Those hands well, look like human hands. Hate all that doesn't mean that she can't retract her. She can't like like transform her hands into wings and stuff. I hate all of you. Oh yeah, but like the the <laughs> hands on this bottom one are very clearly based on like bird claws and bird bird feet. While bright, quite obviously, 
has more humanoid hands. Wait, I just realized I can easily solve my problem. What? By screaming at the top it? of her bird lungs? Bright's gonna, yeah, Bright's muting it. Oh, I'm, I'm free. Hey, Momo. Bright, you seem to have forgotten that I have power. Right, so, uh, so it's just gonna be, uh, staff members. Wait. Oh god, what? No. Yeah, 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 this is, and so it begins. Bright's a bird. <laughs> Bright's very much a bird. <laughs> I have been freed! I am free! I'm free! Oh wait, I noticed something even better. Bird is bright, bright as bird. Mm -hmm. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh my god. Motherfucker. You know what, when in doubt... When in doubt, pinky <laughs> out. Kick the child out. Yep. <laughs> Right, why didn't you tell me that Twitch VODs would take up so much space? Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah. uh, Jerry, oh, you return? You return? Yeah. Okay. I'm playing back to gameplay. Oh, horror story play. Gameplay? Well, it's, the scene's called gameplay. Mm. Uh, anyway, Hatchet, read your damn story. <laughs> what if I don't want it? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Quite Did you... frankly, this is pretty Orwellian, bright. Face, fucking ass munch. <laughs> How did you not expect that? Literally 1984. Literally 1984. How you doing there, big brother? Wait, what? It's Wait, right? You don't know who okay. Big Brother is? No, George I don't Orwell. want to know. Honestly, I I don't I don't want to know. Uh, I know it's a show, show. from like, like, the extremely dystopian. famous novel 1984. Oh, uh, I've George never read Orwell that book, motherfucker. Uh, say, um, I have not read that dystopian book. future. Neither have I. What's your, so? What's your excuse? Yeah, I don't. I, don't fuck, I only know the 1984 thing. I don't know who the fuck a Big Brother is besides that annoying ass big show. Big Brother is the entity within the world of uh, this dystopian world of 1984. It's basically like mm -hmm. the notion that every uh, everything's being monitored, everything you do, uh, like like censored, you know, censor, everything censored, you know, like highly regulated, <laughs> yeah, highly heavy authoritarian surveillance. Um, so, so yeah. Anyway, are, Hatch, are you ready to read your? Fucking story now. Yes. All right. This story is simply titled "Innocent." Terrifying. <clears throat> On Tuesday, August second, two thousand and twenty-two, a group of four hikers found a suitcase discarded near Jefferson Lake, Colorado. Upon breaking it open and having seen the contents, they immediately turned it over to local authorities. While several pieces of evidence from this case have yet to be made publicly available information, the select few have been in an attempt to gather leads, including several small glass vials, a two-inch pocket knife with the initials RFD engraved on its wooden handle, a large ladle, a pair of well-worn leather loafers, men's size 10, pairs of between three to eight individuals, an NIV pocket Bible, and finally a loose connect a loose collection of notebook papers with handwritten text. All of the context of the case have been confirmed to have traces of human blood on them. The remainder of this document will be dedicated to the oration of the papers that were found in the case, having been pieced together in what is presumably the correct order. <laughs> Looking back on my life, it feels like the majority of it was pulled straight from a bad comedy. Confused, pointless comedy, consisting of a man constantly toiling in the dark, 
find the answers to the simplest of questions. Ones we should have already known the answers to. Ones that were as obvious as a fog hole on the open ocean. Ones that he would eventually be able to answer so very easily as if reciting his name or the number of fingers on his hands. For so long, so very, very long, I was the lead to that pathetic excuse for a comedy. But now, now the curtains have closed. It all started with my genius of a mother. I remember distinctly that the first part of my childhood, she was kind and constantly attentive. I wanted for nothing and was always cared for deeply, passionately. We never fought or argued, save for the rare few times when I felt particularly incensed by the presence of vegetables on my plate. I would complain and cry and scream, but she would never raise her voice or lash out. She would simply say something to the tune of, You have to eat your vegetables. You are what you eat, so you need to eat something that will keep you healthy. Though even then, I noticed that she didn't like to say it, that something was a bit off. In fact, looking back, she never particularly liked giving more realistic answers to my questions at the time. I suppose I understand why now, but back then, these few moments of clarity seemed strange to me. Then came my tenth birthday. On that day, there was no cake, no presents, no happy tunes or motherly love. No. On that day, there was nothing but mother crying to herself in her room. Any time I knocked or called out to her, she would simply smack, snap back, telling me to go away. I didn't know what had happened, why she was acting this way, though I should have. The following morning, she did not smile. She gave no kisses or hugs. She only looked at me with disgust and sadness. I went to school hungry that day, and every day after. Suppers were never more extravagant than a barely warm microwave meal or, or a bowl of dry cereal. I would ask her why she changed and why she was always angry or sad, and she would simply respond with, You're not innocent. I at first thought that this was merely something that would pass by waiting long enough, but days turned to weeks, weeks to months, and months to years, and nothing truly changed. I, I longed so desperately for her attention, for her love, but as hard as I tried, as good as my grades, as clean as my record, she would always respond with disdain. You're not innocent. To every last thing I said to try to get her approval. I would constantly look back, trying to think of what I had done wrong, what I was guilty of, but come up with a blank. I would ask her what I had done wrong, but she would simply make a pained expression, never answering the question. The same treatment never changed. I stopped having her make my meals for me and made my own meals, focusing on nutritional value, yet nothing changed. I became independent, cleaning my own clothes, cleaning the house, all without her asking, yet nothing changed. I graduated from middle school at the top of my class, yet nothing changed. I graduated high school as valedictorian, and nothing changed. I went to college and got a degree in economics, and nothing changed. She never congratulated me on my achievements. She never expected anything from me. She simply looked upon me with disdain and sadness, saying, You're not innocent. I never came to an answer to my questions, though they were right there, right in front of me. I never understood her words and simply stewed, dwelled on them, slowly losing myself to them. Why? Why was I not innocent? I never heard of Fly. I founded my own company and worked to pay my employees fairly. 
I gave more than five, more than half of my income to charity. I did philanthropy, community outreach, youth programs, and founded healthcare for the needy. So why? Why was I not innocent? What was I guilty of? Why did I deserve this treatment from the person that I loved most? The person I did everything I could for. The person I kept well fed, bought a house for, a car for, everything. The person, the person I made sure would never want for anything. Why? Why? For four decades into my life, I still couldn't answer why. Eventually, my mother fell ill. In her 80s then, she didn't have a strong enough immune system to fight it off. And so I soon began to spend most of my time with her, attempting to comfort her as she lay there slowly dying. Yet, even then, even on her deathbed, she didn't speak to me or ask anything. She simply stared off into the distance and struggled with the pain she was in. I eventually brought myself to ask it, to, to ask it one last time. Mother, I've tried to understand your words. Understand what your words mean my whole life, yet I still, under, I still don't understand. Why? Why did you become so distant? Why have you always refused to answer me? Please. I need to know why. I remember distinctly, she turned her head my way, her eyes pale and her voice hoarse. After all this time, you, you still haven't pieced it together. You still don't get it. For a millionaire pro prodigy, you really are quite stupid. Fine. I'll spell it out for you. She paused after this, coughing and gasping from her ailment. Yet, I felt as if the world had lifted away. Mother was finally talking to me. I could finally be free of these nagging questions. Innocence is purity. And purity is youth. To age is to let this fallen world ch change you from your purest, youngest form. It is age that rusts the strongest metals, renders the tallest mountains to sand, and the, that rendered my body into this husk. To age is to be tainted. When I saw you age, I saw you become like the rest of us, it, impure. I wanted to keep you safe from this corruption, but I couldn't bring myself to do the only thing that would have ensured that, that you weren't corrupted. I was weak, and I let you become like the rest of us. None of us are innocent. We are all tainted. Our, our blood is impure. We are not innocent. You are not in innocent. The blurring sound of her flatlining, the ruckus sound as nurses, nurses and a doctor rush to her room. The feeling of my tears streaming down my face rendered me completely dumbstruck. I was paralyzed with grief, but more so with a newfound purpose. With an all encompassing understanding of my life, everything clicked into place, and the curtains closed on that sick, futile comedy that was my life up until then. She only became disgusted and saddened by me when I got old, when I had lived in this fallen world for a decade. I knew at that moment that I had to find a way. I had to find a way to become innocent again. I had to be rid of this 
tainted blood, tainted by the world, tainted by age. If I was to honor her, the one I loved, as she lost herself to this vile world, to the sickness that is age, I had to find out how to become pure. I had to become innocent again. And yet, I replaced my blind questions with clarity that only inspired more questions. How would I become innocent again? I was once again left dwelling on her words over and over and over again. I spent many sleepless nights trying to piece together this puzzle. The first question I answered was, if to age is to be tainted, then what was the one solution she spoke of? How could that corruption have been stopped? So long I pondered this, but I eventually remembered some little fragments of my childhood that made the answer clear. All the little times my mother looked at me, seemed pained, and was near the kitchen knives. All the time she was preparing a nice dinner and looked toward the medicine cabinet over and over again, but never opened it. Oh, it became so, so very clear why she was weak and why she could never bring herself to do it. I could not have been corrupted if I had been taken, no, no, released from this world before I could age. It is very clear now why she couldn't bring herself to save me. But, but I, I am not weak as she was. And I know many who I can save from this world's corruption. The second question I answered was, if my blood, my body is tainted by this world, by age, by this impurity, if I am already tainted, is it ever possible to become innocent again? Oh, again and again I nod on this question until the answer came to me. Oh, yes, did it ever come to me. For the blood to be tainted, the person would have to age. In other words, those who were pure have pure, untainted blood. The innocent, the innocent are pure, and the innocent are those I need to save. But how could I be innocent again? How could I make her life meaningful by becoming innocent again? How? Oh, oh, but I found the answer. Killed, I killed two birds with one stone. One stone, you see. And I, I'm finally innocent. Thanks to my mother, thanks to her words, thanks to my carefully honed memories, I am innocent again. And I have saved so many from losing their innocence. They have helped me, yes, they have helped me too. Thanks to mother, thanks to the, those I've saved, I am innocent again. My blood isn't tainted. My blood isn't tainted anymore. How could it be tainted anymore? After all, you are what you eat. That is the end. Ah. Wow. That well, was amazing and also yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it was. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Around the end, I knew where that was going, but that didn't make it any less horrifying. That made it worse. So we need to kill a child so they can become innocent again, right? No killing. What? <laughs> That's reality. <laughs> the, no. This this, no. this story was uh, inspired by a mixture of having conversations about Ed Gein and his psychology around uh, being yeah. really obsessed with his mother. And then also thinking about like a really, really, really fucked up line of logic that comes from a certain intersection of Christian ideas being there is an eternal everlasting hell that we're all doomed to if we don't accept Christ. And this idea of there being a stopgap where a child 
is innocent and will automatically go to heaven until they reach the age of cognition, until they can actually tell right from wrong. You see, when you add these two ideas together, yeah, the logical conclusion is that to spare the eternal suffering of any child, the most moral action is to kill said child before they have the chance of being corrupted. And I just brought, I just, I just mashed those two ideas together and made a story in like five hours with this one. Oh. You horrifying. Right. Also, I mean, like, thinks of the when you think of the imagery of the like, uh, the notion of the Eucharist. Um, Eucharist with regards to um, you know Christians taking on eating, mm -hmm. uh, consuming the body and the blood of mm -hmm. of Christ That's in fact. So it's you know it, that wasn't lost on me either. I, I yeah, love Chu's message. What did Chu say? So what so, you're saying uh, is Christians secretly support abortions. <laughs> always been the case. I mean, <laughs> if if you if you if you follow if you follow these lines of logic to their logical conclusion, then yes, all babies should be aborted. <laughs> we got them. There it is. We won. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, even their holy book says them. how to perform an abortion. We got yeah, them. There's, there's abortion we in the we, we fucking got them. We got them. But yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like one of those little fascinating things to me when, like, analyzing people's psychology and philosophy, how people commonly come to, like, and hold to certain philosophical positions that lead to incredibly <laughs> fucked up conclusions, but they very rarely actually follow the lines of logic to where those conclusions lead. So, like, if I bring this up to a Christian who holds to both these ideas, it can be very hard to get them to understand that these two ideas lead to this being the most moral conclusion. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that, that was... That 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 was me combining Ed Gein with uh, creepy aspects of commonplace Christian mythology. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was that was awesome. Yeah, that means Momo's next. Oh, and as a side note, if y'all are wondering, uh, um, at the beginning when I mentioned a two-inch pocket knife with the initials RFD, did anyone at any point like ask? Like what? What do those initials actually stand for? No. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um. I... Everyone, I want you to look at dumb posts and look at the last one. I'm I'm pretty sure we found our bright. Pretty yep. sure we found our bright. Ginger, short, hands, hey, but also wings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wings green eyes. Amazing. I don't think bright has green but... eyes. The wings are just white, though. That's so fucking basic. That's oh, yeah. true. Good point. Well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> right? 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 wait, wait, no, hold on, hold on. I I'm looking, I'm looking at Log's channel right now. Bob Saget tried to join the server. Who? Who? <laughs> Someone with the name Bob Saget, but apparently they didn't do it correctly. The oh, fuck yeah. is Bob Saget? Or uh, it could be Bob Saget. Comedian, apparently. Why is there a stand-up comedian who, trying to join Bright's who, server? Not, not only a stand-up comedian, a dead stand-up comedian yeah. who died what? in January of this year. So a ghost tried to join your server. Congratulations, oh, right, Bright. Oh, wait. Bright, you are haunted. What a way. Yeah, they <laughs> tried to join at 11.11 11 p.m. Oh why no! Didn't you, why didn't but, uh, you warn me that <laughs> VODs would take up so much space on your computer? I <laughs> thought you would figure that out when you download why it. Why would I know that? They're I, super I, long sure... video files. Yeah. yeah I mean... Not only that, not only that, uh, it's, not only is it better to have like a little separate like thing you plug in, like a separate uh, disconnectable hard drive, like easable, hard drive, yeah. easy one. 
uh, not only that, but I'm pretty sure it's easier and like more recommended and saves up a bit more space if you just record the video, like the VOD as you're streaming. Yeah, that's what I've been doing since it. ever since I, I got she started. Was oh, I thought but... you had to download it. No, except for the couple of cases where I forgot to hit record, I've mm. been recording as I stream. Okay, I didn't know. But, um, yeah, yeah I, at, while I was streaming today, I got an alert saying, your computer is all out of space. And I'm like, why? I go on, I look at my files. This one folder where I keep all my Twitch VODs, 198 gigs. Yeah, you're yeah, you're gonna wanna streaming. You're gonna yeah, this is this is why you're gonna wanna just make an archive channel somewhere. But like have an work to just upload all of those and then be able to keep your I sent a friend request to dead guy. Oh my gosh. But uh (laughs) anyway, just just to be real quick. Uh, if if anyone at some point wondered what RFD stands for on this guy's uh uh pocket knife, uh, very early on, I just like decided this guy's name. We don't know it. His name's gonna be real fucking dick. Wait, they accepted a friend request. Oh my god! Honestly, oh my god. that was really close to the guess I had in my head, Hatchet. My what? guess was really fucking dangerous. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, I, I went, I went, I went a little more ro- low brow. Two, two out of three. Two, two out of three isn't bad. Yeah, real fucking two out anyway. Of three uh, ain't bad. Momo, do you got a story? I got a couple of stories, but yeah, yeah, I got one. I can read. Right. Um, but yeah, this one um comes from uh. Boy, uh, Slime Beast. He, uh, like I said, he's one of my favorite uh, creepypasta kind of uh, writers. Yeah. Um, before, um, I know Abandoned got by Disney got read, mm-hmm. so I'm just reading this one as a kind of a follow up. Uh, um, I read the sequel to Abandoned by Disney, uh, which was Room Zero. It's Room Zero. Yeah. Yeah. No, not no, not no. This is not Room Zero, but it is by uh, Slime Beast. So. Got it. Uh, yeah, no, Room Zero is good, though. Um, yeah. But this story is called um, <clears throat> Lost Episodes. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble here. So if you believe in haunted lost episode legends or enjoy living in that world, maybe this isn't the post for you. Don't get me wrong. I hate when people complain about lack of realism and entertainment. And I think all kids need to believe in Santa and the Tooth Fairy for as long as possible, but this this is different. Back in the 80s, I met this dude, Sid, who cut old VHS tapes and shit. It was more of a hobby for him. It was more than a hobby for him. It was pretty much his entire life. His parents were a bit more wealthy than I'd been blessed with. So when we were teenagers and I was slaving away at Scats, yes, Scats, a fast food restaurant, he just hung out around the house cutting tapes all day, all night. Of course, as you get older, things in your past become a bit clearer. And I think he might have had some form of autism or maybe he was a very high functioning person, but of course I'm no expert and I'm not saying that 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 was the case. It's just the best and quickest way I can think of to explain his personality and this obsession with cutting tapes, cutting tapes, cutting tapes, cutting tapes. It started when he was, when he saw old Yeller as a little kid For, for whatever reason, his parents let him watch that shit. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's the tale of a boy and his dog. I hope I don't have to announce the spoiler on such an old-ass movie, but in the end, the boy has to shoot the, his own dog because it's rabid. 
Sid didn't appreciate this. His dad photographed and videotaped weddings, so he showed Sid how to operate some of the machines, and Sid cut out the ending, replacing it with an earlier, happier scene, as if old Yeller just suddenly got better off screen. He watched the tape obsessively after that, even into his early teens when I'd first met him. He'd make me watch it once just to show how he fixed it. And I could actually picture him as a little boy once. He started applauding and cheering his own faux ending. I didn't want to say I was a bad influence, but after I saw it, I, I asked if he could do that with other movies. My major interest, my major interest was perhaps taking a film or two and cutting into some nude frames the actresses hadn't really been done. <laughs> Don't worry, though. I, I never had the guts to actually ask if he would. I just imagined how cool it would be often. Sid told me that, yes, he could fix any movie he wanted. In fact, he had done it with a few others. Um, he had a copy of a Ghostbusters cartoon, and I shit you not, every single ghost was completely removed. The story made no sense. There was no continuity, but he had accomplished it, and I was very impressed. I guess in the time of VHS, these things seem more magical than they do nowadays. As, as time went by, though, I encouraged Sid to edit more movies, but with different purposes. Instead of whitewashing all the scary stuff like he'd wanted to, I got him to see the light on how awesome he could make things. Somewhere out there, this chubby Star Wars nerd from our high school had all three original films flawlessly cut together with edited-in effects that made George Lucas himself cry out, enough meddling. <laughs> we charged him like $20 for the only copy because we were idiots. Anyway, this went on for a while before I lost most of my interest in it. It was more of a goof for me than it was for him. That's the point when I started working, started driving, started taking bases with local girls. While he just got more and more involved in cutting those tapes. I think his favorite were the cartoons. When the Simpsons came around, he went ape shit on those. Now his edits weren't so much fixing things as just breaking them in interesting ways. Another thing that sticks out in my mind is when he recorded an episode of MASH and cut it with a glory old war flick. Halfway through this version, the camp gets bombed, soldiers invade, everyone dies. And at the end, he specifically worked in freeze frames of each cast member's face, eyes closed. He completely reversed his interest and embraced what had once terrified him. Scary endings. He seemed to love things like long, drawn-out sequences and terrifying violence. He made me be quiet while they played, too. You may have heard about this mysterious fellow named Banksy who goes around creating interesting graffiti and whatnot. At one point, he went to a music store and replaced some Paris Hilton CDs with his own fakes. Banksy has nothing on Sid. Every other week, he'd tell me about some store or a video rental place he'd snuck in some of his tapes into. He'd swap out the real ones for his versions, and then he'd start all over again by cutting the ones he had stolen. At one point, when I hadn't heard from him in a long while, I stopped by his parents' house and found him in the garage. He set out his own little movie studio there, complete with a drawing board. He was actually animating entirely new content. All at once, I was blown away by his artistic skill I'd never seen before and very concerned about 
when this guy was going to come out of the dark and start acting normal like me. He barely looked up from his drawings as we spoke. I asked him what any kid now in his late teens would ask. What the fuck is wrong with you? Huh? S seriously, dude, this is some crazy shit. It's work. I'm working. My work is just as important as anyone else's. Are, are you even selling these anymore? Or are you just sneaking them into places? How, how much is all of this costing your dad? I don't care. I looked at what he was so feverishly illustrating. Is, is that a headless body dancing? Yeah. Th th that's pretty dark, man. I know. That's the point. I, I don't get it. Those tapes, I thought they were wrong. But over time, I figured out the truth. Which is? The scary stuff is right. The happy endings are the lie. He just kept drawing as I stood there. The silence was disturbing, and in that moment, I could smell the, the B.O. coming off of him. It wasn't just sweat, either. It was a mingling of that and a foul ass and piss-soaked cloth. I... I, I hate to say it, I really do, but I gave up on him right then. It's that moment when you look at someone, someone you thought you knew, and all you can think is, holy shit, I never realized they were this far gone. It wasn't until my 30s that Sid crossed my mind again. I was perusing the internet, just aimlessly wandering the, the web. When I came across a series of urban legends about strange VHS tapes, recut movies, and lost episodes. Some of these I recognized. I watched them from Sid, or I'd actually seen him in the middle of working on them. Every disturbing scene, every unbelievable anecdote, I believed it because I had been there. Others, SpongeBob cartoons, episodes of iCarly or whatever, those shows came long after I'd made my break with Sid, but the style was all too familiar. Even the ones that didn't sound like his work seemed like they could have been broken copies or attempts at mimicking his work. He was still doing it after all these years. My God, it, it, it boggled my mind. I called up Sid's old number. Not entirely sure I'd still find him there. It rang for minutes on end. And I knew that the search was hopeless. Even if he still lived with his parents, it wasn't likely they'd all still be at the same house by now. Still. I made a point to drive out to his old place to see if he was still in that garage cutting tapes or manipulating them via computer or whatever he was up to or who would be up to. When I passed by the house, the unkempt lawn was overgrown with huge waist high weeds. The dilapidated facade of the building with its peeling paint on the shutters, missing roof tiles and Muck-filled gutters told me that no one had lived here for a long time. I saw a note on the door, but I couldn't read it from the road. Maybe it was something I could use to locate Sid and see if he had gotten the help I now realized I should have given him. <sighs> Pulling into the driveway, my headlights illuminated the garage door. It was windowless and vandalized, and the 
gang tags of some traveling band of assholes. The note on the door, as one might expect, spoke of a certain bank now owning this property. It noted that trespassing was heavily discouraged and that at a certain point someone would be out to make sure the house was winterized, whatever the hell that is. As I walked back to the car, defeated, something was, something was a nagging at me. See, I, I knew that Sid's parents kept a spare key under a false rock by the back stairs, basically a virtue of Sid locking us both out on several occasions. And when I found that key, a sense of cold, gnawing dread swirled in my stomach. Who would move out and leave everything in place like this? The, the key was the most obvious thing, but the flower pots and lawn decorations were still there. Sid's old, rusty, rusted out huffy bike was leaning against the house and had created thick, rusty streaks along the aluminum siding. I didn't know what I expected to find, but using the key, I entered the house. The smell was overwhelming. Not a, not a putrid smell, nothing rotten or decaying, just the smell of... I don't know if this would make any sense to you, but the, the smell of electricity. Like, like, like a burning dust on a light bulb or a, or a heater giving off a peculiar warmed metal odor. That was the least of my concerns, however, as everything I saw was just as we had left it. Everything Sid's family owned was frozen in time. The dining room table we all sat out on many occasions was dust covered and supported, an emaciated dead rat which had all but turned to dust. Television, that bulky, oversized television set we all sat around to watch Sid tapes at and laud his creativity, said where it always been. Silently displaying a violent bombardment of black and white static. As I moved through the rooms, the sense of panic and discomfort within me only grew. Every fiber of my being was shouting, Run! Run, you fucking idiot! Still, I pressed on into Sid's bedroom. It was now empty and in disrepair. His prized action figures and blank videotapes, hundreds of videotapes, stale and water damaged. I almost wanted to call out to shout Sid and wait for him to appear as if nothing was out of the ordinary. I went into his parents' bedroom. There, lying in bed, were two motionless bodies, gaunt, gray, half turned to dust, just like the rat in the dining room. I could scarcely believe what I was seeing with my own eyes. Not only were there two dead bodies slowly dissipating within the confines of this once idyllic suburban household, but nobody, nobody had even checked on them. Nobody had discovered this until now. My mind raced. My heart raced. The only thing that wouldn't move were my feet, which remained glued to the spot. Sid, I thought, 
Sid must have done this. There was no way that the two of them would just lie down one night and simultaneously die of natural causes. Sid had said he didn't care about his parents and, and... When was the last time I had seen them? God, I, I had seen them in days, maybe, maybe weeks before the last time I talked to Sid. When I finally left the room, I took out my cell phone and began dialing 911. However, as soon as I lifted it to my head, an ear-splitting shriek of interference nearly caused me to fling the object across the room. I rushed to the kitchen phone, squealing static. I tried the living room phone, just to be thorough. <sighs> static. It wasn't until I put the receiver back down that I heard it. Music. Faint. Barely audible music that I hadn't noticed before. It 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 seemed it, it, it seemed to be some sort of repeating melody, happy and light. Some flutes. It maybe maybe a whole horn section. I I followed the peppy tune to the in-house door to the garage. Pressing my ear to the door's dirty surface, I determined that the music was indeed coming from just beyond. Sid? I called out, barely managing to form the name with cold, bloodless lips. Sid, are, are, you, are, are you in there? Are you all right? I tried the door only to find it somehow locked from the other side. It was no matter, since one wild kick nearly knocked the rotting wood off the hinges. Sid! I shouted out as the dust slowly cleared. Through the haze, I could only see the light of the television screen. Vibrant colors. Blue, yellow, green. Soon, as I got further in, I, I, could, I could make out a cartoon playing on the screen. Then the, the silver wires running from the set itself to some dark mass. Then the dark mass took shape as my eyes adjusted to the odd lighting. It was Sid, or, or, or rather, his body, not, not dead nearly as long as his parents, seated in an old office chair. The wires from the television set led directly into his body, eventually disappearing into several old crusted over holes, his leathery flesh. Through a small worm-eaten opening in his ribs, I could thought I could see more metal inside of him. I walked, I walked to Sid's side, holding my hand over my mouth for fear of vomiting. His face was a, twisted into a hideous, wide grin. His empty socket seemed almost happy, hooded with a pleased brow line. there i heard a jarring voice the 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 voice was upbeat high-pitched it it sounded almost like sid but 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 different bubbly and cartoony i i turned to the screen the green grass the blue sky the yellow flowers and sid perfect caricature of him. It strolled along the infinite loop of that utopian cartoon background. It waved at me. <laughs> Sid? I whispered. Oh, oh God. Oh God, Sid. He, um, the cartoon version of him 
turned his attention away from me and continued to merrily stroll across that unending cycle of the same backdrop. He passed a shrub and then passed it again and again and again and again. The same blue bird chirping happily flew through the sky in a perfect figure eight. Sid, I shook my head, unable to comprehend the scenario. I'm sorry, I, I should have never let you leave reality. I thought about what Sid had done to his mom and dad. I thought about how the bank would come by soon and all of this would come to light. I watched Sid walk along for nearly half an hour. And then... I unplugged the set. And that's the end. Terrifying. Damn. Fucking yeah. hell. Yeah. My story is not going to top that. <laughs> I got faith. I got faith. What? I got faith. I don't, I don't think it will. But I had right. to, like, amend some things because uh -huh. this guy's, like, really, really, like, there's a lot of, like, antiquated, like, um, sort of ableist, like, stuff in here i get yeah, i feel like this is like from the perspective of like a like a like a cishet white dude <laughs> i just hate to say it <laughs> pretty much yeah it's like like, like this is an old creepy pasta it's yeah probably gonna have about as much political awareness as and nuance expect. yeah yeah mm. it's, it, it was made back in um it was made a while it's made a while ago i know that yeah. I think like maybe 20, 2012, 2013. No, no, like 20, I think 2013 or 2014. Yeah. When, because I remember being in high school when this came out. Yeah. See, the thing is, when you said Lost Episodes was the name of it, I was thinking, oh no, don't, don't tell me you actually like the Lost Episode creepypasta genre. No. no that's no, what no, I was no, thinking no, at no. first. I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's the first one. It's, it's, yeah, no, this is. This is the one I really like. I really like this one. Um, right. Because it gives kind of an, a little bit of an explanation. And it's, it's, it's horrifying in its own right. Um, it's like it, 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 it pertains to lost episode creepypastas. Yeah. But in the sense of creating a horror story around. Ooh, exactly. The, around the people that would be so obsessed with yeah doing that like making those commonly very cheesy but interesting re reenactments of yeah. these stories yeah really I, cool. I love this one yeah we can and tell all stories <laughs> kind of like that they're, they're, really, <laughs> they're, they're, they're very very um they're just either weird or um they're just like really like terrifying in an odd way uh, it's really yeah. interesting stuff yeah so i guess Why? are we ready for a surprise or do we have right. more things to say, talk about first are you ready for wait so you're finally going to admit you're a bird Fuck off. Are you yeah, yeah, are you a bird? I'm writing a story real quick. I'm writing up a story. No. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> did you hear listen, listen, did you hear that last story? Childhood creativity is a, is banned from hell. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's fuck you. Mm. <laughs> is Wait childhood creativity band really why 
Why? <laughs> well, no shit, it's not actually banned. <laughs> I'm I'm taking this I'm, I'm taking the I'm taking the piss out of you, Dingus. I do yeah. have a lot of dark stories though, because like, yeah. It's... So, all right. So, are we ready? Is a mm-hmm. d- does the jury and or Aderna have thoughts on that? Yeah. I'm fine. Oh, I mean, no, I we're mean, gonna like, do the story. story. Then, then we're gonna do the uh, Godzilla one, right? Well, I guess after Dragons and Hatchet's second story. Uh, so you want to end off the stream with... Uh, and yes, Godzilla, yeah. Because, like, I mean, it's the longest that. one. Well, I, I thought that I mean, was going to be like a multi-stream. Yeah, it's going to be a multi-stream thing, I figured. Yeah, it, it, it most likely will. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it's like the longest one. And the most popular, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> It's pretty popular. Yeah, and I don't. I probably won't have speaking part this stream. It likely. depends on how deep yeah. you want me to go. Right. Um, how many parts? How many parts in I should go? There, are, there are like eight fucking. How many? I forget, how many parts of of this are there? It's like eight. Yeah, eight of them in the epilogue. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought we had like. So, so who's gonna like do the? reading is it just gonna be you two or do you guys want more people uh i know i'm gonna be the voice of red yeah so. <laughs> uh, there will probably there might be more characters honestly i'll have to i'll have to read this again <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to read it again i know i know that red speaks i know that samson speaks uh solomon oh, solomon that's right i knew it started with an s my brain tried and failed so, man Solo man. Wait, does Jerry have any alert words about Momo's story? Dead silence. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. The story eliminated Jerry's consciousness. <laughs> Jerry is one with the Discord now. I'm actually kind of wondering if Jerry's even here. I wonder if they left and didn't say anything. I think they, yeah, they might, they might have gone AFK and didn't interrupt anything. Well, they don't want to be yet. Jerry, if you're here, you are muted. Jerry, if you are here, give us a sign. <laughs> okay. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> The phasmophobia <laughs> shit. Are you are you French? Are you here? Yeah, are you French? <laughs> are you French? <laughs> How old are you? Where are you? How old are you? Where are you? <laughs> oh yeah. What I is have... your I like what is your direct coordinates on the globe? What is your IP address? What the fuck? <laughs> I kinda wanna <laughs> ask that in phasmophobia. <laughs> at the back of your, back yep. of your um credit card what are the three yeah, left right. the back? can we get again <laughs> what was, what... i want to play fast what was the name of the first pet you had what was the name of your uh kindergarten teacher what was the name of <laughs> like what, is... what was the name of your childhood like house's street what yeah. is your favorite I'm author not trying to get into your passwords i swear i, I, <laughs> I kind of want to i kind of want to do that actually in fast Phobia. just ask those questions to see if i die well, you died a couple times, and I, you were shocked when it happened. I don't know how. I remember that what one time like? where I just sat in the closet and someone else died. Like, it, the ghost just walked past me, didn't care. And just Jerry, killed. would you... Jerry, would you like to trade credit card information? <laughs> <laughs> That's the real horror story right there. <laughs> you first, Hatchet. I don't have a credit card. Like, I have a mini story. No. What the one that you've been writing? Fuck you. <laughs> the one that you've been writing? Fuck you. <laughs> so, so, on the topic of like credit card shit. No. Uh, change credit card to ID shit. So, 
uh, years ago, before I was born, uh, my birth giver had this friend fr- across the street who, uh, I'm gonna call him Jerry. I don't know his actual name, and I, I feel like that's kind of fucked to actually use what they thought his name was. So, Jerry, like, he was a pretty usual dude. Like, sometimes he would throw parties and shit, but, like, he was, oh, whatever, dude. Uh, my birth giver lived with him, like, was roommates with him for a bit. Uh, and then they fell out of touch, and then they got back in touch, uh, kind of, not really, uh, and then fell out of touch again. But then, apparently he was on, I think he was on the news, and apparently he had been using his dead brother's, uh, ID, like, identification and everything, for the past few years, and no one had known. I'm pretty sure his brother was also in the military and died in the military. So he was using his dead brother's ID. Everyone thought he was his dead brother. Yeah. What the, what the fuck? I think Damn. he might have also been a, like a wanted criminal for other shit. So that's fun. Well, Only in the... Florida. <laughs> Only in fucking that. Florida will that shit happen. He got nice away with it for a long fucking time, too. I said, nice mini story. Who joined? Pika! Pika, run. 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 (laughs) Read Bright's name. Read my name aloud three times. (laughs) Can we actually explain that? I don't get it. But is that a reference I should get? Okay. Alright. So I was writing my story, and in Word, uh, it wanted me to change the word gonna, like G-O-N-N-A, to, uh, I think it was like go, go and, going, and goanna. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so then I just, oh, boy. and like we were, we were talking shop about Bright's story and in that moment i decided to change my name in here to goanna yep yeah, goanna i didn't even know goanna was a word well it's it's a couple of words no it was put together in word wait it was put together it was put, it was together. put together yeah it was put together in word <laughs> is it like some odd spelling of joanna maybe like, joanna joanna I like, don't know, but it does not look like he would say it as Joanna. <laughs> Microsoft Word is having issues. Yep. <laughs> going, go, and Goanna. <laughs> well, listen. On here's here's a bright style. Here's 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 a a, a happy story to all of the. Uh, all of the dark that we've had so far tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I am I am currently in a big rig uh, okay. in GTA 5, plowing my way straight through the LSPD. That is all. Oh. Like I have a giant oh, scoop on the front of it, and I'm just... Just, just rattling their brains up the sides of their own cars. Hey, Pika. Uh, wait, I just work. realized I was muted. But uh, Pika, uh, once Jerry gets back, you get to hear a surprise. Not working. <laughs> no surprise is not working. Holy shit. <laughs> the surprise is broken. We will never know yeah. what the surprise is. I'm trying to, uh... I'm trying to find the, uh... gift that someone made for me of my Sona getting head padded, but I cannot find it. Oh. And I'm trying to find a, um... 
Like someone's gotta have oh. a save. Give me so. Oh, that one doesn't work anymore. Oh, wait, I just got a message from Jerry. Oh, they were in the toilet. They're back, I think. Okay, the oh. Jerry returns. Jerry, you oh, here? Okay. Jerry, with your magical powers, are you here? Jerry, give us a sign. Hey, Jerry, remember you're muted, so... I think they're still in the toilet. Oh, Pokemon. Okay, says, so um, yeah, I was about to say Pokemon says. It's a species of lizard. It's a group of species of lizards. <laughs> it's still a weird word. <laughs> it's the auto correct to that though. Yeah, word is weird. <laughs> can't imagine it's that common of a usage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering, like, none of us knew what it was. Just, like, every college student just typing Goanna in some weird way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, word... Word, if, if y'all didn't know, Word now pulls all of its vocabulary exclusively from undergrads in Australia studying lizards. Yep. <laughs> I have an idea. No. <laughs> nope. I'm a dick. Damn it. I should okay. probably put in a mission while we're waiting. <laughs> you are now all cursed. Damn it. Didn't work. You are all cursed. Whoa. I'm I've been cursed. Well now you gotta spread the word, Pika. To spread the curse. I have you as a butt buddy. <laughs> I've already been cursed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you saying you would like someone else as a butt buddy? We already have toast. That just makes it double cursed. <laughs> we already have toast. That's true. As, I wonder if they're still upset that we're butt buddies. As as we all know, uh in the butt buddy pact uh clause seven, page three hundred and sixty-four, uh this document is considered to be a hex, a curse, and a blessing at all at the same time. I just asked Toast if they're still mad. Nah. Oh, they're right. back now. Cheery. Did I miss while I was gone? I had to rush to the bathroom at the start of Momo's story. It was just Momo's story. We didn't continue after that. Yeah, nothing. Wait, who just said you guys were trying to perform a seance to get me back? <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're, yeah. Doing, we're doing phasmophobia ghost what? hunting. Yeah, we're well, both. I wasn't because I've been I gone. Dead. I was just on the toilet. How long? there <laughs> how long was i shitting <laughs> God, probably, dude. I'd be home, dude. I, 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 okay so you left towards the start of momo's story i'd be willing to guess that story took approximately 20 minutes so over 20 minutes yeah also oh, toast God. gave an answer hatchet what there is an answer to that question one which which you will not receive I asked them if they're still mad that me, Hatch, and them are butt buddies. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, to to get an answer to to get an answer to one of my important questions, uh, Jerry, are you French? <laughs> I am many things, but French is not one of them. Funny thing is, I, I French. my DNA test did prove I was French. Fuck. <laughs> I am part Scottish, Dutch, Welsh. 
uh, German, Irish, Blackfoot, yeah. Spanish. I'm a quarter Spanish. Probably the most of anything that I am. Yeah. Yet I look so Irish, save for my hair. Spread the word. But Spread the word. Started off Spread blonde, the word. But became increasingly <laughs> dark. So now it looks almost black slash also white because I got white hair at some point due to stress. Uh, oh no, we, we, we can't, I, I can't hear what was said in stream chat using the, uh, the uh, text to speech. Lorco was saying spread the word uh, a bunch of times. Also, uh, some of my hair strands. The strand itself switches from white to dark, from and then white and then dark again. My hair has been compared to cat fur. Let see. Okay, let's see. Uh, what what was another one of the questions we asked during the seance? Um, what uh, is the little uh, three digit number on the back of your debit card? <laughs> what was the name of your first elementary? Uh... First, elementary, first, your first, first elementary teacher. What was the name of your first pet? Yeah, kindergarten. I don't remember the name of my first elementary teacher because I hated her, but my second one was Mrs. Peterson, and she was awesome. But Jerry, you know these are like password questions, right? Oh, these are definitely not things I've ever put as passwords. <laughs> yeah, you I'm see the joke? You. you see the joke is we're trying to commit identity theft on a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and the joke is, those aren't shit that I use. Right, right, so anyway, before we continue on to my surprise, since Jerry's here, uh, so the reason why I'm happy that I'm French because it proves that I do not exist. What? <laughs> yeah! French people aren't real! French people aren't real! <laughs> I'm pretty sure... French people are real. <laughs> no, they don't exist. For, 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 are you sure? Yeah, are French you sure? To, for you to show up as French in a DNA test, that means that they are real. It, you don't get a <laughs> you don't get a DNA test and get results back. Oh, hey, would you look at that? You are the clerk in <laughs> alien species. Also, you would be part. So you would only be partially not real. You would still be real, but you would only be partially not. Right, I'm dead. If you so use that real. logic. What? <laughs> <laughs> For over 20 minutes, you guys will perform seances to get me <laughs> off of the toilet. Yep. <laughs> yeah. This is how, this is, this, this has happened Many times in the past when we want someone to show back up after going AFK. Okay, so I'm definitely going to clip oh, yeah. that. That entire segment of the seance <laughs> to now. <laughs> also, while well, food was gone, well, actually, while I was in the bathroom, food came back from the shopping they had to do, and they oh. got me Dream World Coke, and it tastes weird? See, it tastes anyway. weird. Are we ready for my surprise? Is it a good surprise? Yes. Mm. The surprise uh, is the depends. story it I wrote. It tastes like mango and coke, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. And uh, good is a subjective term. It is the no. story I wrote. Is everyone ready? Oh, I'm I get never it. No, ready. I see the let's fucking do this. I'm gonna go eat my food. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's see how this is improved. Yeah, uh, I do know uh, Cherry's sister, like, improved, like, run-on sentences and, like, changed sentences a bit, so there are some differences than you notice, Hatchet. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, everyone ready? Yeah, I think that's that's one thing about my writing, is because it has been long enough since I, like, was in high school, there's probably a decent amount of grammatical errors that, like, Grammarly doesn't pick up on and I don't pick up on. Right. I probably have a lot of run-on sentences. That's fair. Just ones that don't feel run-on to me. Yeah. Alright, everyone ready? 
Can I come up with another distraction? No. <laughs> All right, starting. All right, go ahead. The creation of Dr. Aaron Bright. Hey. Chapter 1. Athosagoraphobia. I said that wrong. A Athosagoraphobia. On a starless night at sight redacted, Aaron Bright is awakened by a loud, insistent beeping of their alarm clock. Noticing it is 8 p.m., Aaron begrudgingly pulls herself up and out of bed. She trudges to her closet, gets herself dressed in her uniform, and grabs her level 4 clearance keycard. Guess it's going to be another shitty day with, with 035 again, she says with a yawn as she steps out of her cell left open for her as she embarks on her on the day's task. Oh hey Bright, a person from the wayside asks with only exhaustion to back it up. The individual was one of the doctors. He was about half white and half me Mexican in her descent. Their wavy orange hair that trailed down their back like thin winding vines that caused them to stand out a little more than the others but was strange to no one. You know, Dr. Rowler, you're supposed to refer me as Dr. Aaron, right? Uh, oh, right. S sorry, Dr. Aaron. Dr. Rowler stuttered nervously. Hey, just be glad I'm not like the other level fours. Try and remember to call me that next time. It, uh, she uh, warned Dr. Rowler casually, since the same mistake could not be made with a few of the other level 4s. Dr. Ryler was definitely not one of the level 4 personnel, but he did work as a level 3, close, close enough maybe. Dr. Ryler repositioned her... Uh, uh, Dr. Bright repositioned her stance so that it would be more comfortable to continue a lengthier conversation with the other in front of her. So I'm assuming there's a reason you're in front of my door? Oh. Yes, here are the direct orders from the O5 Council. Aaron takes the papers out of Dr. Rattler's hands and looks at it confused. Why on earth do they want me to watch a D-Class personnel go into SCP-579's containment cell? Especially through a glass shield and observation de deck. It's an anti-mean. We can never know what it looks like or what it does with the, with the D-Class after we leave the observation deck. So why on earth did he give me a copy of SCP-963? We all know it doesn't work like the original. Slammed angrily by Aaron. Um, it, it's what they want, nervously said by Dr. Rattler. S sorry. Shouldn't have yelled. Aaron didn't sigh. Guess I'll have to deal with this shit. See you later, Dr. Rattler. See you later, Dr. Aaron. Aaron Bright then proceeds to head down to deep containment. Finally arriving at SCP-579's containment cell, she then approaches the two guards in the D-Class. So this is D-Class going into SCP-579's containment cell? As she said, looking at a depressed, disheveled, young white man in an orange jumpsuit. The guard on the left spoke, Yes, ma'am. This is the D-Class we will be using today. Alright, let's get this over with. Send them in when I get to the conversation deck. Yes, ma'am. The guards responded. Aaron proceeds to the observation deck and reaches to the observation deck control panel. She opens the cell doors and uses the microphone to tell the guards to send the D in the D-class. Aaron then presses the cell button and the cell doors close. All right, D-Class, do you see anything? No response coming through for 10 minutes. D-9873456, do you or do you not see anything? Before she could finish, the observation glass shattered. Alarms were activated with a long, long with high-pitched screaming coming from the observation deck. Both guards ran up to observation deck with their guns in hand. But as soon as they got up there, all they found was a lifeless corpse of Dr. Aaron Bright. 
and a copy of SCP-963 wrapped around her wrist. Though for some reason the ruby gem looked pitch black instead of the bright red as it was before. They left, the, the left guard took the amulet to be taken to be stuck studied, and the second guard called for backup. Backup eventually arrived. SCP-579 is believed to have returned to the containment cell. The body of Dr. Anna Bright has been cremated. In an interrogation room not far away from SCP-579, Agent Redacted one of the seven agents that that works on SCP-579. Order D-Class 275-82356 to put on SCP-963-3. The pale Irish and Polish lady picked up the am amulet and placed it on onto to themselves. What the hell? Where the hell am I and who the hell are you? The agent doesn't seem surprised by this and says, I am Agent Redacted, and you are at the SCP Foundation. I know you must be shocked right now, but please bear with everything I have to say, and take a seat in the chair in front of you. I, I, okay, I, I'll listen, as I say while sitting in the chair. The agent then leans forward to the D-Class to speak. Three days ago, you were killed in a breach of SCP-579 occurred. We aren't sure why this happened, and why it attacked you. If you don't mind me asking, do you know who you are? The shrill lady, lady spoke while falling out of her chair. No, I, I don't... Why don't I know? Agent says, Calm down. You're okay now. There's nothing to worry about. Agent finally gets her to calm down. I do believe you to be Dr. Aaron Bright, seen as... They were the only ones who were to hold SCP-963-3. A somewhat calm lady asks, What is SCP-963-3? It is the necklace you are wearing. That said, that is all the time we have for now. I'm going to have to leave you in the hands of your only doctor friend. Who are they? You will find out when, when you leave the room. Agent helps the lady off the floor and leads them to the exit of the interrogation room. Agent opens the door. The tired and worried doctor was sitting in the chair next to the exit. Alright, Aaron. This person here is your friend, Dr. Rattler. They're going to try and help you with your memories. Dr. Rattler gets up and says immediately, Please come with me. I promise to help you out as best as I can. Aaron slowly follows them unsure whether to go with them. Both Dr. Ryler and Aaron arrive inside a containment cell that housed a pepper tree. Dr. Ryler says, please wait here. I'm going to go to my pepper tree and pick some of the peppers off to help your memory. Um, excuse me? Why would a pepper tree help me? I don't see how that could help me at, at all in any way. Oh, right, you don't remember anything about my tree or the peppers. To put it simply, I had a pepper tree seed that grew from my hair. After a while, I gave in and gave it to the foundation for them to experiment with. It finally grew into a big tree after a while and produced peppers with special effects. I, I, I'm sorry, a seed in your hair and special effects? Well, like you, I am anomalous. As for the peppers, they give cognitive, cognitive effects, such as helping with memory loss. Uh, I think I'm, I'll, I'll just sit down and try to process this. I, I promise it'll help, help, and I'll be right back. Aaron just sits down, trying to contemplate what Dr. Ryler just said to them. Dr. Ryler then heads over to, the, to their pepper tree and picks... Three fresh peppers to give to Aaron. They then head back to find her, find her twiddling with the grass near her. Here, eat one of these. They sh should help you bring, get some memories back. 
You sure this is gonna work? I feel like something bad is gonna happen if I eat this. You can trust me. These will really help you become better and remember what you have lost. Uh, I... I... If you say so. Hesitantly, she takes one of the peppers and eats it. Aaron immediately begins to start clenching at her head and starts crying. A Aaron, what's wrong? All of Aaron Bright's horrible and painful memories came flooding into her mind. Memories such as what Procedure 110 Montauk is, what happens to D-Class at the end of the month, multiple deaths of people she knew killed by SCPs, and many, many other dreadful memories. This, this place is an absolute hell and a death trap, she yelled out before collapsing. Guards were rushed in and removed the collapsed body to another room. Aaron, I'm so sorry. Aaron awakens in another room with the TV. Someone then speaks on the microphone. I know you have been through a lot recently, but I do believe that SCP-2030 can help you deal with what happened to you earlier. She got up and yelled, Why the hell should I do this, you damn devils? The voice comes on the speakers again and says, If you don't do it, we have ways of making you do it. As if that scares me. Do whatever you want, you damn devils. I'm not going to do anything you say. She says with pure anger. The door opens to the left of the room, and two fully armored guards enter the room as the door shut. Without saying a word, they start restraining Aaron to a chair in the room. Get the hell off me, you damn demons! She said angrily by, by being restrained. The guards ignore her and pick up the VHS. VHS tape. The one that picks picks it up, place it into the VCR, and headed to the door with the other guard. Before the VCR started playing the episode, both guards left the room. I told you we have ways of making you watch this. Should have done as you were told. Go rot in hell, you asshole. Before Aaron could speak anymore, the episode had started playing. A weird motion of characters appeared on screen and do horrific things that no one should have to go through. Suddenly, a very tall, laughing person in a suit comes on screen telling everyone to laugh. The fuck is this shit you're having me watch? Before anyone could answer, all lights went out, then back on. Aaron was sitting on a stage with a tall, blue-suited person right in front of them. And that's it. I forgot to change some of the grammar stuff, like miss or the writing. Uh, I forgot to change the e to then a couple times, but I read it as then. So yeah. Is that what you wanted, Momo? Yeah, were you excited yeah, for that? Yeah, exactly what I wanted. I was excited for that. I loved it. I loved there was. It. A... <laughs> it's a origin to this character that you. Yeah, that's to that's only chapter one. Oh god, are you gonna like make this like a whole ass like novel? There's gonna be multiple chapters, yes. Next yes. chapter is called Glitching Laughter. Oh my god. <laughs> I assume this is going to like encompass uh Laffy. Yep. Yep. Uh also Momo, how do you think about the how I died? <laughs> I'm sorry? What do you think about how I died? You're the only one who didn't know. Well... Honestly... <laughs> I... I, <laughs> I, I make, it makes perfect sense to me. I... I... Yeah... I... 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 I, I now that I, like, I, I know how you, how, how you, uh... How you bought the farm the first time, I... Yeah. Everything makes everything makes more sense now. Also, do you know what the name of the chapter means? Athosagoraphobia. I don't yeah. actually. That's the fear of forgetting or being forgotten. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> also, were you able to pick up some foreshadowing? 
Well, there's uh, one foreshadowing Easter egg that was hidden. Hatchet knows it. I'm gonna see if Momo can pick it up. <laughs> I, one thing I think we should do is avoid explaining too much to Momo, right. so that we can have a yeah perspective no. of someone who isn't right there helping you write it. Right. So I, I shouldn't tell the answer. My quick story. All right. So Hatchet, was it better than what it was before? Yeah, I'd say so. A lot of uh, stuff that kind of just happened without much of any buildup was, like, actually had some level of buildup and, um, yeah. in fact, didn't, like, just leave the reader with complete and utter confusion, like the fucking tree. Oh, yeah, where I said uh, Cherry's mother tree. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that, I got that it shit wrong. Is just, what the fuck? Yeah, like like the the first draft included that, but it was just randomly. Jerry goes, uh, "Here, I got you a pepper from my mother tree," and then oh, Bryce is like, crap. "Okay, I'll eat this." <laughs> when I was first yeah. reading this, I was like, "What? Wait, like, nope, nope." Wait, I got back Jerry's, the fuck up. This I got it's really sketchy. I got Jerry's story wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, Jerry, are, did you finish your character story? I didn't even think about that. Uh, Jerry said that they were in the bathroom, so I think we yeah, need to do another stage. I, I have my story done. <laughs> yeah. How old well, you gotta wait, Dragon. You? <laughs> For Jerry to get back. Okay. Are you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, think I don't know if been... Jerry wants to hear oh. my story or not. Are you gay? <laughs> yeah, question... Technically lesbian? They're like, talking to like, Jerry. What? 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 It was a phasmophobia shit. I thought. We're doing no. A doing a oh, seance. we're doing a seance. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, isn't Jerry gay? I'm pretty sure Jerry likes. Yeah. Jerry is very gay. Anyone that isn't a woman. Jerry is, yeah. That is not a Yeah, woman. but, uh. Jerry is, is gay. Yeah, I was kind of worried the story wouldn't go over well. <laughs> Even as the final draft. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like, it, it ain't, I, I think it, uh, like, anything could use improvement, but it ain't, it ain't awful. The dialogue could be improved. It feels kind of cheesy, yeah. to say the least. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. It's not, no, it's... Cheesy ba isn't always bad. Yeah, like, bas basically what I'm trying to say is, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. Good. I wasn't sure if, whether or not to put it as a YouTube video. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be interesting to put it as a YouTube video, if only so that, like, if you go back, change stuff later, you have, like, an audio record of mm -hmm. the story as it was, so we can gradually, like, an outside observer can gradually watch as the, uh, as the story changes over time. Yeah. I managed to write 578 words for my story within, like, an hour. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. But apparently, if it gets approved, Pika says we'll get one em emote soon. Yippee! Nice. Yippee! 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 Wait, right, to, to clarify, during your story, did you forget to turn off the intermission? Huh? Oh no, I put it I put it as you, gameplay. I put like once I I just put it now in intermission. Okay. I was just yeah. wondering because I noticed that it's on intermission. But yeah, no, no, no. Did you, did you fail? No, I didn't do that. Fuck you. Are you a failure? Gosh. Yeah, but anyway. And of course that. the fucking intermission is goddamn smile Smile Smile, smile yeah. peach. Because of fucking course it is. Spread the word. You can't help yourself. You tried. You tried it on me. That dog showed up. <laughs> I have treats, so it's okay. <laughs> give treats to the demon he dog. Showed up. <laughs> give, give the dog yeah, hats. Yeah, yeah, he's 
Yeah. It's, so wait, you're saying I can I have got, this dog as a pet? Um, I'm saying. No, no don't. I'm saying have don't even go that pet. route. <laughs> don't even go. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not. I'm actually not gonna even gonna go there. <laughs> I literally can't even spread the fucking. I'm, I didn't spread the word. And yeah, he showed have... up, but I have treats. Harley's I have really nice spread to spread the word. I didn't spread the word, and I well, Harley, didn't get come on, Harley. Doll. I didn't I... get him. Come here. I had <laughs> Harley. I had a dog who uh, had white eyes, and one of my great uncles thought that she looked really creepy. Um, turns out. He's a major creep, so maybe that's why he found her her white eyes creepy, uh, like the pu like her eyes, like it was a grayish, like light, really light blue, like could be mistaken as white eyes. Hmm. Could they still see? Yeah, she could see just fine. She she had like. This is the color. Yeah. yeah, just the eyes were like a very, yeah, like, uh, the outlines were blue. Uh, yeah. And inside was more white. She also had like a more ginger coat, more mm. of like a red color coat. We were there for her sister, but then we got her instead because she literally, uh, like the people at the pound, let her out along with her sister, and she literally knocked my birth grip, uh, give her down on her ass into a puddle. Yeah. Okay, like yeah, we're getting this dog. Hey. She's old now. I don't have her anymore. Song. But she would be really fucking old now. Like she'd be like six. Not six. Can no, no, twelve. Like twelve song. if she's still alive. Yeah, the uh, without a face. Oh. The uh, second story that I have is uh about eight and a half pages and three oh it was so close to three thousand six hundred sixty six words. Three, oh, Jerry, I gotta ask you a, a question. Jerry, can I what? can I read my story? Uh, do you have your character story done? No, I do not. But I okay. do have one of his logs completed, but that's not the thing. Right. Jerry, uh, as a part of the seance, very important pressing question that no one knows: uh, Are you gay? <laughs> Everyone knows I'm gay. <laughs> every time I say I'm out of work, if I forget to say the of work part, food tends to reply with, everyone knows you're gay. That's <laughs> uh, because your sister's a fucking little shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is Jerry gay or amazing. European? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you gay or you're <laughs> It's a song. Now, 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 this is now this is interesting. Hey, this I'm is a like, gay American. Yeah, yeah. like uh, that's like one of those tweets where it's like shows a cute cat, and like the 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 top text is like retweet if you like cuddly kittens or if you've committed heinous crime. <laughs> like Honestly. Tweets, like when have like it's like that whole like kind of thing of like when when did have you when did you stop beating your wife type thing? Jesus! Yeah. Like when did you stop beating? When did you stop beating your partner? If you answer, I like like, what like the fuck? yeah, like like if you ever <laughs> if you say if you say yes that you have to like if somebody asks you have you stopped beating your partner? It's like a leading question because it's like if you say yes, that means in the past that you've beaten them, and if you say no, you still <laughs> beaten them. Uh, Currently, <laughs> well, nah, the, the 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 best response to that is that, okay. So someone walks up to you and says, "Have you stopped beating your wife?" And then you respond, "Has your wife stopped texting me?" <laughs> has, she picked up, has she picked up? Has she picked up my motherfucking butter and cigarettes? <laughs> no, nah, then tell that bitch to grab my motherfucking ashtray and shut the fuck up. <laughs> ashtray, bitch. You're regretting a few life decisions, <laughs> and I'm questioning the rest. That's kind of just the state of being here on Doctor Bart's channel. 
Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah. Wait, Chiri, I have a question for you also. Yeah. Well, they said no. Uh, oh, oh. Do I get some point? Do at some point do I introduce a new story like I put you in mine? Out of curiosity. I'm positive your character will be mentioned, but considering uh, they're like logs, nobody will get a direct voice besides right. Dr. Rattler. But I will say in the first log, he basically, I indirectly basically put him very confused at the existence of uh, Coke coffee. <laughs> like, what is this? Soda, coffee, what hellscape have I gone into? What has the modern world become? <laughs> Imagine not knowing what uh, coffee soda is and accidentally buying that. <laughs> guess, uh, I guess now it's Penguin's turn for their story. Yippee, I don't, I don't think it counts as horror. But also, if there is anything wrong with the story, just know I wrote it in less than an hour while don't listening worry, to other stories. So, so it's... Don't worry, child. Don't worry, child. We will be hypercritical with your story. So oh, it's quiet because you wrote it. Got it. But uh, thanks. Be, before you, <laughs> just to be clear, that's a joke. But before yeah, that, it is. the one thing I was going to say is I still think one of my favorite memes will always be, we cannot return to monkey. We never left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's true. <laughs> we are right. still monkey. Wait, so that means I can throw shit at people? What? No. You do have the ability <laughs> to do that. You will just also be brought up on charges. Yeah, you'll be sitting in a fucking six by... You'll be a jailbird. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck like, you. Technically and I actually didn't there. mean that as a pun. I mean, you'll be like... Right, they'll have to give you... You'll, you'll, be, you'll be clanking fucking... A mug between the fucking like, before between the bars, trying to get the fuck out. Like, wait, okay. what happens if you throw? Wait, hold on. What happens if you throw shit at a monkey? Uh, they would probably throw it back. <laughs> throw shit back. <laughs> I, yeah, they I, throw it back. Like, okay, right. I've look, never, can... although I wouldn't know because I've never been inclined <laughs> to grab, take my feces in my hand and actually throw it at another simian. At another simian, know. I've never actually been inclined to do that since I have reached <laughs> the age of reason. What the fuck is going on? Literal, <laughs> literally <laughs> shit posting. It is I'm literally so shit posting. Oh, dear lord. I'm yes. concerned and confused. Hey, yes. Bookworm, can you clip all this? <laughs> The, the, right, okay, the, the thing fuck, is, right, did, look, the there is nothing to stop you from stuff. getting married to a know. lady, uh, being very happy in your marriage, but you get bored of your wife, and then you throw her in, into the river like a gorilla does. But the thing is, <laughs> uh, humans, unlike gorillas, have laws. So you're gonna have to deal with human court and instead of just getting away with throwing your wife into the river. Uh, kind of like Penguin gets to get away with sh shoving shoving their friends off a cliff to see whether or not there's a predator in the water. <laughs> <laughs> not off a cliff, off of an iceberg and into water. Yeah, a cliff on an iceberg. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> it's a drop off on an iceberg. It could be called a cliff. Anyway, hey, there's a 50-50 the... chance they'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, how the, how the actual fuck is this the conversation that spawned from me just making that meme? I don't know. For saying that joke. I have no fucking idea. I have no clue what this chat is, or is... why it is the the way it is. All right. What is our friends group? Uh, uh, hell. Yeah, our friends group is you hell. Know what? I'll figure. I'll figure that out when I tell you. Like when I figure out my damn self. <laughs> I still have no clue. Friends group is an amalgamation of different types of people. None of us are the same. A like, bunch of same like types of people. It's a bunch of misfits, and fucking bright is the queen of the misfits. No, had you? I did like change that it. one elf song. Oh. Yeah, yes. Well, no, misfits. no do, 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 it's not Christmas do, do, yet. Do, 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 do. I will watch off. No, that's the no, that's the island. That's the Christmas. island of misfit toys, Pika. I'm not. Oh, I'm yeah. not saying that. That is a different thing. I'm just saying we're all yeah. just. 
That is also from a Christmas movie. I know, which is why I said I wasn't talking about that specifically. I know what you're referring to. I know. I understand where you're coming from, and I love you. Even in the same age ranges. Also, Hatchet, uh, did you at least like it how I changed it from my character from being very submissive to the the guy on the microphone? (laughs) Yeah, that that was also a little odd. Like the the first draft that I read of Bright's story featured okay, so Bright like like Bright just got her memories back. She remembers that these people are fucking awful. And then she she passes out, wakes up in a room alone, hearing a guy that works with this. And he's like, "Put in the tape." No, fuck you. I hate you. We have ways to make you put in the tape. Fine, I'll put in the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the like, funniest thing is the fact that Bright is like the same age as my older brother. <laughs> but yeah, just um, like she, she is the same age as me. Like like the the way that well, the dialogue... actually I'm older. I'm older, but <laughs> yeah, 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 the way... being older than me, Aderna. I don't appreciate that. Anyway, Hatchet, you're <laughs> saying. But yeah, the 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 dialogue from like the first draft to me read like someone who was just being a tsundere like <laughs> trying to act like they didn't want to do something but they actually did want to do something so that or, so, or yeah, maybe I a brat that. would be more maybe a brat would yeah. be more appropriate so yeah, chew, that that's would be almost certainly perfect. yes so chew exactly <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> right Correct. right was role playing chew in that moment <laughs> Can I read my exactly story? right anyway but yeah, I changed yeah, that. You like that hatchet? Yeah, it was. I just it it, read it made the more logical sense. Story, uh, the pepper for it to have an effect, you're supposed to wear it on your person, not eat it. Well, that's probably why I got bad memories instead. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you basically, you just you basically did the equivalent of swallowing a topical cream. What the <laughs> fuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Dr. Redler, uh, part of his uh, story is his mom is loosely based off of Mexican witches, and one of the things used to ward them off is peppers, which you're not supposed to eat when you're warding them off. He was hungry. <laughs> Anyway, although technically, although technically, uh, anachronistic, Doctor Doctor Radler in the story did say, "Hey, eat this fucking uh, Neutrogena uh, <laughs> topical <laughs> cream." Uh, I think Bright needs to fix that part. I think I can what I can that? create an audio file of me changing that sentence, and then just yeah, okay. take that out and put that in. <laughs> yeah, I can and... still see. Uh, Aaron Bright eating it after being told to wear it. I have no idea what effect that would have, but it sounds Or like I can just to... have you, like, trying to explain it, get cut off as I eat it. <laughs> that sounds like oh, you, yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that's you. That's you. <laughs> Imagine my character's eyes going wide, like, what the hell are you doing? Just watching with her mouth covered, like, Jesus, fuck. Okay, and the <laughs> one last thing before we let the child actually express the creativity. Um, uh, the other thing I was going to mention is I think I think Dr. Aaron Bright needs to expand their vocabulary because the only insult they seem to know is devil and demon. <laughs> you devils! You devil! <laughs> yeah. Like, I why thought don't that you was use... a touch odd. Like, you could use bastards, you fuckers, you pieces of fucking flying shit, you assaholic bitches. Like, get get creative. You, to your you orangutan slugs. You orangutan Degenerates, slugs. Uh, you could use Philistines if you really want to get, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, absolutely, like, antediluvian about it. You, you stinky yeah. fucking poopy heads. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with something other than devils it's it feels like i'm mm-hmm. listening to attack um, on titan dialogue all of a sudden maybe, <laughs> or, like, maybe aaron bright is just really really religious i think that maybe that's part of it wait a minute mm-hmm. that would make sense because 
Air, Dr. Aaron Bright. They have Aaron, the same yep. name. They have the same name. Baker. Holy yep. shit. Yep. Dr. Aaron yep. Bright is an Attack on Titan character. What the fuck? <laughs> and what we, the fuck? We, this is the crossover you never saw happening. <laughs> I'm so proud on Aaron's transition, though. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, honestly, no, of just all by the listening. moves that Aaron has made, that's the biggest one. That That's, that's you know what? I'm, I'm proud of we, her we, trans. We, we, yep, we 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 stand a trans kid. Hell yeah! It's this is the most ADHD chat I've ever heard. <laughs> anyway, let's actually let Dragon say their damn story already. All right, uh, read your story, you asshole bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, so I I came up with the title, and it's not that good, but uh, it's called Pity. <laughs> Uh, a man stood on the edge of a battlefield, hands shaking, lungs heaving, as he shakily held himself up against the ditch's dirt walls. He looked at his dirt, his, his dirty, bloody hands and wiped the sweat from his brow. The sound of the fighting nearby was deafening. He fumbled with his coat and pulled out a locket. He shakily opened it at the sight of his family on one side and his dirty face on the other brought him to tears. He held the locket tightly before grabbing a small emblem of Drahis, the goddess of justice, from his pocket. The man fell to his knees and prayed. What else could he do? The smell of burnt flesh got closer to the edge of the ditch, and he s his silent prayers got louder. He was practically screaming the prayer as he saw the fire fly over his head. A blood-curdling scream rang out. Before a silence, the smell had vanished too. The man looked up, his vision clouded by tears, to a gentle white light. The light was gentle yet holy and powerful, a force to not be reckoned with. The man let out a joyful laugh, recollecting his breath as he shoved his locket and emblem into his coat pocket. He picked himself up and clawed his way out from the ditch, glancing about before seeing the source of the holy light. It was her excellency, her divine, her holiness, the goddess of justice. Lightning struck around her from seeing her form clearly. Yet in between strikes, the man saw what he had been had been described to her since he was a child. She was covered in elegant silky fabric, four wings gracefully posed, and her white hair floating as if gravity never existed. The man leaped and sprinted to the goddess, tears streaming down his face. His savior was here. The man, w uh, the war would end, and he could go back to his small, quiet life with his family. He got closer to the goddess, and the world stilled, the lightning settling, uh, letting up, and the man could see the goddess more clearly. He saw the goddess's face, pale and ghostly, eyes striking into any mortal soul who dared to stare into them. He glanced at the goddess before grabbing onto the goddess's pel pelum, his dirty hands staining the purely white fabric before he dropped to his knees once again and thanked the goddess for answering his prayers and coming to end the war. The goddess placed a gentle hand on the man's chin and tilted it up t to face her. She showed no warmth, no hint of pity. If sh she showed, if she was to show anything, it was disgust. The man stared at her, confused and choked out a question. Nothing. The man's confusion was cut short as he felt a sharp pain through his back. His blood spilled onto the goddess's dress, covering the dirt, his hands tainted onto the dress. The goddess bent, bent down as the man's life began to leave him. Her sharp voice hissed into his ear, pathetic, filthy worm. One of Drahin's ladies stepped from the goddess's side and moved the man's body out of her path. The man watched his goddess give the bloodied sword to the other of her ladies to clean before she kept her slow promenade to the middle of the battlefield. The man weakly grabbed out his locket and looked at his family one last time before watching his life leave his own eyes. That's it. You are a dark child. <laughs> About to say, she I she love it. she kind of a dick. Is <laughs> like I have small criticisms, like 
uh, like, I feel like you could, like, repeat words less often, but, like, overall, especially for something that was written, that was actually incredible. Yeah. I, th I think the thing is, so, and Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I had a cough. You got the vid? What? You got the vid? Yeah, I'm almost over it. <laughs> I was, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I've said that a long while ago that I got oh. positive. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, well. She got the vid, and she also got, um, the monia. Oh my god, that just reminds me of... Oh, I do <laughs> remember just... these. Events that happening. Just, I'm a bad friend. <laughs> that, just yeah. reminds, that just reminds <laughs> well, me. You're just, really... you're, just, you're just forgetful. It happens fine. through all of us. I should have remembered. I, I, the thing is, I knew about this shit. I knew about it. And I, and I, and I still still couldn't keep it still couldn't keep it in the old brain pan. Well, I could, but it's just not, not at the front. <laughs> but uh, uh, that, that just makes me think of the stupid fucking joke. Uh, my friend Vernie and I had when we were, um, I think in like our first year of high school, the, uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of renovation in the school going on. So we have like these big temporary classrooms outside in winter. So to get to our different classes, we have to walk outside while it's fucking freezing cold. And at one point we make this joke of like one of these real douchebags in our class like coming to school shirtless and like short shorts like acting super tough and manly and and then like someone walks up to them and goes hey man that's that's awesome how how are you able to do this and then he just slowly turns thanks i got pneumonia <laughs> <laughs> now now wearing now wearing okay i must freely confess as a, as, a, as a denizen of mm -hmm. the Midwest, um, seeing motherfuckers wearing like, like, like clothes and shit that they shouldn't be wearing, um, like in like temperatures that shouldn't permit it, is not ne is not necessarily new to me. Um, yeah, like I, I, I see that I shit all the time. I live in New Mexico and I've seen that shit. Yeah, it's just I, weird. I, in the, I, I, and it's also weird because I've participated in it. Like I've worn shorts, and it's been like you know, like twenty to thirty degrees outside. Um, yeah, and I don't know why. That's it is. Oh, I haven't done that when it's like twenty to thirty. Uh, I remember seeing I someone get. Oh, sorry. I guess sometimes I might have done it, but that's just because I didn't really. I didn't yeah. pay attention to the weather, and I just like oh. I guess I'm gonna have to deal with this. Okay, yeah. because uh, I yeah, I really hate the cold. Right. I yeah. guess that's how my yeah. that's part of my dragon thing. I guess I just hate the cold. I have to be burning up, and I'm like I can just I literally can you just have to wear sweat it, your life away. Yeah. All right. So I, uh... so <laughs> well no earlier this week I wore a hoodie. You know I know I know to marching band. I know. And it's 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 at, it's, at, it's, it's, it's new in the middle people. of the day. Yep, I know who you was are. Over ninety-seven degrees. Um. All right. Sorry. So, uh, I remember my blood is too thick for all that. It, during the middle of December, I remember seeing uh, a girl wear uh, a bikini and started walking around, like going to the store and everything, in a bikini. In the middle of December. The fuck? Now, now, now. When I asked, I, I don't want to, I don't want to seem like untoward, but just, I just say this for my, for my, for my personal, personal. Like this is a completely like, you know, I want to understand that. I want to know this just because I want it, I want it to be mm -hmm. confirmed to me, but I don't want it to sound the wrong way. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What race was this chick? <laughs> Probably white. <laughs> that's why, no, that's no, no, no. That's a good question. That's a good question. What the fuck? I, 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 I
but I already know. I feel like I know the answer. I know it in my soul. I know it in my soul, even though I know I don't have a soul. I know it in the very core of my being, bro. I believe they were really, I think they were white. They were like, I know exactly exactly why Mama was asking. Because I have the exact same question every (laughs) single winter. I will see some (laughs) motherfucker walking around Uh with zero degrees Fahrenheit. And they're walking like, around with basketball shorts. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? They don't know fat meat greasy. They don't understand how cold it is. Yeah, just, I, they, I, I wasn't cold. sure if they were white or not. It was like far, really well far away I noticed them. But uh, they looked pale. Why? <laughs> oh, Jesus, fuck! Well, you oh. see, Bright, to, to... <laughs> Momo, you want to take this Thank one? You. No, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. me. You're right. <laughs> Yes, I'm alive. Wait, why, why did we get a food like witch laugh jump scare in the background? <laughs> anyway, he up could... from behind me with an it's it and scared the shit out of me. Basically, ice cream. Anyway, Pika, what's the answer that your your that Momo told you to tell me? <laughs> you see, bro. I... When you're like me, or Momo, and you're going about your daily business in the middle of winter, or fall, late fall, mm-hmm. or early spring even, you'll be walking around, and you will see white people walking around not even in clothing that's mm-hmm. not even close to being appropriate for the face on face wearing sun dresses in the fucking like in 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 in, in January the sun, you haven't seen the sun in 36 days you ain't seen oh, oh wait 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 no 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 cuz in spring in florida you can wear sundresses cuz it gets really fucking hot in spring so yeah, we're not talking about we're not talking about the state that's closer to the equator we're talking about everywhere else where we don't have a reputation for being weird yeah not fucking cold. we experience all if, i know I understand it being in 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 the south you know what like I said, uh, uh, you know, Dragon being in the South and, you know, uh, Adarna, you being in the Golden West, or you and y- 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 y'all, y'all don't know. Like, this, seeing people in the mid fucking West where we experience all four seasons at their worst, <laughs> watching people walk around when there is like, like a foot and a half of snow on the ground. And some fucking sandals and and, and 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 like 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 skirts and shit and shorts. It's it's, it's, it's uncanny. Mama. It's like nothing I've Mama. ever seen. Every time Mama. I have ever seen a motherfucker. Yes. So here here's here's my explanation of New Mexico weather. We get all four seasons in a day. Sometimes. <laughs> We get all four seasons in a day. Uh, Sometimes. I... Like, it's literally hailed in the summer. Alright. Um, hey, Momo, I can explain my weather really quickly. Uh, my state's weather. Um, we had a blizzard in the middle of summer. It's unpredictable. Yeah, Mo- God almighty. <laughs> and also, also, Momo, Momo, as I said before, I've seen people do this shit. Also, I want to comment that there are some uh, some people who are darker skinned who are also built for the cold. Oh, I... I, 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 I that's true. true. About but what I've yet to about? see a single instance of that it's where, always I, somebody. where oh, I am. It's always somebody. It's always oh, somebody. I've definitely <laughs> seen it. I've definitely seen it. I, I live in... I live in a very, like, so, like, where I am, like, white people are the minority. Like, yeah. the entire state 
the white people are a minority. There are actually uh, uh, parts of Africa that are very cold, so. I understand. Yeah. No, we understand. Oh, yeah, we know yeah, this. but. Yeah, like, like, we, what, what we're trying to get you to understand is, is that generally, since y'all live closer to the equator, when we, we're up, up, up here, back in the Midwest, when we, when it's like, when is it, when, when it's like oh. cl- close to negative outside, like, like you shouldn't be out no. here. You shouldn't, you By the way, I, I do agree that it's mostly white people who do this bullshit, <laughs> but like, yeah, there's, it's not just going to be like white they, people. Like they, never, <laughs> like they have never heard the word, like they never heard the word frostbite before. Oh, they never exactly. Heard. Thank you. I, I, Momo, we literally had school delayed once in high school, well, a a couple times, but you you get the point, where school was delayed by two hours Mm -hmm. due to just how cold it was. I'm talking like negative temperatures in the morning. I go to school two hours early, sorry, two hours late, and I see some, I see one of my peers walking around with basketball shorts above the knee, above the knee, just walking around like it's no big deal with tennis shoes. Meanwhile, there's a layer of ice on the, on the ground. (laughs) And I'm just sitting here looking over confused. Freezing. I'm totally confused. Shit. Yeah. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. Meanwhile, even I'm even w- without like, so like the thing is, even without like the like the cold, or, like even without like the cold, like even without factoring that, if you're just if you're wearing shorts, your legs are unprotected from the like ground because you're gonna fucking slip and. Oh, Break your fucking. Uh... Yeah. M- meanwhile, I'm over here, decked out, wearing clothes under my clothes, heavy winter clo- heavy winter coat, Just gloves, gloves, Ooh. hat, um, socks, and my Some like, good socks too. Not messing around winter boots. Okay. And my dark. Heavy sweatpants. You damn near ready to hike out in the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, this motherfucker looks like he's just going to a basketball game. I remember so, this shit is actually happened. One of my friends, uh, Ryan, I'll never forget it. Ryan Eccles. Uh, well, um, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I have to edit that. But uh, one, of my, one of my friends, I remember he came up to me. He's just like, uh, it was cold. It was like cold, like like so cold they like they shut down um, like the city like the day before, um, like the services in the city and everything. The school was closed and shit, and shit. So next day we come in, it's still freezing. Like, like I said, I'm decked out and everything. Got my thermals on. And can I have a comment? Go for sure. it. Sure. I I bet the natives of both Alaska and Siberia. If they lived in any of the places either of you live in, they would probably be wearing shorts. Those are some of the coldest places <laughs> in the world. And neither of those groups, like none of those groups that live in those places natively, have white skin. Probably right. you're you're right, but what well, um, but like that's mostly like I said, like I w- I mean I wouldn't be surprised necessarily at that either. But they like 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 you said. They are experienced at living in that in that climate. So probably like the 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 warmest the coldest day here is probably like one of the warmest days there. Um, I, I, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't put that past them honestly. Okay. But like like I was saying like I'm just I, I, this is just shit that we notice. Okay, <laughs> I'm just chalking it up oh. to shit that I have noticed. All right, like like I said, Fern Ryan. Um, I was I was like packing up my locker and everything, packing up my, my, my backpack and everything. He walks up to me. He says, like, hey, what's going on, man? Um, wh- um, what what are you up to? And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, I saw him, like I said, shorts and shit, 
like same fit, had the like outfit. He had to pull over, which was the one saving grace. He had pull over, school pull over. But that was pretty much it. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, packing up my locker and everything, getting ready for class, and standing here wondering what the fuck you're wearing. Like I'm just, I'm so, I'm so shocked. I'm like, why are you, why, why are you wearing shorts? Did you wear those outside? <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm like, why? Yeah, but this just this is just something that I that, it's, that, it's fucking it's baffling. It's just that, baffling. Yeah, I, it, it, puzzling, perplexing, confusing. I, 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 I like I try to wrap my head around it, but I I can't. I just can't. It's the most bamboozling shit. I I can't understand why people don't dress appropriately for the weather. I, I, they, don't, I, they don't respect. They don't respect. I don't cold. dress for cold like that. I cold. try. I typically wear t-shirts in cold weather because my body is like an oven. Okay, so uh, there's one thing I want to say real quick. Uh, when I went to go read off the website where I had my story put in, it didn't put in all my edits, and I'm pissed off. Like before, I had a bunch of edits saved in. So the story that match and word document does not at all match the website. I know I'm pissed. So I'm gonna have to read it in my own time. Mm -hmm. I didn't save the things you did. I did. I hit refresh. It should have. Did last night. Yeah, I hit refresh, and I guess it it just it refused to load it. So, yeah. Well, it also gives me an opportunity to put in the changing for dialogue a bit. So it actually should be a brand new version. So if you actually want to see a better version of the story, check out my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find it in my description of my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Promoting while also being pissed off. <laughs> I that that's how you gotta do the it. Multitask. It, it sells. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting. It's really easy to make people engage if you're angry, because then that makes them angry by proxy, and then they <laughs> go do whatever you say. Yeah, that's how that's reactionary how politics you... works. Hey. That's how. Yeah. Hey, Pika, I bet you're Become happy right now. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason why I think you should be happy right now is uh, the thing Penguin wants to happen is not happening at all because I said if I go to 100 followers, I would uh, do art streams with Penguin where they teach me how to draw a person. Mm -hmm. And it's staying at 80. It has not changed. It no was seventy nine a few days ago, so it has changed. No, I, I, man, I, I just stalled it at. Well, I was stalling at fifty seven. Now I'm at fifty eight. So, I, I, it, I, it, yeah, I, I, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. I Two days later, you reach a thousand. I'm not going to reach a thousand. I'm not gonna hit. I'm not even gonna hit sixty by the end of the, by the end of the week. <laughs> is that <clears throat> is that a challenge? Is that a challenge? Oh lord. It is that a challenge. Hurry, Adorno, we must make a ton of alternate accounts. Oh no, don't do that. <laughs> I, I want to talk about my story more. No. Please? Oh, Everyone no, just goes that's... dead quiet. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt. No. <laughs> Bright is the one acting grimy. What was that I noise? I will not interrupt, though I am staring at something's food put in dumb posts. I okay. want to say what I want to say what that noise was, but there's a child here. 
What noise? What the fuck are y'all talking about? <laughs> there was a noise that came through your microphone. It sounded like, I don't know, either ice or something falling. It's, it's water. Oh. It's a bottle of water. Yeah, well, what were you thinking, Bright? Uh, yeah, I cannot say with you here. What were, what were you thinking? Do you need your, your brain washed? Hey. Penguin, <laughs> if, if she said that she, she wouldn't be able to tell you even if even though you've asked. Oh, under advice of legal counsel then? Is that how it is? Under advice of legal counsel, you were unable to disclose? Because, no, no, yes. no, no. Because, well, kind of, but because of, um, t because of, uh, well, because of age things, probably. She is you not know, able to disclose. I, I think I solved my problem. Hey, Dragon, how are you? Yep, I solved my problem. I can't hear what Penguin says. <laughs> Alright, I'll turn her user volume you back up. No, you can hear me. No, I actually turned user volume to zero. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. What? Okay, so anyways, I want to talk about... Okay, so. Uh, the goddess in the story. <laughs> I come back... I came back to see... Penguin gets server muted. This is good. <laughs> Y'all some motherfuckers, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Penguin. You, you can go ahead and finish. I, I won't... I, I'm looking at stream webs right now. Oh my god. So, Grace <laughs> is the goddess of justice, and she has a twin. Uh, she's the goddess of justice and also lightning. And she has a twin, uh, a Vingle who is uh, the god of war and of thunder. So... So everyone thinks, like, oh, since... Like, if Ingle is war, that means mean automatically that... Uh, that must mean... Drahis is automatically the goddess of peace but even though put together they they are like they form peace but so everyone's like oh she must be cool and shit and she's like she does not like mortals at all she likes the power that they give her because a lot of gods work off like how many uh, worshippers they have like she likes the power that they give her but she thinks that they are very gross and pretty much both of them kind of treat, like, mortals as, like, chess pieces for fighting. They find it entertaining to see mortals fight, and then they get it, see how it affects, and they're like, yeah, this is kind of boring, so they just kind of put a stop to it after a bit. Yay. These sound like some fucked up deities. So, basically, those, those should, deities are the impersonation of America. Got it. We got. We should. Okay, hey, so we should cure the motherfucker. Like, we need to like lob like like for real. We need to like actually get some nukes and lob them at these motherfuckers because the the only choice that we have is beings like that is to kill them. We ain't got no other choice. <laughs> we ain't got so no other Vingle, choice. A vingle usually is uh, has gotten kind of better with the treatment of mortals because they are distracted by being incredibly incredibly oh, gay. Know. For the uh, goddess of gotcha. goddess of the night, so they're kind of busy with that. As soon as we get thermonuclear might, aiming at the sky. <laughs> Wait, sky I have a thing. Wait, if they get their powers okay. from mortals believing in them, stop believing mm -hmm. in them. Oh, even with that, okay. So a Vingle doesn't have seeing as they are like pretty much hated by a lot of mortals because of the fact that they are the god of war. So yeah. they. They don't really have a lot of worshippers, but they can still turn into a mortal form by eating mortals. So they just eat mortals. If they are, and no one, like, barely anyone's worshipping them, they just turn to eating. 
You know what? All the no. <laughs> make you new proof. The thing is, these Let's are see. like the least of the like fucked up motherfuckers. Okay, the least mother least fucked up motherfuckers are uh Death is pretty chill. Uh Life is pretty chill. And her wife and her kid, they're pretty chill. Uh Vingle is getting better, kind of. They're kind of iffy. Uh, Ladder and Oxus, uh, the, the goddess of night. Uh, she's pretty chill with mortals, and that's pretty much it. Nuke every last one of them <laughs> omnipotent bastards out of the sky. We'll ship. We'll, we'll sort the chips out later. Fuck this shit. <laughs> no, cause dead ass. There's like okay. So in the story. Uh, there is a character who I don't want to go too deep into detail because things change, and also I kind of do want to like write a story with them as the main character. So pretty much, they were born. Uh, I'm gonna call her like Inferno. So because I haven't really decided to rename her anything. So Inferno, she was born to kill her grandfather, who is the god of chaos and insanity, uh, and also like the first god on the planet. Um. So, like, she was born, and, you know, her parents raised her to be, like, the perfect way to kill her grandfather. But, uh, that motherfucker, even while being sealed away, had a plan up his sleeve. And, um, yeah, it turns out, when your entire life was, you were turned into, like, just propaganda, and your face was splattered everywhere to be hope and shit. Uh, turns out, if you get turned into a puppet by your grandfather, who is like a v almost all-powerful, omnipotent god, yeah, that doesn't end very well. So now they're, instead of being the face of hope, they're kind of just the face of control. Uh, and they're, they're yeah. Oops! <laughs> That's fine. gotta kill them. I was just waiting for Hatchet to be on death, and so we can do their story. Then anyway, we'll go to. Yeah. Also, then... each god, each a hundred years, chooses a mortal that they will train. Uh, because usually, like, either a war happens, like really bad war, or just like, fucking. Usually, the god of uh, insanity and chaos just does fuck shit. So, those mortals are pretty. They're those mortals are treated pretty fine. We gotta listen. We gotta <laughs> trust you. Oh wait! Oh, two more. I forgot two more. Uh, the god of uh, the gods of uh, the god of spring and the god of fall are pretty chill with mortals. Yeah. Also, anyway, enough of the mortals. Hatchet, you going to do an your final story? Is there gonna be more after me? Probably. I'm very tired. Wait, what Dragon's is tired. Oh. Kind of well, tired, not really. I think it's important that Dragon sticks around because the story, the story, or the story does feature lesbians. <gasps> Please tell me none of them die. Uh. <laughs> don't do that to me. No, don't you can't you promise dare that. Tell me. Don't, you, don't, don't you dare. Listen, child. Listen, child. It's a horror story. Horror story here. Oh, uh, this shit is funny as hell, bruh. <laughs> no, that is old. That is such an old trope. No. That's no. no it's, I'm not talking oh, about no, no, the story. The story. story is one thing. It's just is is your reaction is what's <laughs> No. That's it. Please, no. Every story that has a lesbian, <laughs> like any mention of lesbians, oh. one of them dies. Don't That's do so it to me. No. So excited. Got so Wait, up. So I didn't even. No. I didn't even realize Please. Immortal Ryu was here. But uh, hi and good night, Immortal Ryu. <laughs> she is hey. oh, Sorry, I didn't know you're here. <laughs> He's the dragon still weeping over the. I want him to die. <laughs> They can't be happy ever. <laughs> At least with my lesbians, one of them just got locked up, and like, if they, one of them died, both of them die. Like, damn. 
you know what? As a guy, this seems to be how it happens a lot with like stuff that is like you know just not you know. It, it, it happens. I I just I got you, I got through reading song the song of Achilles. And that's that's the main conceit in there yeah. is that after you know Patroclus dies, Achilles gets so angry because of his love. He literally like Zeus has to cut like his hatred defies fate. Like, yeah. like <laughs> cheery he, was back. So, he was so heartbroken <laughs> over Not Patroclus. Sorry. Can, can you believe that people think Patroclus and Achilles were just friends? Can because they're fucking stupid. When have you ever? Hey, okay. Your best okay. In your so, life, would you ever? So, when you die, your best friend. Would you ever? If you wanted, you died. Would you ever wanted to be covered in the ashes of your best friend? Nah, no. that's something you would do for. You. That's something you would do for somebody that you like, oh, love, uh, your I wife, your it. husband. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you you. It I, depends because. I, some because one there's asexual people well, okay, fine. two there's a romantic people mm-hmm. who fine. would right. definitely do that so right. but yeah. two let's just acknowledge the fact that i don't remember exactly which book it was written in but plato directly talked about how there was no question that patroclus and achilles were in a relationship he was well, more well, concerned mm-hmm. which one was the bottom <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Because like Greek and Roman sexuality wasn't wasn't this weird homosexuality and heterosexuality thing. It was entirely dictated by whoever was on the bottom and who was on the top. Yeah. Oh my god. And same way that Middle Ages sexuality wasn't uh the gay is bad but the straight is good. It was anything that doesn't have the potential of producing babies is bad. <laughs> And that's kind of spilled over to our like atrophied and backwards. So wait, so wait hold uh, on, hold on. That shit with the Middle Ages thing. So that means if a woman has relations with a bull and has a baby, it's fine. Wait, what did you just say? What? I said if a bull and a lady have relations wait, and, what the and the fuck? woman has a baby, it's fine. By your logic, the Middle Ages. What's going on? What the fuck? That's how the Minotaur was made. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we know about the Minotaur, the, the okay. Minotaur and everything, but yeah. okay. 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 Let's, okay. Let's just on the stream this at this point because this is. Let's, let's back up. Let's put this into the context of Middle Ages uh, <laughs> view of sexuality. <laughs> if that was feasibly possible, if a if 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 a bull porked a woman, and they conceived she, she a didn't child, die. she didn't yeah, die, and the lady Actually, somehow okay. didn't die, then you don't then, mean yes, porked, you mean be beefed, right. you mean oh, beefed, shit. not porked. Uh, if 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 a woman got staked, <laughs> got fucking staked by a bull, uh, and then had a child, that would feasibly. Like, if it was possible for that woman to have a child, then that would feasibly be considered a non-problematic form of sexual activity. Oh, my and God. Oh, <laughs> dragon. I love this fucking kid. Where did you find? Where did you find? Could we be getting this to a dragon here? This is actually, I think that this is fine because we are talking about a type of sex education and historical education. This is, yeah, but this not is, only that, well, you yes, read about like, the Minotaur and the shit thing. in school. You should it's probably cut it off. <laughs> here, here, here's, here's the thing with that, though. We are not an educational institution. Yeah. We are just random people on the internet. We're a bunch of muppets. That's not going to fly in a court of law. Yeah, that's fair. All right, carry on. <laughs> anyway, uh, Hatchet, go do your second story. Well, Jerry's not back. Oh, right, Jerry's not back. <sighs> I'm very tired. Intermission time. Shit. Oh, it is funny. almost two o'clock in the morning. So, oh, horse so strings nice. never fall. Horse strings so nice. stay oh, on for a w- long while. Don't you know that, Dragon? That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> We did, oh, like, one time where we went to 5 in the morning, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's you. I usually go to sleep at midnight on weekends. Then why aren't you in bed? 
I want to tell my story. You already did. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I'm still laughing. That shit still no, got me, bro. Dog, that shit is too funny. It's still tickling me. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. Oh, you're going. You're gonna go to bed. Yes, I'm very tired. You, you don't wish to. You, you're, you're, you're going. You're you. going to miss. You're going to miss the story. Right, it's probably gonna re-upload it anyway. On the pod. True. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Have a nice night, man. Oh shit! Well, you oh, see my message. Funny as fuck. Okay, oh. so now we can talk about the lady getting staked by the cow. All <laughs> <laughs> Mama, did you see my message? <laughs> oh fuck! I don't know why that got me so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you did see it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, so <laughs> I heard this shit. I was like, "Hey, yo, this." The only thing I said the moment to make them laugh so hard is, is just the word "porked." <laughs> and then I hear fucking hatchet go steak. I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, this shit is." Oh my god! It, it was a double whammy. Oh, that was funny as shit. Oh my god, that shit is funny. Uh, oh my gosh. God's my head. That shit is funny as a motherfucker. I ain't I haven't had a good laugh like that in a real long time. Oh, oh that shit, god. you weren't That's here funny. when I did this, but apparently That was funny. Cuz I oh, I opened Word and Google. That needed to be quoted. Apparently uh it didn't save all the edits that were done. So the story, the reason why the story wasn't fully good, was because the tape put all the edits on. Wow. So yeah, I'm redoing the story through a recording. <laughs> so it's going to sound a lot better on YouTube. <laughs> I'll probably, since I have the day off tomorrow, I'll probably record it and then upload it. Once, it's, once I finish it. We still doing the GTA stream though? Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. We'll just spend the, the first part of the day doing that. Yeah. This stream is just forty like forty percent scary stories and sixty percent are an ADHD inspired chaotic bullshit. Yeah. That's kind of what all of these streams turn into at some point. Um, mm. and, and and to clarify, right, um I had deafened because Oh. I uh, fucking got hyper fixated on fucking anti theists on Twitter again. Oh, for fuck's sake, catch it. Oh, no. And then I'm just like, like, basically, pretty much all the conversations are over with for the most part. And we just get this one guy that was like really cordial and seemed like a cool guy who comes in and I, I, I get a message in my notifications because he added me. Uh, unnecessarily responding to uh, what are they, the uh, atheist girl on Twitter who uh, blocked me after I made basic criticisms and responded to posts that pinged me mm -hmm. and is just like eh I, I, I prefer that one lady who engages in blatant bigotry over that one guy who's just arguing against said bigotry. And it's just, uh, like I had to, I had to physically stop myself from just going off because, like, I, I just, I need to stop. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh, so stupid. Like some of the people I've been interacting with. I just like nightmarishly dishonest and ridiculous. Like I, I hold, I, I say the position that anti-theism, a uh, political opposition to religion, is bigotry. People push me on it. I go through the, I go through the line to politically oppose to bigotry 
the only means that you could achieve these, like the only way you could achieve a world without religion is through some form of genocide. That is like, the, like either cultural like, or literal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, that's like, the only way you can do it. And then like mm -hmm. one of these people pushes me on that. I give that very concise reasoning. The only way you can achieve- ways are just, they wouldn't be ethical is what your point like. Well, there's, no, there's like, other there's there other are. ways, but like they're like not feasible, like yeah. because or feasible. Um, so there's you could go back in time and just get rid of a religion. Well, you probably you'll get a, I, rid of like one religion, but you'll more religions will spring up. So oh yeah, like but, to go and back in time and get rid of religion is to say let's go back in time and get rid of humanity. Like the the no. only like you can maybe get rid of one religion. Like you could stop Christianity at an infancy mm -hmm. or keep it from getting to the size that it did. But like if you go back and say get rid of all religion, you literally gut like all of our modern forms of scholarly uh engaging with the world, all modern philosophy. You gut a lot of the origins even... of science. Mm -hmm. Like because You've those, got like oh, those things need like our off of. like mo yeah. what are yeah most of our science came from like uh of those things like so yeah. like our science came from like philosophers so we had philo like scientific philosophy in ancient Greece yeah and in ancient Greece and they were and like specifically mm -hmm. within the city state of Athens in ancient Greece the practice of scientific exploration was viewed as a spiritual process. It was viewed as a religious uh, act to try to study the world that the gods gave us. Right. Yeah. Like without then, some of these people having these earlier ideas, modern concepts like empiricism and science just don't form. Oh. Well, I, a lot of, also a lot of them, because they didn't have then, like, other choice yeah. you would have been described and then like Madden, or and possibly. then I'd say like uh sorry then I'd nope. say like after that we also had like the alchemists and stuff like that yeah like that, modern like, also propelled that also propelled like um like we had yeah. alchemists we had witches we had um like what well uh mama the thing I was going to touch on what were you trying yeah. to say there Oh, basically, it was a lot of a lot of it. Um, a lot of those things. I'm not going to necessarily say that, like, um, like especially especially with regards to like religion, like you 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 needed you you. It was kind of like a requirement to almost be, um, uh, uh, at least like religious to some extent. Um, even if you doesn't um, like, especially with regards to like the sciences, because like um, you would have faced like like a lot of criticism. If you didn't like necessarily um, subscribe to certain or orthodox, especially with regards to uh, like Christianity, um, yeah, like that's the big thing. Like this starts to pop up primarily with Christ, like when scientific thinking starts to merge with Christianity. But like in older polytheist places, like it was very common for people to just be completely fine if you don't worship specific gods. You don't have to worship in the same way as anyone else. Yeah, as long not. as you're not going around being that dickhead who walks into a temple and goes, hey, this is all super stupid. You're all stupid. Like, you're going to be fine. Yeah, also, there's a question I forgot to ask at the beginning of the stream. To yourself, if, yeah, otherwise, if you didn't believe. You know. And like... And yeah, like fundamentally, the vast majority of religions throughout history do not have this structured ultimatums and dogma that very frequently mm -hmm. exist with Christianity. And yeah, or being threatened with punishment isn't present in a whole bunch of non-Abrahamic religions. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. and like, and so yeah. like when like like I've been going to war with these Twitter anti-theists that just say religion, full stop, and then I push them on that, they say shit, like, all religions do this, and then I basically just slowly 
pick at all of their arguments using just a little bit of philosophical and historical knowledge. And they either very rarely actually try to introspect or they block me. <laughs> That's oh. been the two consistent things. Either that or they just stop talking. Well, like blocking you is the same thing as not going into introspection. Yeah, like that, that one case. person that decided to take on me, Adurna, and Hatcher at the exact same time, and yet they have the nerve to call themselves a, a Twitch debater. And then they have they ever debated anybody on Twitch? Yes, Hatcher even offered to go on. They never answered. Yeah, they never got well, back yeah. to me. What a yeah, wonderful... little. Little I want to look at that conversation again and see wh where the fuck. Anyway, they just start uh, pulling numbers but, out their ass. Just a whole but, bunch of shit. Bryce been trying to. Bryce yeah, been trying to speak for a bit. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, streamer. Uh, I was about about to say. Uh, there was a question I forgot to ask the beginning of stream. Do I have permission to make uh to use your voices in the video and uh, uh, stories? I have to ask that. Yep. Uh, I'm 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 fine with that. Yeah. I'm lost. What's happening? And does it apply to me? No. Bright, Bright's Bright's getting consent for people who orated these stories. Yeah. To put them on, you'll probably need to uh, ask Rian. Oh yes. Yeah. I, I I love how like one of these atheists was like literally has in their bio. Everyone is an atheist with regards to all gods but their own i just go one god further okay yeah we're only and, talking about christians bitch yeah and, and then i like, just walk in and then i can just walk in and say hey i do ritual to like nine different gods get on my left <laughs> like well, like I, re I, I, I react to my character literally having deity level power <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Like, hey, hey, motherfucker, guess what? I worship, let's see, there's uh, Air, Thor, Odin, Loki, uh, engage with Freya, Hell. Uh, I've been getting into worship with Freya. So, yeah, 12, seven deities. Yeah, there's the big seven. Did I say Air? I think I said Yeah, that. I think. Yeah, so so I, I, I primarily work with seven deities. Like, hmm. this doesn't apply to everyone, you dipshit, you dipshit. Like, it's it's when someone gets in this headspace of only talking to Christians, and, like, granted, like, you tell, like in terms of, like, material situation, like, they're only going to be responding to Christians and Muslims because those are the two largest religions yeah, the for the big, most yeah, part. Yeah, the largest religions on the planet. But they take this and then start overgeneralizing because... They seem to get this idea that Muslim and Christian history are the only religious histories, while simultaneously ignoring all of the extremely complex polytheist religions that got ground under those two's heels. Yeah, well, there's just a pro just that they're just not equipped to deal. Yeah, with, and like, like they're yeah, but what, what happens typically when we deal with these people is they are walking breathing examples of the dunning kruger effect yeah. they will say to your face i don't know anything about this and yet you they'll still keep talking that would that would be like if i were to start talking about trans rights and then i clearly have no clue what i'm saying but i say it with all the confidence in the world you know it's like, like person you know like Sorry, sorry, Ripley. Like, you know how most bigots talk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, you know, pretty much how I was going to say it's kind of like, you know, no, I'm like, not. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was, go ahead, go ahead, bro. I was going to say, like, like, I come at this from the perspective of being someone who was a Christian, left Christianity on account of not experiencing anything spiritual became an became an angry atheist anti-theist got talked out of that position by a polytheist when they pointed out that i was just like a couple missteps away from just blatantly advocating for genocide and i 
uh, the, the other thing that I was going to mention is I really don't see how there's any, like, other, I, like, what other ways besides some kind of genocidal action are there to get rid of religion? Because there's cultural genocide where you try to erase, like, keep people from talking about certain religions. Like, what, uh, like, what, uh, Canada very blatantly did with the indigenous people. Or like, with I, what, uh... The Christians did the, during the Crusades. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, like that's <laughs> like that's that's who... like, that is the main reason why Norse heathenry is not an extant religion today, because multiple Crusades and Catholics just came in, just fucking carpet bombed the place, and then set in power people who would legislate away heathenry. Like a lot of Reconstruction of heathen practices for us comes down to reading laws that were set in place to outlaw heathen practices and then using those laws that say you're not allowed to do this this and this and say okay so this is probably what these heathens were doing like yeah and the thing with that with, with that is a lot of anti theist we just point of you can you can like debate them out of it. You can educate them out of it. But here's the thing. Let's just say, hypothetically, for the sake of argument, I'm sorry, oh, I, I, I had to say it. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Do it. I had to do it. I had to. Had to do it. You know, I had to. Had to do it. But, um, in all seriousness, though, let's say you could do that. What about the rest? They're not going to just stop because you asked them to. They're, 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 they're going to kick and scream, and they're just not going to, to stop. But there is one way you can get them to stop, and it's morally abhorrent. <laughs> and that's just the natural conclusion of... Oh, the other, that. the other way I would put it is... Uh, you deplatform them, you do what you can to keep them from being able to publicly speak bigoted positions. You know, like how we deal with other forms of bigotry the most effectively. Like you don't try, like you don't bring a not, like you don't allow the Nazis to have their place at the table. You take their place away because anyone who knows anything about them knows that they are going to immediately strip everyone at the table of their rights if they get the chance. Uh -huh. But yeah, like uh, back back to what I was saying. Like I come from I'm I come from this from the perspective of someone who was Christian, has still has some religious trauma, goes atheist, is anti theist for a while gets convinced out of that and then as an atheist i just start exploring and without any expectations like when i started doing pagan rituals i did not expect anything to happen i expected nothing to happen and yet shit starts happening and my experiences inform my beliefs like i have just i have justification for believing in this and trying to orate that to people is infuriating, especially when, like, at one point, I orated all of this stuff. Like I mentioned, I learned about rituals. I did rituals on my own, but I had no prior information about how you, quote-unquote, should feel. And if anything, I would be experiencing the opposite of the placebo effect because I just didn't believe shit was going to happen. But shit mm -hmm. happened. And then when I bring that up to people... Like one of these people that I brought it up to, rather than conceding and saying, just say you're mentally ill or something. Oh no, they didn't. They didn't go that. Okay. They didn't go that far. I'm glad they didn't go that far. But when when I orated this and I just fucking I fucking dodged and weaved around all of their dumbass gotchas, describing this story, and it seems like we're coming to an understanding. Rather than just backing off the position of all religions are bad or all religions act like this, and saying, okay, yeah, maybe I should be targeting the bad ones. Maybe that's mm -hmm. what I should be doing. Instead of doing that, they just immediately, like, like they take 15 minutes between me typing after 
previously like responding instantly, like right, like within a minute of me posting. They take 15 minutes and then they respond by saying everything they said previously that I'd ripped apart. <laughs> like they just, like, ironically enough, let me take a quote, let me take something out of uh, Sam Harris's rhetoric. They compartmentalize the information that they're receiving so that, jeez, what? <laughs> Oh, Brett's sending me things. Um, like they That's compartmentalize horrible. the information they're receiving and then just ignore it. Even though all of this information is fairly well reasoned, put forward, and does logically contradict their positions. Let's see. Bright Bright sends me changed insult. Massive shitty assholes, previous insult, previous insult, damn devils, changed insult, bastardized pieces of shit, previous insult, damn demons. Is that better? I, I, it definitely sounds more bright. It sounds more bright. I like it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure what you thought before I read it as that. <laughs> While we're in intermission, I'm messing with my story. <laughs> You couldn't tell. Uh, just to double check, is Jerry, is Jerry back? I don't think so. Cause they went to take a piss, and I don't know. They haven't said anything back yet. Yeah, Jerry, if you're it. here, There's... are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, are you homosexual? Are you a homosexual? <laughs> but yeah, but like, uh. Oh, yeah, and then there's this one person that's, I think they went by Tory Atheist. They're a trans girl that, like, talks about some trans issues oh. as well as being anti-theist. And at one point, Wait, she, she just... She blocked me. Uh, like, she blocked me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, she she at one point posts a very blatantly racist caricature of indigenous peoples as an anti-theist thing. And then we very calmly come in and say, hey... This is fucking uh, racist. This is pretty, ra this is pretty racist, bro. What, what and you and posting cringe right here, 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 uh, here. I'll sh I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Yeah, it, um, it was a meme that was extremely fucking racist towards indigenous people. That's like doing an anti-theist thing, and we all come in and say, really? "Hey, this is yeah. racist," and then they block us. <laughs> oh wait, no, also, gotcha. that's not what mm -hmm. happened. Well, they blocked they me. They never down talked. and then blocked us. Yeah, they never talked to me. I didn't get a single word from them. They talked to y'all, and oh, I yeah. didn't actually they, see those they, combos. They didn't, just, they didn't just... Oh, no, they talked to... I'm pretty sure... Did they talk to you, Chu? Hmm. Did they talk to you, Chu? No. I, uh, I, I thought Did we they were talk to you? About... No, I thought we were talking about... <laughs> they only talked to... Oh yeah, but yeah, Adorno, you have the picture. Show you what it was. Yeah, you have the picture to show Momo. Oh yeah, I screenshot. I screenshot that bitch. Uh, Adorno, you the are in thing is, right I screenshot that bitch behind the block. Oh. Okay. And it's probably because uh that thing is trying to upload and is being a bitch. Um. Yeah, so the funny thing is, Hatch, I, so she blocked me, and then, so I was, like, I was, like, hmm, I want to show this, like, there there was, like, somebody else who was, like, blocked or something, so, like, I was, like, oh, yeah, I want to show this to them, so hmm. I just, like, refreshed my, like, little thing where I was, like, where I had, like, um, quote tweeted her and in the set in the second that like thing just popped up for a, for a split second i screenshotted it so see the way that i tend to go about that if it's possible is i use my notifications because i've noticed that if someone blocks you their shit still shows up in your notifications as something they've said you just can't respond or go to it oh 
the the thing is, it's a picture, so I wouldn't have been able to right, see right, it in my yeah. notifications. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then there's <laughs> there's dead ass one guy who was going off talking about how religion and theism is the death of all reason over and over again. I point out the latent counter arguments. They just keep saying the same thing, but they eventually shut up after they sent a quote. Said quote was something along the lines of uh, attempting to reason with some or attempting to argue with someone who has uh, forsaken reason is equivalent to administering medicine to a dead man. That quote is from Thomas Pine, a theist. Yeah, Thomas Pine was a theist. He was a, a deist. Like, it, like you, you're quoting you're quoting a theist about rationality. Good job. At least they tried. Well, he did. Well, yeah, Thomas Pine believed in a god. Well, like like not a personal god, but a god. Yeah, they gave well, a lot of a lot of college people. try. Yeah, de yeah, deism so. is like a really interesting thing to me because it's like it, it's 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 really fascinating because it's commonly like monotheistic and it's just there's a god, they came in, they kickstarted shit, and it's like fuck this bitch, I'm out, which oh, yeah. I find really interesting. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, I'm, this I'm is, I mean they got the motherfucking watching One Piece. They got the grass skirts, the fucking, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the spears and the clubs and the fucking masks. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean come oh, on. Oh, yep. that person. Come on. I mean, come uh, on mm -hmm. now. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Now, however, however I feel about religiosity personally, really, at the end of the day, really don't, really don't matter much because, you know, it's, it's, it's all... The way I see it is like, like, like I, I don't. How do I put this? Um, anything can be used to exploit people. Like, like anything. Like, it's not just religion. Like, like religion is not just unique in this. A lot of a lot of shit can be used to like exploit people yeah. in a very like. In in a very deleterious way, uh, well, they, and well, they used to exploit people and have very deleterious effects. But like, where like, and I understand that on the one hand, when like if I was to talk to um, an antitheist, but like where they go wrong, where they go left, um, is they like, like you said, they o they overgeneralize. So they can't they can't keep it specific um and that specificity you know lacks 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 de they lack depth of understanding in that like in that generalization yeah um, like so. nine times yeah like nine times out of ten when i see an anti-theist saying something if they just slightly tweaked their terminology to not be over generalizing i would be right there with them right because overall like anti-theists and I have a common, have a very blatant common interest. We are minority religious groups or a religious groups, but it's still like for the law is categorized as religious. Group. We are minorities under the weight of an actual very problematic majority. Yes. We need to be able to talk about that majority without aiming your guns at your, at, at your allies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. And you know, without the, the uh, the constant ableism that they will defend yeah. to the death. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, like uh, to equivocate that shit. Like, nah, it's it's literally like the definition of like apples and oranges. Like you how I mean? um a certain streamer who was allegedly the first person to beat Bloodborne equated religiosity to a form of schizophrenia. Yeah. So, uh, Hadji, did you see what I sent you? I was too busy being angry. Let me read through these. Changed it. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, I'll just read this out loud. Here, take one of these. They should help you get some memories back. You sure this is going to work? I feel like something bad is going to happen if I use this. You can trust me. These will really help you become better and remember what you have lost. If you say so, all you have to do is use the peppers too. Hesitantly, she takes one of the peppers and eats them. Aaron then immediately begins to start clenching at her head and starts crying. Aaron, Aaron, what's wrong? Don't tell me you ate it. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's better than the original? Yeah, I think it'd be better if you clarified that it's just taking one bite because... Uh, like right. eat, eat like when you say you she know, takes one of thing. the peppers and eats it. Either eats it, these yeah. are very small just peppers, bites it, yeah. or just uh, uh, we we are learning right. that change Aaron, it to one Aaron bite. Bright, Got it. Yeah, either that or we are learning that Aaron Bright is apparently part snake and can just unhinge her jaw to eat a whole ass fucking bell pepper <laughs> in one bite. I'm not gonna comment on that. I'm just gonna sit here. By my mobile game. All right, Aaron Bright uh, takes one of the peppers and bites and bites it into it. Is that better? Bites into it or takes a bite out of it. The, the, those, that, that's better. Got it. Oh, was it the unhinging jaw part? <laughs> yeah, like the yeah for for chew. Uh, yeah. at, starting to act Gosh. weird because we brought up something that may or may not have Gosh. something to do with war. No. So now the story is way better than the original. <laughs> it actually has, you know, emotion because... at certain parts. <laughs> yeah, that was a part of like my early criticism. For yeah, yeah, um, and I changed that to actually have some emotion <laughs> with the yelling. Yeah the the first the first draft that I got. Yeah. Like, I could see what was meant to be happening. I I felt like I could tell that there was meant to be emotion here, but it read like someone just reading off a list of events. Ironically enough, that made it kind of feel like an actual SCP document, but it's yeah. not very good for a standard storytelling. Right. However, I did keep the first one as the devils, because it's only mentioned once. Like, just yeah, one like, time devils. Yeah, like, yeah. that's the big thing. Like, expand the vocabulary. You can... Yeah. You can devils and then also call them massive bitches it's just annoying if you're only calling them demons only yeah if your yeah. only insult is devils demons devils demons devils, demons. <laughs> yeah Satan. no don't bonk me that's not nice <laughs> what, what 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 kind of black hole did jerry get sucked into i don't know but now the story should be way better than it was and uh, twitch will never get to hear it <laughs> Apparently, well, yeah, he didn't get, he definitely didn't get sucked into me. Because, well, even though I'm a void, but I'm, I'm nowhere near Jerry, so he couldn't get sucked into me. <laughs> that sure that's that sounds very wrong. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure that's what okay. you want to go with. Aderna. 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 Okay. There, there's, there's an issue. His, his his pronouns when it gets sucked into me. <laughs> that, that's better. His gender, that's his gender not... when it gets sucked into me. Oh, that's wow. Worse. <laughs> Wait, wow. I will are... suck Why? in your gender. <laughs> Did Momo just get it? Y'all yeah, yeah, some degenerates. <laughs> I didn't even mean it in that way, but okay. No, yeah, I was, but no, 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 sounds... no, 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 I understood what you were talking about, I just, I didn't know, I didn't know what they were talking about at first, and now I do, mm. but I love and, my I, and I'm all the worse team. for it. It's mine. Well, I'm glad that when I go no to- No doubt, no doubt, Pika, no do, doubt at all. Due to editing for my story, it won't sound how it was on Twitch. <laughs> this is my degeneracy, mm. there are many like it, but this but one But this is one is mine. mine. Which, which means now I have a reason for people to watch the video. Wait, huh? We get to hear the edited version. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Also, Hatchet, I wanted That's to tell you great. something. Uh, you know when we did Resident Evil One, uh, Re Revelations. Yeah. 
All right. So let me go to my studio for a moment. All right. So. All right. Let me go see if. So first few episode didn't get many views. First few didn't get many views. All right. However, once it reached episode seven and went from 47, 35, 80, 215, 104, 49, 34, 80, 89, 122 at the finale. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck happened? I don't know. And that's just a story. You aren't even really <laughs> assisting me. Just uh, the Sigma grind set, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The only oh, thing I'm not upset with not getting views is Laffy versus Resident Evil Village. And I know why it's not getting views, because it's age restricted. For good yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. It can't be that bad. Actually, it's YouTube laughing. will refuse to push out uh age restricted videos because it gets some very few ads. Is it anything worse than the things that I say? Or yes, Laffy, it, Laffy is Laffy is very day. unhinged at what yeah, he can say. Playing, yeah, <laughs> this is bright. Say, this is bright playing as Laffy. Yeah, you're saying that as if I know what all that means. You are a psycho intelligent. Me right hold on, now. Pika, I can explain it. A psycho intelligent show host that's also a very powerful reality bender. And loves to kill people and their worst fears and guilts. Eh. Oh yeah, so... As a I, side I note, eat that shit for breakfast. <laughs> I, it, it's all good. As a side note, stepping away from the depression that is my constant headbutting of anti-theist. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I, I mentioned to y'all uh, that I got a new cat, Yeoman Dunder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jerry! Uh, I was today years old when I found this out. Jerry, now it's one long piss. Jerry, are you okay? Jerry, did, did your kidneys fall out? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You sure? Right. You okay? Yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. Well, back back to cute cat shenanigans. So, Momo, you uh, did you say that you don't know about my new cat? Well, I, I know now. Like, well, yeah. Know. So basically, my dad, who's an independent contractor, a second ago. Yeah. Uh, my dad, who's an independent contractor, uh, went out of town for a few weeks to do a job. When he came back, he brought with him a cat. It's like two years old, but he was just the sweetest damn thing he ever met. Just a really sleek, slender dude. Uh, actually, if you scroll up far enough in Pets Out of Containment, you should be able to see some pictures of him. Um, but uh, his name is named after the city my dad was working at, Lamar. But uh, I, with my incessant need to give all of my cats a mythological nickname, uh, decided to give him the name Yomagunder because when he first got out of the carrier, uh, he was super chill and just like hopped up on the bed and started like figure eighting, slinking around me and my mom. And I feel like the markings on his back, like the markings on his back, remind me of a python's markings. Mm -hmm. So we later found out that uh, we later found out that my naming this cat after a child of Loki was unbelievably accurate because this cat is batshit insane. Like he like he just literally tries to tackle people constantly. He will attempt to eat literally anything that he decides to and once he gets into the mood of trying to bite a very specific thing he will not let up until that thing is like out of his sight for 20 minutes like he is just batshit insane but anyway we're finally starting to let him uh we're, we're finally starting to let him out of 
the bedroom so that he can get acclimatized to the general house environment with like the other seven cats we have inside. And he's he's a shy boy, but he also really likes me. So one, he's been acting as alarm clock occasionally because like right around when I want to be waking up, he just starts nibbling at me. <laughs> but two, uh, I thought this was really funny. Earlier today, I woke up briefly because I was laying on my stomach and he apparently decided that I was a good pillow and just decided to lay on my back for no reason other than to do this. Yeah, cats. That's <laughs> love to just lay anywhere. I um I went over to my friend Autumn's uh place and um she got like a pool and shit, but she also got a cat and the cat's name is Luffy. And Luffy just likes to sit on things. He's a, he's <laughs> kind of like an outdoor indoor cat. He just likes to sit on shit. And so like one time I remember when I was over there, um it was just like after it had rained, we went to go see the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen movie and um, I left my car there. And then after I like went to work and then I got back in the car and was getting ready to go home, I noticed that there were like a bunch of paw prints on my fucking car. And so I was <laughs> like, hey, your cat just like tap dance on my fucking car. I got messaged him on Discord. He's like, he's like yeah, he, he tends to do that. He's just like, he'll see. He'll just be like, oh, look, a new seat at my house. Oh, mind if I do. Yeah, don't, don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll sit where I'm sitting. Um, and that, and that'll be his new spot until um, he decides to get up. You lucky shit. I do not have any cat car stories. I only have ghost car stories. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm good. I'm good off the go. Like, listen. Uh, I, I, I will I say know. with cats, they do not like me. Like, there was this one cat who was, like, friendly to everyone in the neighborhood. I'm like, oh, hello there. I sit there, uh, down, let the cat come to me. I'm like, hello there. Instantly jumps and starts clawing the shit out of me. And then jumps off and walks away and starts purring to other people. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> you, uh, you see, they, you see they, they say that cats are, at, like, like, animals are really good judges of character. <laughs> Yeah, that's something that's said. Like, although, come to think of it, this is probably a hey, this this uh th this is actually probably a counter evidence to that because uh Bright lives in Virginia. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the I home mean, of the virgins. Hey, no, it's <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Virginia for lovers. I thought Virginia was for lovers, not virgins. No, Virginia was named after uh, a, a the the Queen Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Okay, yeah, you're talking yeah. about who was, name who was supposed to the virgins. State, the tagline of the state. Okay. Yeah. Also, the word "virgin" is in the name Virginia. Well, now, I, hey, listen, I've I've been looking at a lot of Chris Chan stuff, and I read Sonic You as a result. I read Sonic You. <laughs> And that's one of the things in there is that like some of the evil bad characters in there were like we're gonna make sure that you know that you're no longer a virgin. Christian stays. <laughs> no, we're gonna make sure that Christian stays a virgin, that he never completes his love quest, and we're gonna make sure that Virginia is not for lovers, but Virginia is for virgins. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things. That's funny. Yes. Dude. Yeah, that that joke for like Virginia, I hear that a lot. Like Virginia is the home of the virgins. I hear that a lot. What the hell? <laughs> that's, that's, that's David. That's, that's David. hilarious. As soon as say, yeah, Virginia is is a home of the virgins. God damn it, motherfucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> it was perfectly timed. Hey, David, shut up about being a virgin, bitch. <laughs> What'd you say, Rattler? Spood has asked the group how everyone has so much energy. They were the one who did the loud yawn yawn. Uh, I yeah. slept too much of my day, so I can do the string. Well, I am nocturnal currently. Well, you see, I 
I had to wake up at like six something yesterday to help my sister get ready for. Oh wait, it's two twenty. <laughs> I had to wake up at six two days ago to yes. um uh help my sister get ready for school, and I did not go to sleep. Meaning I and then I spent all day Friday with a horrible headache that couldn't decide if it wanted to go or stay. And when I, when I got home that night, I, uh... Slept. <laughs> I, I spent the rest of my evening just, like, in a bit of a daze. I just spent my, my evening drinking water, eating food, falling asleep, waking back up, falling asleep again, and I was just not on planet Earth during all that. That's how my head was bothering me. And I finally went to bed out of my own accord for once. And then I woke up today. My head was feel was still feeling weird. It almost felt like my um like my head felt like stuffy or something. Like my head was heavy. Um I don't know how to describe it, but So not congested? Hmm. Congested? Were you like congested? Uh, you had like a sinus headache? No, it wasn't really that. But I um, I took an Advil and then I was fine, even though I had taken Advil two days prior. So who knows? I just have energy because I slept in. And you know the first chance I get, um, like as soon as this turns off, I'm passing the fuck out. <laughs> also, uh, we probably should save NES guys up for next stream if you're if you're feeling like tired. Yeah, we can do yeah. like like most of next stream we do this like be NES Godzilla. Yeah, I think like we take like little intermission breaks to chat about random bullshit in between chapters. I know my yeah. voice is gonna need it actually. Yeah. Um. Since next week I'm working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then like in two weeks, I'll, like basically in two weeks I'll be off. Like right. next week I'll be like entire like like after next week I'll be entirely off for that whole week. Oh, so if you just want to like do that, oh. then I'm totally fine with that. So next yeah. week, so hold on. So this weekend is yeah, gonna this be crazy. Week. This weekend is going to be crazy for me because there's some... So, like, from the, like, down. from the 11th all the way to the 17th, I'm, 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 I'm not working. <laughs> I took Good. that entire week off because, like, I, I haven't seen the sun <laughs> in such a long time. So, so we can do this the 16th if you want, if right, everyone bet. wants to do that. Is everyone okay with that? The 16th? I mean, I don't have any stories to share, so I'm not in a place to Honestly, speak on, on the 16th, I'm probably going to be working. Yeah. Well, we'll be at, like, 9 o'clock as well. Uh, unless you're going to be working past 9 o'clock p.m. Anytime you want to hang out, let me know. Honestly, at 9 o'clock, I'll probably be eating because it takes... Right. Like, yeah. Then don't forget for Jerry that would be seven. Right. Actually, for me it's six. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm we pretty sure Bright uh, is three hours ahead back. of me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was thinking we're, we're my three time. hours ahead of you guys. And I would, oh, wait, that get off, me. I would get off of work around five, likely. So. So we can probably push it to ten o'clock. That way, it gives Jerry enough time to eat, and we can do the stories. What day? Uh, 16th. It'll be that Friday. Okay. I don't have I'm off day. that Friday anyway, so I wouldn't even have to work. Yeah. No, I don't have, time. like, a... I don't have anything that Friday. Well, right. other than marching band, but that's earlier in the day. God, this is weird. I fucking did an excess amount of work, like, towards the start of the summer. Mm. 
and one of my big toes has just developed like extremely thick calluses underneath the toenail and it's fucking weird right so yeah I, I won't have work those days so yeah i can do that i believe oh yeah, yeah. Is, is that during the week where you were going to be doing uh tokyo probably oh, hold on i'm going to double check uh my ske work schedule to double see if i can do that i should be able to yeah, if i remember correctly like uh we play gta until like when was it? Yeah, until the tenth. Until the tenth. Yeah, so this coming Saturday. Well, until the eighth, but like, because then breaks off. Oh right, yeah. Breaks off the eighth, so. Fuck. What? They have me working on the sixteenth. You gotta be shitting me. I'm no, off. No. Oh, okay, so hold on. The fourteenth. Can we do that? Because I'm off yeah, I mean, the next day as well. Everyone else go to the fourteenth. I am. Uh, I also would likely have a day off on the fourteenth. I rarely work on Wednesdays. So that Wednesday then. Okay, so yeah, that even works even better because. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That work for you, attorney. Mention yeah. not just for the horror streams, but just in general. My fall semester starts on the 12th mm -hmm. and this weekend is going to be very crazy because of house stuff so my appearances may very well be getting a bit more scarce not ideal but that this might be the reality of things mm. dare we hear you bro hey I, I would prefer to not be in community college for three years or four That's years. That's fair. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to get out of here. That's yeah, fair. No, I was just going to make a joke that uh, it is a crime against humanity that we are deprived of our shoe. Yeah, yeah I, I will surprised. say, I will say, uh, chapter two will not be made by the time 14th comes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. I, I'll be lucky if I get a story done by then. Right. But yeah, um, usually I'm not working on that Friday though, but I guess they changed the schedule a bit because I looked at it. Weird ass bullshit. Yeah. Oh, anyway. I'm talking about my toe, but also for you. <laughs> yeah. Also, Hedge, are you ready to do your story? Because everyone's here. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let me go check Twitter again. Catch it. <laughs> Oh, I got one notification. Hatchet. Uh, it's it's Aderna liking liking a post about Satan. Wonderful. <laughs> anyway, Hatchet. Uh, it's put back onto gameplay, even though we're not doing a game. Okay. Uh, first I have uh copy. Wait, no, that could be cut. I have. I don't like it, but I keep drinking it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cheer, you weren't here when I asked this question. Yeah? Uh, I asked a question before uh, to everyone else here, because I meant to say it to start a stream, but do I have permission to use your voice in the story as well as the story in question? Yes, you do. I, I have to ask it, because I can get in trouble if I don't. <laughs> Consent. Consent. Yeah. We need to ask consent. <laughs> Cause no means no and yes means yes. Hi ho. Consent. Anyway, <laughs> uh I am sending you three Instagram links to uh Whoa. Trevor Henderson creatures that inspired the story. Uh, I see it. Why well, you want so me if to you wanna Yeah, I was thinking you might want to pull those up since like last time with the Einfield Horror, you pulled it up? No, I don't want to... I don't want him to create an account. You will create an account. Uh, uh, Bookworm yeah. says, OMG. Base. Oh, that for a second, too. I thought you said Bites oh. Cat. <laughs> yes, I... 
if I just copy the link of the creature and put it into the the uh, Google well, as a link, I it'll just download it onto the computer, yes. so I don't have to do it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, I should have thought to send these to you earlier. That's fine. All right, so let me just. Uh, yes, I love this low-res image of someone perpetually turning pages in a book. Can this week's Naruto episode please not be filler, please? <laughs> it's filler. Well, you knew it was a good shot. This is getting so old. I just want to get done with this story arc. That's all I want. I wasn't looking at the screen for a couple seconds, and I look back, <laughs> and that thing's just there. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I've seen scarier shit than that. I look in the mirror every morning. We need to arrest Chu for low motive or for for low self esteem. No, that is my. That is my, that is my defense. No. That's a shit. That's, that's a shitty defense. Yeah, I agree. That's that's your defense. My 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 counter argument. Yes. Well, I just realized the pictures get from big to medium to small. Oh, re oh yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so Y'all watching on uh, in Discord, if you want to see like some of the creatures that inspired this story, they are now on screen. Uh, all, 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 all like these are copyrighted uh, to Trevor Henderson. Go check him out on oh, yeah. uh, Instagram. He is an awesome artist. Um, <laughs> Bookworm, it's not the streaming. consent song. <laughs> what? I don't know. Not streaming. What? Oh yeah, Bright, you're not streaming in Discord. Oh. You didn't tell me to. Well, I was yeah yeah, Jerna, I was meaning uh like the the stream, like yeah. like like the Twitch, stream. like the the the, the Twitch and oh. the, uh, yeah the Twitch strong. You didn't tell me to. <laughs> well, you should have done it anyway. Uh, now, before I start, well, I'm fucking ass. How's he supposed to fucking know? Because Bright's a professional streamer, duh. No, I'm not. That, that is, that is, that is, ooh, so much it's, to unpack there. Oh, uh, you see, that's the, <laughs> well, you see, that's the ooh, thing. Bright's been doing this oh, for oh, how long? There. Mm. Bright's been doing this for how long? Well, mm, seasoned, At least. certainly. Professional. I think I, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, that's, I have done it for two years, almost uh, almost three years now. Yeah, technically, to be a professional, you have to make a living off of something. Yeah. But we can still call it professional for the me. Uh, she is a streamer, but she's not a, not a professional streamer. I make very little money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, deadass. What, what was your AdSense from uh, YouTube last month? <laughs> None. I got nothing from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, getting paid off YouTube is kind of. You difficult. have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch oh, hours. Right. right. Yeah. God. I mean, I'm not yeah. getting. I'm not getting paid at all. So, I, uh, I, the only money I have made from Twitch so far is theoretical. Theoretical. <laughs> the, the, it is potential money. Got oh, yeah. theoretical I'm, channels. Yeah, and oh, instead yeah. of it is not yet kinetic money. It is still currently potential money. Yep. I'm not getting paid this month. But by, by, uh, by, five anomalies to whoever actually understood that joke. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely not getting paid this month because there's a combination between thirty two fifty two. 
and twenty-seven fifty. Next month. I love you. Too. Which channels have viewers in common with mine? The only one it shows with sixty-six percent is Pika's channel. <laughs> 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 That that right. Wait, Pika has a channel? I haven't subscribed to that shit. Do it. <laughs> do I, it. I need not to go the, do that. Not YouTube <laughs> channel. Twitch. Oh, Twitch. Oh, Twitch. Yeah, then yeah. Twitch. I've, already, I've already followed there. I followed <laughs> I followed, and then unfollowed and then refollowed multiple times to screw up the calendar. Well, this is interesting. Which tags are users filtering by to find my channel? SCP. 100%. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Hatchet today, um, Bookworm, <coughs> Bright, Anna, Aderna decided to torture me by mm -hmm. gifting several subs and uh, giving me bits. I gave mm -hmm. eight subs. Mm -hmm. so, so now I you, have. Sir. Um, Almost thirty dollars in so, revenue. So, so Chu, Chu got subs and also a hype train. Yeah, yeah. A, Thanks a to level me. Two hype train. Thanks, thanks to me, book and right. Me. Right. I did, I paid the most. Carex, <laughs> who gave a few bits. Yeah, I I I basically paid for. The subscriptions for all the mod staff. For so, uh, I'm not sure, Pokemon, I'm not sure if you're still here, but I sent you a picture of Twitch saying you are no longer a la you no longer have subscription to to Pika's channel. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I gifted the bookworm to which it's like no. Yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, Hatchet, go along with your story, so now the pictures are here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually well, I... going to head off. It's like almost 2.45 in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I sent you... Right. Oh, yeah. Pika, don't forget to change the uh the ad thing, or look at the ad thing. <laughs> I'll figure that out at some point that's not today. Right. Alright. Not y'all. Don't Gonna... do anything stupid. Drink plenty of water. No promises. But not right before bed. Wait. I think there's one channel. Uh, Momo, if you don't want spoilers for my uh, story, you probably should not go to it. But there's one rule in that channel. The, uh, Bright's, Do the Great Dr. Bright Cannon Workshop. Number 11. Bright is incredibly stupid. Well, damn. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> so. <laughs> Wait, is the is the is the buff rooster still in there? Yes. Or is the king rooster. The still king rooster's there, still in there. Fuck you. It's not getting put in the story. <laughs> it off. It obviously should be put in the story. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the foundation or anything else. That thing is absolutely anomalous, and you cannot deny other ones. No. I may have it as an Easter egg or something, but no, I'm not having it be an in essential the back, part of the, the story. What <laughs> one of the one of the contestants on Lap is Fun with you <laughs> is an extremely tall 14th century dressed nobleman chicken. Yeah. <laughs> you know, knowing Laffy, that could be possible. <laughs> I would not put it past them. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, the chicken's not one of the contestants. The chicken is part of the. Is the torture. Is part of the audience. It's part of the audience. The entire audience is made up of the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> It's nothing but 14th century chickens. <laughs> the foundation's just looking at the video like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 
I'm gonna hit. I'll be in. I'll be in Twitch chat. But... Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So it's just gonna be us four, unless Hatchet wants to save it for next time. And we just end it here. No, I've been I've been working on this story specifically for the next story stream for fucking weeks. So. Right. Okay. I'm 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 saying I'm saying it the fuck now, assuming that <laughs> our ADHD does not take over again. Also, right. <laughs> right, I have added more to my story if you want to look that over a bit. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I think we should always like uh, have someone to like check for grammar and shit and all that all that stuff. Like that's why I chose Hatchet. <laughs> uh I thought you originally booped me and then I booped I you. did. I booped you as well, mainly because Hatchet had to work heavily on their story and since I, I already sent it to you. You forgot that I very likely have dyslexia. Yeah, I did. <laughs> It's like, I literally can't even proofread my own shit. <laughs> you have no you idea probably... how many times I've just typed something out, and then I'm like, days later or something, I just see this word, I'm like, why is that there? <laughs> why is that word there? What yeah. was it originally? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Hatchet, on with your story. Before ADHD takes us over. <laughs> uh, my head hurts like absolute balls. Let's do this. This will probably be the last <laughs> story of the stream. But yeah, that mm -hmm. much is obvious. Yeah. At this point. Oh, my foot. Ow, what the fuck? Did your cat bite your foot? No, my, my air, my, my automatic air freshener sprain. And some of it got into the fan and sprayed right into my fucking eyes. Yeah. Oh, come on. That's the start that's the start and end of the story. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Two sentence horror story. There you go. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay, so I'll start by warning that this story does contain uh, some potentially triggering language to those who have dealt with uh, homophobia. Okay. So I, I will, I will, I th 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 that that trigger warning is there. I will remember to put that uh, trigger warning clip thing that I saved before I showed the video itself. Yeah, I dare say I used it for a good reason in the story, but it's still like needs to be said. Yeah. Okay. Twelve hours. Twelve fucking hours straight of driving. The sun set three hours ago, making these dirt roads even more treacherous. The tank is getting low, and my eyes are heavy as hell, but is it safe to stop yet? I forgot to say the title of the story. <laughs> okay, so the story is titled uh, The Changeling's Sick Joke. Now I will just reread that. The Changeling's Sick Joke. Twelve hours. Twelve fucking hours straight of driving. The sun set three hours ago, making these dirt roads even more treacherous. The tank is getting low. My eyes are heavy as hell. But is it safe to stop yet? I can feel my empty stomach cramping. My mind is starting to panic again. I glance over to the passenger seat to get a bit of my composure back. Nikki, my little angel. She's curled up in the seat, wrapped in a blanket, sleeping softly. The cut on her cheek still seems angry, but it's human. And she's still cradling that shotgun like it's a stuffed toy. Why? Why does this have to be happening? She never heard a fly in her life. And, and now she has to keep that thing close. Running for our lives like this. What kind of sick joke is this? What did we deserve 
what did we do to deserve this shit? Why? I hear Nikki cry out as the car starts to swerve. Having drifted off, this startles me awake and quickly steady the wheel, stopping us from ending up in a ditch. Babe, you need to rest. Let me take the wheel, she hurriedly says, gripping my hand. Wouldn't be much point at this rate. We're running on fumes. I... I don't know... I... I don't know if we're far enough to be safe. I managed to say between yawns. We... We can't stop the car and get stranded out here in the middle of the woods. I... Nikki tries to object, but can't seem to find the words. I'm fine, babe. Just... Just keep, just help me stay awake and keep an eye out for, for like a, a place to stop. She says, pointing towards a medium sized cabin on the side of the road. Her voice seems about as surprised the luck as I am. I can't help but feel pessimistic about this good fortune. No way is this going to turn out well, right? Though, knowing our options, I turn to the place's driveway. An automatic light suddenly brightens the area near the garage. It's a two-story house with an old-fashioned log design, rustic and beautiful. There are a few larger windows on the second floor than any I see them on the bottom. The lights are on, so we assume the owners are home. We get out of the van, grabbing our hastily packed bags, pretty much all we have left. Nikki leaves her shotgun to not scare the owners while I keep my 45 in my belt holster and a spare in my bag along with spare magazines, just in case. We quickly walk up to the front door, keeping an eye out on the woods. Nikki knocks while I keep looking around. After a moment, the door is opened by a middle-aged woman with a concerned expression on her face, no doubt due to the very late night knock at the door. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. My friend and I were taking a road trip, and we were kind of dumb and managed to run out of gas. Could you put us, or could you point us to a place where we could fill up and get some rest and eat, please? Nikki says fairly quickly, being an extrovert. I really don't know what my antisocial ass would do without her in this situation. Oh, here. The lady says in a soft, concerned voice. That's a shame. Well, we don't get many visitors, so you are more than welcome to stay the night. Come on in. I can get you girls some warm drinks and something to eat. My man can show you to the nearest gas station in the morning. She smiles warmly as she opens the door wider, gesturing us in. We can see a middle-aged man in a recliner in the front of the TV who is getting up seemingly to welcome us in as well. Nikki looks back at me with hesitancy. We're both a bit wary of such a spontaneous amount of generosity, but we don't have much choice given the situation. Thank you so much. You don't have to do this for us. I, it, it wouldn't be an inconvenience, would it? Nikki says gratefully, turning on her heel. Nonsense. You're more than welcome, young ladies, the man says, patting both our shoulders as we walk in. After all we've been through, it is almost unsettling for me to tre be treated so kindly by a stranger. And I imagine Nikki feels much the same, though she's better at hiding it than me. We're encouraged to sit down on the couch in the living room. What looks to be a foreign romance film has been paused on the TV. He, says, he sits back down in his recliner to the right of the couch as the woman moves towards the kitchen. You girls allergic to anything? She calls out from the adjacent room, both of us replying to the contrary. So then, what are your names? The man says calmly as if to avoid startling a wild animal. I'm Ronald, and my wife in there is Margaret. I'm Nikki, and my friend is Sophie, Nikki goes on, beginning to exchange and small talk with them. While they chat, I slowly observe the house just in case things turn sour. The living room has a high ceiling with a chandelier hanging down about five feet above us. 
behind us, I see some stairs going up as well as an open door that seems to lead downstairs into the basement. To the left of that is a hallway, the same one that Margaret had walked down to enter the kitchen. Everything seems fairly homely, so I start to light my hat down. Is something the matter there, Miss Sophie? And come to think of it, Nikki, why do you have that cut on your cheek? Looks painful. Ronald says worriedly. Oh, I, uh, I was just looking around. You have a lovely home, sir. I say fairly quickly back, hoping to be convincing enough to avoid suspicion. Though, he probably was just consumed. Sophie isn't the best with strangers and new things. I, I practically had to kidnap her to get her out on this trip with me. As for the cut, I fell down a short flight of stairs earlier today. It isn't as bad as it might look. Nikki responds jovially, elbowing my side. How she can so easily come up with a fictitious backstory is beyond me. Well, I'm going to think that it's more twisting of the truth than anything. Ronald lets out a hearty laugh alongside Nikki's fake chuckling. The more I hear her talk, the more I can tell how anxious she is. Though, you wouldn't be able to tell if you didn't know her as I do. Every fiber is my being. Every fiber of my being is telling me to hug her and comfort her, hold her hand and kiss her. But no, not here. We can't. We have to be careful. If those things show up now, I don't think we could get away. Let alone if these two, these two are. No. I can't think like this right now. Giving myself a panic attack won't help any. I've had a few friends like that in my life. It's always good to explore and push your boundaries. Either way, thank you. This house has been in my family for three generations. I had to renovate it a bit for me and the missus, but I think it turned out well, he says, looking up at the ceiling. It does feel a bit empty at times, though. It is all grown up and we're rarely getting visitors. So for me, it is quite a gift to have something unexpected happen like this. What did I tell you, girls? You can feel at home here. Margaret's voice chimes out from my left. She sets two sandwiches and two mugs of hot tea on the coffee table in front of us before sitting down in a chair just to the left of the couch. We both give our thanks to Margaret before digging in. I feel my stomach rumble as the first bite of food for half a day enters it. Even if this sandwich wasn't incredible on its own, it still tastes like ambrosia to me. Judging by how quickly Nikki goes through hers, she more than agrees. Both her sandwich and her tea are gone in a matter of three or four minutes while I try to take my time in mine. While I try to take my time with mine. That was so good. Thank you so much, Nikki says ecstatically, stretching her arms above her head. You're very welcome, Margaret replies with a wide smile. So, you girls said you're on a road trip, right? Where are you headed? Well, it was kind of a last minute thing, in all honesty. We didn't really leave with a destination in mind, just decided to hit the road and see where it takes us. Nikki chirps back with some more half-truths while I continue savoring my meal. Ah, uh, just adventuring for the sake of it. That takes me back. Ronald replies with a sigh. Me and some old buddies fresh out of high school did that. Just piled in a van and went across the country for a week or so. Went from Louisiana to D.C., Long Island to Mount Rushmore. Just singing all the songs that came on the radio and seeing as much of this beautiful country as we could. He goes on for a bit while Margaret continues the Sudoku puzzle she had been working on before we showed up. Maybe another 10 minutes go by before I finish my sandwich and partially my sandwich, partially because I found myself getting absorbed in Ronald's stories. I place the plate back down and pick up my mug of tea and start sipping at it for just a bit. For just a few moments, I... I've been able to forget about all the fucked up shit lately. Nikki seems to be in the same state, starting to truly relax for the first time in hours. 
Ronald pauses his story in response to Nikki letting out a long yawn. Oh, where are my manners? You girls must be getting real tired. It's getting pretty late, ain't it? I shouldn't keep you too up with this, he says, standing up with a grumble. I suppose so. What time is it? Nikki jumps to attention, reaching reaching into her pocket to pull out her phone. However, it slips from her grasp, landing face down on the ground. Ronald bends over to pick it up, discovering that the lock screen had become visible. Oh, thanks, Nikki says, snatching it back with a nervous and scared tone. She goes to put it back in her pocket, but is stopped. Ronald grips her wrist tightly and pulls her hand out. Seeing this, I instinctively reach my hand toward my holster. Please. Please, may this just be paranoia. Please, not after all this good fortune and hospitality. It feels like... It feels like minutes pass as the screen becomes visible. My gut's fear is realized. Nikki forgot to change her lock screen background. It's an image of Nikki and me from our first anniversary. A breathtaking view from the boardwalk of a shore house amusement park. Or a shoreside amusement park. With Nikki and I kissing. Of course. A fucking course that memory has to be tainted like this. Again, it feels like minutes on end as we all collectively stare at the screen. I feel every bead of sweat stream down my face, and I can hear that sickeningly familiar sound, a slow, blood-curdling crunching and tearing fills the room from both sides. All the while, the sickening stench of decay assaults my nose. I slowly disable the safety on my pistol while gripping my mug off. While gripping my mug, hard enough I feel I could break it. I can see Ronald's hand tighten around Nikki's wrist, his fingers and arm twitching wildly. Both his and Margaret's breathing starts to sound labored, as if gasping for air. Why? Why does it always end up like this? Why can't we just be free? Why? What did we do to deserve this sick joke playing on repeat over and over again? Why? My thoughts are interrupted by a raspy, gnarled voice behind me. Before that accursed word is finished, I swing the mug as hard as I can, smashing it into Margaret. A shrill scream pierces my ears along with Nikki's own crying fear. In a blur, I draw my pistol, aiming for Ronald's head. And at that moment, I get a good look at what he is. Bulging, glazed over eyes. Bloodshot, manic. His cheeks are concave, his nose shrunken, his lips all but non-existent, and his mangled teeth gnashing. His body is contorted and emaciated, like a rag doll fresh out of the dryer. His distorted voice screams out as he shoots his mangled, elongated hand toward me. And then, like every time before, no matter its face, no matter who it was before this point, I do what I have to for myself and for Nikki. The deafening sound of my pistol fire drowns out his hate-filled screech. It takes two shots through its face before it stumbles, and another three before it lets Nikki go and simply rides on the floor. The fine carpet, the homely seating, this beautiful living room, are all stained with the resent-filled blackened sludge-like blood that pours out of its wounds. I grit my teeth as I feel my tears starting to stream down my face. My stomach twists and cramps. Before I can turn to deal with the other one, however, I'm flung across the room, losing my grip on my gun and having the wind knocked out of me. I hear Nikki scream out my name. The mangled thing that flung me, whatever Margaret is now, 
crawls on all fours and is on me within half a second, gripping my throat. It's much the same as the first, save for the long hair and thicker nails that start to dig into my skin. Its gnashing teeth and frenzied gaze come within a foot of my face, screeching jumbled syllables approaching the words Sodom and Sinner. I push back on its face with my hands but can barely fight its strength. It bites my left hand in response, tightening its grip and sending saliva spraying across my face with its hate-filled rambling. I feel my arms fall away from its face and my vision becomes blurred before another shot rings out. I gasp for air and roll away from the thing as it falls to the floor, writhing. I hear Nikki unload the remainder of my pistol's magazine into its head and Nick. I cough several times before I feel my senses return to me, and I can hear Nikki sobbing beside me. Soph, please, Soph, be okay, she says, gripping my hand and holding out my canteen that was attached to my bag. Her clothes and hands were covered in those things putrid blood. I, I, I'm fine, babe. It's all right. Thank, thank you. I stutter out before taking the canteen and taking a long chug. Thank you, I say as I pull her close and hug her. We are both trembling from the adrenaline and shock. We cling to each other for what feels like minutes, letting both our heart rates settle. I, I can't take this anymore. They, they were so nice. Why does this keep happening? Why can't, why can't we just be over with this? Nikki says between sobbing breaths. What did we do? What did we do to deserve this shit? We didn't do anything wrong, babe. I say after a moment's pause. It's, it's not our fault. We have to do this. What are we supposed to do? This, this life is nothing but pain right now, but, but we have to try to see the end of it. We have to. I don't know if I'm trying to comfort her, myself, both probably. We take a bit to calm down, but we never get a break. Our small moment of peace is shattered by that sound we both know too well. A shrill screech from the woods outside, followed by another and another until there is an unearthly chorus descending upon the house. Their twisted gospel music dripping with hate and anger. We both stand, grabbing our bags. I hand Nikki the pistol from my bag while I reload my own. I take a moment to look down at the shrilled husks on the floor. Ronald and Margaret. Such kind-hearted people. Reduced to such horrid shells of what they had been. What a sick joke. We open the door before Nikki screams out. Looking outside, there are tens of them. Stumbling out of the trees. Some on all fours, some trailing elongated arms behind them, some having their heads dangle upside down from limp necks, all of them chanting mantras of loathsome words. Sinner, sodomite, reprobate, degenerate, groomer, and on and on. Upon noticing this, they all let out ear-splitting shrieks or screeches and charge for us. I fire off a couple rounds to no avail before slamming the door shut just in time for one of them to smash head first into it. They smash their distorted faces and hands through the windows, gnashing and grabbing at us. We both fire off more rounds from the guns, but we hear glass breaking and wood cracking from all around us. So, what? What do we do? I hear Nikki cry out desperately. My mind races, hearing some of them breaking through the windows upstairs and loud, heavy thuds before one of the monsters come careening down the flight of stairs. We both jump out of the way fast enough to avoid getting hit, and it smashes over the couch, flailing to get its bearings before charging us again. I fire three shots, and Nikki fires the rest of hers before it slumps over, 
letting out one final gasping sting. <laughs> I look around the room before remembering the basement. Downstairs, now, I yell out, pointing towards the entrance. I unload the rest of my magazine into one that into one that I notice at the top of the second floor stairs. It sprints down, grabbing onto my bag and ripping it away from me before I'm able to follow her downstairs. Or down. I shut the heavy door, or the heavy wood door, and call out, Find something to block the door with! More crashing and glass breaking comes from upstairs as I feel heavy thuds at the door to my back. A loud, scraping sound comes from the dimly lit basement as Mickey pushes an old desk toward the stairs. I run down to help her. We try to push it up this steep flight together, but before realizing how futile it is, as weak as my sleep-deprived body is, we look at each other out of breath. My head is splitting, and I feel I can barely stand. The longer we look, the more obvious it is to both of us, with the breaking and screeching upstairs and the door being hammered on. No more ammunition and nowhere left to run. Only that deafening, repugnant chorus calling out from above us. I grab her and I pull her into the back of the dusty, mildew-covered room. We huddle down in the corner furthest from the door. And any of the old, thin windows to, furthest from the door and any of the old, thin windows to the outside. Gripping my head from the pain, I try to think of a way out of this. After all, after all we've suffered through, after all the fighting, this, this can't, this, this is it, isn't it? Nikki whimpers, hugging her knees to her chest. After all the running, the fighting, this is it? She voices my thoughts while looking at me. Her feet filled eyes, streaming with tears. My body, sh her body shaking like a leaf. They've taken, they've taken everything from us. And now? I turn to her and grab her, hugging her as tightly as I can. I want to comfort her, tell her everything will be fine. But I can't lie to her. The screams only drone on above. The banging at the door reverberates to our bodies, accompanied by the sounds of its wood cracking. I pull away so I can look into her eyes, my own tearing up. They haven't taken everything. And, and they can't. We, we still have each other. Right here. Right now. They can't take this away from us. They... they can't... I'm interrupted by the ear-splitting sound of them breaking through the basement windows, unable to get in, but making the sound of their hateful cries reverberate through the room even louder. Nikki turns her head away and screams, but I put my hands on the cheeks and pull her eyes back. They can't... they won't take us from each other. They can't take what we have between each other. They can't... I try to reassure her, as well as myself. A moment passes as I start to question my own reassurance. However, Nikki calms herself a bit and reaches her hand up and grips mine, pulling it off her cheek slightly. Her eyes are red and streaming with tears, but still she smiles and says softly, No, no, they can't. Selfie, she says, leaning in. Selfie, I, I love you. With those words, she closes her eyes, bringing her face up to mine. They, try as they might, truly can't take this from us. My eyes close as I hug her even tighter. Our lips meet, despite the model. We love each other here and now.
even as the door breaks from its hinges. And that is the end. That was really good. That was a beautiful representation of hate. Yeah. And terror and hate. It feels like the way you represented it was both mythical, like a horror story should be, but also mm -hmm. taking cues from real life in that while they did have religion, it was kind of a background noise, an excuse for their yeah. Uh, rather, yeah. Which is true. That's true yeah. to real life. That was the way I was going for it. Just put put the religious themes in the background of mm -hmm. the way that these things interact while People making it apparent that literally that while making it apparent that literally the only motivation for them is sickening hate. Yeah. It is the mm. only real uh, motivation, not the religion, although they use that as an excuse. The religion they use that as an excuse doesn't actually support what they're saying. It's so ironic. And that's actually, uh, as a side note, I, I, fe I really fell in love with the name that I chose. Because yeah. like last night, I was trying to think of a good name for it. Uh, and the changeling's sick joke. Y'all know about changelings from fairy mythology? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't. Oh. Yeah, ch changelings, to very briefly sum it up, are a type of fairy creature that would uh, kidnap and then replace a human baby and then be raised up as if they are the parents' child. Uh, changelings are children of Fae. The Fae see children, kidnap the kid, and replace it with their own because they don't want to raise it. Right, These yeah. stories were actually told very specifically to explain children with different disabilities and yeah. caused issues for those children, but yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like one of those really interesting intersections of like when looking into history like one of those interesting intersections of religious practice mixing with really weird fucking annoying ass bigotry and then merging to create a whole bunch of really fucked up practices right also hatchet i want to say in the third picture the, the smallest one i just started seeing this but the eye that it gives on the expression of that creature Makes it look like it sees something really naughty in through that window. <laughs> you see it too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does look like that. It's like, ooh. <laughs> it's like, oh, I see some kinky. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically when I had sat down to try to think of a story to write, I just started searching through Trevor Henderson pictures found really? those three that kind of gave me the the base idea for cre these creatures and then on to this you know what i'm not sure if you've seen this creature but you always find it like really creepy looking hold on i am thank you book one is momo still here i think so maybe momo passed out uh momo's not in the chat anymore so no, i know i yeah, I know. He's, he said that he'd still be in uh, Twitch chat, but... Uh, Hold on, let me I see if I can get good pictures. out at the computer or anything, and he's in bed. I'll send it to you, Hatchet, but I always find that one to be the most creepy looking. Why don't you show it on stream? It's a hair, this is a scary story stream. Well, it's really hard to see. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah. I'm trying to get the best ones uh, I can. Oh, that's. I feel like that's the short story that I put the most effort into. Whatever. Yeah, it's called Good Boy. And it is very nerve wracking to. But 
You know, a horror story. I love something a friend of mine uh, wrote called Warm Hearted. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that thing before. Right? I have find that creepy as hell. Oh, you read Warm Hearted too? No. I was oh, no, no, no. Bright, Bright sent me images. Oh. I, I was talking about Good Boy. No, I unfortunately have not. I I have not heard of that story. Yeah. Hold on, I can send it oh, to you too, boy, Jerry. Creepy. Oh, I just looked at stream. Oh, oh, that's oh that, gosh. The oh, creature. Oh, you just song. now. Yeah. You just now looked at the pictures for that well, from my story or honestly, good boy. When I'm listening to a Twitch stream, I typically listen to it. I don't stare at it. Oh, geez. I just sent you pictures of Good Boy, the creature oh. I find creepy as hell looking. Yeah, those those creatures on stream are the main images that uh, inspired yeah. the, the changelings like of my story. What do you think of Good Boy, Jerry? I already said. Oh. Well, I was... I also, I was apparently talking over you, so please repeat it, sorry. Yeah. Well, Jerry? What? Uh, I, Hatcher was speaking, so I didn't hear what you said about the good boy. Thank you, I hate it. <laughs> Thank you, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's creepy as fuck looking. Although I still find the, uh, like I, that thing is pretty creepy, but I, I feel like there are creepier things. Yeah. Trevor Anderson. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a lot of his work, but I still find that one creepy looking. <laughs> yeah. Though my favorite creature of his is the fencer. The fencer. I feel like you've mentioned that before. Yeah. Basically, because. Uh. He's basically a representation of karma. Basically, a bunch of his story goes as a bunch of bullies didn't like how he was beating them and and fence fencing stuff. So during a fencing competition, competition, uh, instead of like doing what they were told, they stabbed him with the sword, and he was bleeding out while running away. He he died. But then he came back as a flushy, flush aside monster inside that uh, um, thing, and he literally tracked them all down and stabbed them all to death. Hmm. Yeah, and oh, by the way, the bullies got away with it. Because uh. <laughs> they couldn't find the person because they came a monster. <laughs> Hey. Well, they got what they came. They got what they deserve. Like they literally planned to murder, and then the the murdered came to murder them. <laughs> so because of uh, the him killing the boys, he got bloodlust. <laughs> so he's not really good guy but he did do a good thing <laughs> he's angry yeah he angry <laughs> he's well, justified i should be able to find the fencer but yeah i also like particularly wanted to emphasize after uh ronald and margaret ended up dead i particularly wanted to emphasize how sick it is for them as well because they're like the the hate that filled them just leaves them as a hu distorted husk of what they could be yeah oh no right so oh yeah that oh god that oh god yeah oh, fuck. That that's face. the fencer that's the fencer that's what happened to him after he died oh God. I told you you turned into like a meat husk. I gotta head to bed. Yeah. So uh, before you do anything, uh, before you leave, Jerry, uh, any last words? 
wait. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm glad everyone yeah. seems to have appreciated the story. I look mm -hmm. forward to seeing yeah. reactions to it on YouTube when we post it. Right. It's going to look way better on YouTube <laughs> than it did. I'm still so mad that it didn't put the edits on the website. Oh, you mean your story? Yeah. Sure. Oh, I, when I said, like, I look forward to seeing reactions on YouTube, I was meaning my story. Oh, okay. Unless you weren't planning to post it, which is also fun. But... I use Google, so I never have to worry about saving. It auto-saves. Yeah. At least it's saved in the Word document. It just didn't do it on the website for, uh, for who knows why. Yeah. Maybe it's because I didn't close it. Maybe. Yeah, come to think of it, uh, Bright, are you intending to upload my two stories to YouTube? Most likely. Okay. Let me know when you do, because I want to keep an eye on the comments. For me. I'll probably edit it down tomorrow. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I guess we'll talk about it. Anyway, back to what you were saying. Uh, Jerry, last words, go. Good night. That's yeah. very short last words. <laughs> I, just about, I just about spit up my water on my computer. Uh, <laughs> so say, don't eat Dr. Rattler's peppers. <laughs> we, we all know what happens. <laughs> you only remember the bad memories. Yeah. Bright happens. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Derno, last words. Go. <laughs> Jerry leaves immediately. <laughs> I thought that was Adurna. Adurna's last words leaves call. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Anyway, Adurna, your last words. Um, so let's see. On Bookworm, you should, if you intend to play your last words over stream, you should go and start crafting that. Yeah. I'll ask you next, Bookworm. Anyway. So, follow, subscribe. Support Brian Kofi. And right as a bird. I hate you. Alright. Bookworm, last words. Go. I had hopes. <laughs> I've been wearing a headset for two hours. Yeah, we've been doing it for six hours. I saw that. Good night, and to all of you in the audience, don't let the hate turn you into one of those monsters. No one wins. That's that's good last words. What do what what do they say? Uh, good night, and don't let the hate turn you into one of those monsters. No one wins. Perfect. Yeah. Magic, last words. Go. Or should I say, go, Anna. Last words, go. I'm going to find out where you live. <laughs> <laughs> That's your last words. <laughs> no, no, they are not. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> We'll and it. I'm not going to use Kiwi Farms for it because they got booted off the internet. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now say it, say it correctly. Catch it. Last words go. And remember, kids. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it let the voice chat. And shit. And shit? Is that the last of what you said? 
No, the joke was that you left. Yeah. yeah. Did you say yeah. something as you came in? Yeah. Ah, that's what I heard. All right. Anyway, D class, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next horror story stream will be the fourteenth, and we'll be reading NES Godzilla heavily. So that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and you'll see me bring back my voice acting from my horror acting days. Uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. So yeah, see you got D class next time for your next experience. Friday's bullshit for. Fuck you.